The story begins with the apartment being noisy. Strange noises were coming from the bedroom. A woman's white undergarments were carelessly scattered on the floor. A little farther away lay a solitary slipper of some Cinderella. The girl quietly, cautiously opened the door. She tried to see what was going on in the bedroom. The girl could not move. She was very sad and surprised. Tears rolled down her face. The pretty girl asked Wen Sheng to finally tell the whole truth to Silly Liu Ye about their relationship. But the guy replied that it was too early to expose their feelings and love in front of people. The girl realized that Lin Xu and Wen Sheng were in her bed. She didn't think that such a thing could ever happen. Wang Sheng, the catcher, recalled that it was Liu Yiye who owned half of the company's shares. This made the woman very angry. She said that she could easily buy back all of the said shares. As it turned out, Liu Ling Shui was Liu Ye's paternal half-sister. They were actresses. Five years ago, they starred together in the multi-part drama Exquisite Poverty. The disgruntled mistress recalled that five years ago, the guy himself had sent Liu Ye into bed with another man. And on top of that, he was also responsible for that girl losing her child. The bitter memories of the distant past were too painful. The wound on Liu Ye's heart began to bleed again. Nothing and no one can ever come back. And it's too late to repent. But we must somehow go on living with a sharp pain in our hearts. Five years ago on their first wedding night, Zhang Wensheng wished that Liu Ye had a child in Liu Yi. After all, then no one would be able to oppose their engagement. However, as a result, the proposal to have a child, the engagement was only part of the hypocritical guy's devious plan. The crooked Don Juan began to justify himself. He believed that his actions in the past were logical and correct. After all, the guy tried to do everything to ensure that he and his mistress had a beautiful, trouble-free future. Naive Liu Ye had specially flown to the United States to help her half-sister have a brilliant acting career internationally. And tomorrow night, she and Wen Sheng were supposed to go to Yuen Hai to support Liu Ling Shui at the Major Star Awards. The girl deliberately returned early from the USA. She sincerely wanted to surprise her sister and congratulate her on receiving the award. The devious Ling Shui believed that her sister was quite stupid and cowardly and therefore did not deserve to live happily ever after. She also thought that her lover should be more determined and go through corpses to achieve wealth and fame. The trickster said that Liu Ye is a very smart and practical girl. Don't underestimate her. And he thought he was smart too. After all, his mistress's husband trusts and respects him completely. The lovers were very much engrossed in each other and their dreams and plans. They did not even notice that there was someone else in the apartment. My heart is shattered. The resentment gnaws at my soul and blinds my eyes. This offense is too bitter, undeserved and unfair. From love to hate is one step. And the girl decided to take that fateful, desperate step. The vigilante's heart was full of anger. She carefully filmed the love affair between the two cooing lovebirds on her cell phone. Now the proof of the dastardly treason was in the phone. They were hard facts. The offended Liu Ye decided not to disturb the love idol. She felt like the third extra. You can't tangle with three people. An offended girl is staying at a hotel. She needs to be alone and solve some important issues. Evidence of a secret love affair was downloaded onto a laptop. What was the vigilante going to do with the compromising video? The duplicitous Wen Sheng sent another message saying that he missed his beloved and was looking forward to seeing her. However, he was very tired during the day as he had to spend a lot of energy organizing the upcoming banquet. It's hard and painful to read false words. It's hard to communicate with someone who betrayed you. Wen Sheng once again sent a message that he was getting ready for bed. The guy wrote that he loves Liu Ye immensely. The next day was the much-anticipated Top Star Awards ceremony. Rich and famous people arrived. The beautiful Lin Shui was drowning in glory. Reporters surrounded the actress and admired her beauty. The confused Wen Sheng wondered why Liu Ye hadn't called him back yet. The actress was incredibly annoyed by this guy's restlessness. She wanted people to admire only her today, and all eyes were directed at her. The worried guy couldn't take his eyes off the phone. He wanted to call Liu Yiye back and find out why she was delayed. It was time to announce the winner of the Best Actress in a First Person TV Series category. An overjoyed Lin Shui was sure that the award was in her hands. But sometimes things don't go according to plan, and what you want becomes unattainable. The file would not load for some reason and the video would not appear on the screen. The host of the award ceremony was embarrassed. Everything went off script. The audience was perplexed. The audience couldn't understand why there was a sudden technical glitch at the most important moment. Wen Sheng and his mistress were visibly nervous. They couldn't believe that something unexpected and extremely unpleasant had happened at the most solemn and important moment. The enraged Wen Sheng had no control over his emotions. He demanded that the video appear on the screen. The announcement of the winner was delayed. The arrogant actress was burning with anger and indignation. The party was ruined. With his wild scream, Wen Sheng attracted the attention of the audience. 
the audience began to admire his masculine beauty, and for a moment he was in a blaze of glory. The smug Liu Ye hid in the crowd and quietly watched the unplanned show taking place. She looked like the main director of this whole spectacle. The ruthless Avenger rejoiced. She was satisfied that she had successfully realized her insidious plan. But the girl was not going to stop there. A dreamy, mysterious night has descended upon the land. The city of Yonghai is quietly, peacefully slumbering. He didn't seek fame, but fame suddenly caught up with him. Besides, it was a bad fame. The actress wanted to be recognizable, popular. But now she was hiding her face and tried to escape from the public. This couple in love has really become popular. Now they're relentlessly pursued by the paparazzi. No one even suspected that the main director of this show was a supporting actress. It is not uncommon for those in the shadows to decide people's fates. The play was delightful. The main director was pleased with her work. The girl's eyes were full of contempt. She hated the hypocritical, despicable traitor. However, the girl decided to continue the game. So she answered Wen Sheng's call. She tried to talk calmly, as if she didn't know what had recently happened. The distraught boy shouted that he had been slandered. He asked Liu Ye not to believe the gossip about him. A frightened Wang Sheng said that reporters should be avoided at all costs right now. He also said that the reporters have surrounded Lin Shui. The actress can't hide from them anywhere. The guy was hysterical. It's like he was talking to himself. The number he dialed was disconnected. All the roles have been played, and the masks have been removed from tired faces. There's no point in pretending to be a good person. All the past needs to be put in the past, and move on. Although it is hard to move on when the future seems vague and bleak. A place for relaxation. People with broken hearts sometimes come here. All sorrows and sorrows today should be drowned in a glass of your favorite drink. And then think about why and how to go on living. The grief-stricken girl's husband and half-sister were now the center of public attention. There was a lot of information about their stormy love affair on the internet. Even in the bar, the guys were talking about their love affair. Five years ago, her husband seemed so innocent, kind, and affectionate. He seemed overprotective of his wife. You can't tell your heart who to love. The girl didn't understand how she could fall in love with such a mean guy. And why did she believe every word of this hypocritical man? There were too many sad memories. The worst was the loss of a child. Five years ago, Liu Ye's newborn firstborn died. The dead child was another great incurable wound in the girl's soul. And now she suddenly remembered him again. If the baby had survived, he would be five years old now. And they could live happily together. There's an explosion in the bar. People panic. Liu Ye was too caught up in her gloomy thoughts. She didn't even notice that the bar was dangerous. A gas cylinder exploded. The bar was engulfed in flames and choking acrid smoke. My heel caught on a bar stool. Fear gripped my body and soul. Everyone tried to leave the smoke-filled room as quickly as possible. However, the girl was unable to do so. She fell from the chair and realized that she was visibly weakened. The girl's mind was chaotic, her thoughts confused. She couldn't quite figure out what had happened and where to run to. Suddenly, Liu Ye saw a little boy who was sitting immovably in the middle of the bar. Apparently, the little boy was very scared and didn't know what to do. The surprised girl thought she was having optical hallucinations. After all, a bar is not a place where small children can come. However, the boy's tears were very real and his fear was genuine. The mortified girl told the toddler to pull himself together and stop worrying. She promised that she would save him at any cost. The merciless flames flared up stronger and faster. The smoke was everywhere. But the girl and the boy were desperately trying to get out of the deadly place. Suddenly they managed to find an escape door. A little more effort, and they would be completely safe. Some bewildered guy was screaming wildly and begging for help. His eyes were blinded with fear. He must have been blinded by fear. A distraught guy pushed the girl, and she and the baby collapsed to the floor. The knee was traumatized, the pain was terrible. The girl could not get up. A panting Liu Ye said for the boy to immediately run towards the exit. There, the little one would be able to meet his relatives. But the sad boy was in no hurry to leave the smoke-filled room. He didn't want to part with the girl who was desperately trying to save him. Liu Ye said that the boy should run away without delay. After all, that way he could save himself. And then he could ask someone to pull her out of the flames as well. The girl said the boy was brave, and he could save himself and her. Though now she was on the verge of death. Her lungs were full of smoke, and sanity was gradually leaving the girl. The bar was consumed by fire, it was dangerous to approach it. The restless Yuan Shao was trying to break into the burning room. He wanted to save Yao Yao's boy. An expensive luxury car suddenly appeared near the bar. It seems that the owner of this car is very wealthy. The unexpected appearance of the expensive car surprised Yuan Shao extremely. He even forgot about the fire for a moment. The guy with the eagle eye is Uncle Yuan Shao. He's come to rescue little Yao Yao. Yuan Shao reported that Yao Yao was in a room engulfed in flames. It is not known if he is still alive. 
Uncle stopped and pondered. He was ready to rush into the raging fire at any second. A frightened and embarrassed Yuan Shao admitted that he had made a terrible mistake. After all, he was the one who had brought Yao Yao to the bar and then left the boy to deal with some issues of his own. I guess my uncle's too strict. Can he forgive his nephew? The bewildered nephew begged his uncle not to go to the bar. He wanted to save the baby himself. Uncle was silent. It seemed that any words were unnecessary in this situation. It was urgent to act. Here comes the first punishment. The blow was hard, and the tribesman realized that he should not defy his strict uncle. The brave guy rushed into the burning bar with the speed of a cheetah. There was no stopping him. But suddenly a miracle happens, and the guy seems overjoyed. There was a yao yao near the exit of the room. The boy had successfully escaped the fire. The baby was breathing heavily and coughing incessantly. His eyes were watering. Apparently the man was surprised that the little boy was able to get out of the blazing smoke-filled building on his own. It really was a miracle. Sometimes in the most difficult, critical moments we begin to appreciate our relatives and close people even more. And at such moments we want to hug them tighter and feel their warmth. The baby rebelled and tried to break free from the powerful embrace. He seemed to be too anxious. A worried Yao Yao was pointing his finger at the bar. He couldn't take his eyes off the burning building. Yao Yao knew that his savior remained in the room. And now he wanted her to be saved too. The man thought for a moment. He tried to understand why the little boy was so worried and kept pointing his finger at the burning building. Finally, the man guessed that there was still a man in the bar. And Yao Yao asked to save that man. But the fire department was about to show up. And the man didn't want to do their job. The little boy became very angry and bit the man painfully. He wanted the girl to be rescued now. The man didn't cross the boy. He decided to throw himself into the flames. The nephew was too scared. He was worried that his uncle might die in the fire. However, uncle was hard to stop. He was brave and determined. No danger could stop him from achieving his goal. The brave man was near the entrance to the bar. It was hard to see anything in the smoke-filled room. People were worried. Would the man be able to get out of the ghastly flames and smoke? Suddenly a silhouette appeared near the entrance. Could it be our superhero who saved someone? Yuan Shao was incredibly happy that his relative was still alive and well. He seemed to love and respect his uncle a lot. There will probably be another sensation on the internet. After all, the heir to the Honorable Mr. Jang saved a girl from a fire. It was seen by many witnesses. The little boy was overjoyed. His dream had come true. The girl was alive and well. The next day was quite calm and welcoming. The huge hospital building was drowning in sunlight. Liu Ye woke up in a hospital bed. Her body was still quite weak. The girl noticed an attractive man in the hospital room. His face seemed quite familiar. A handsome, stately man sat quietly by the window. He seemed to have been watching the patient for a long time. Suddenly the girl realized that it was this man who had saved her. But at the moment, she wasn't worried about herself. Liu Ye wanted to know if the little boy had been saved from the fire. The nonchalant man said that Yao Yao is safe, so there's nothing to worry about. At the hospital, Liu Ye saw the sleeping baby boy she had rescued from the fire. She was incredibly happy that the baby was alive and well. Some maternal feelings awoke in the girl when she touched the baby. She suddenly asked who the boy was. The man continued to act reserved and cold. He said that he was Yao Yao's father. Liu Ye was very observant. She noticed that the father and son looked quite similar to each other. Suddenly, a cheerful Yuan Shao appeared in the ward. He was glad that the girl was awake. The surprised girl seemed to know this guy before. She hadn't expected to see him in her room. This is Mr. Zhang's eldest grandson. He's the heir to a huge business. All year long, the smug guy has been at the top of the list of the hottest heirs and most eligible bachelors. The girl now realized that Yuan Shao was the tribesman of the man who had saved her life. She hadn't expected this turn of events. It's a small world, and there are many different fates intertwined in it every day. Liu Ye watched the Zhang family in her chamber and didn't know how she should react. Yuan Shao was about to leave and asked the girl, ignoring who his uncle was. The girl looked at the man who was watching her intently from his seat. She said she was very embarrassed, and she never thought she would even see him in this town. Liu Ye rejected Zhang Xiao five years ago, but they had never seen each other in person. In addition, the girl had changed a lot and changed her name. Zhang Xiao looked calm, and Liu Yiye decided that the man didn't recognize her after all and one could not worry much. She exhaled in relief and felt the built-up tension leave her body. Yuan Shao said that he should tell her that Zhang Xiao carried her out of the fire since the girl was so excited by the mere sight of him. Liu Ye was in great shock when she heard those words from the guy. She shuddered with her whole body. And she remembered with horror how ferocious the fire had been yesterday, and Jian Xiao had gone into the building and saved her. The girl tried to think of the best way to react to such news. But Zhang Xiao got up from his chair and walked over to the bed, hovering over the girl. And Liu Ye quickly began to thank him for saving her and awkwardly admitted that it was a very pleasant surprise. 
The girl tried to be nice and smiled at Zhang Xiao when he suddenly asked how she was going to thank him. Liu Ye seemed to hover as if she heard the question and froze with a smile on her face. She began to panic and tried to think of a way to thank Zhang Xiao for saving her as quickly as possible. The girl imagined offering money, but the man already had mountains of gold and coins. An option popped into her head where she offers herself as a lifelong housekeeper, but she immediately dismissed this option as well, since someone like Zhang Xiao could easily afford servants. Therefore, Liu Ye proposed to give him a banner of honor as the bravest person she knows. Seeing that Yuan Xiao was holding back laughter, she explained that they had the money and servants, and she really didn't know how to thank him. After this explanation, Zhang Xiao offered her to marry him as a thank you. This surprised Yuan Xiao, and even more such a statement surprised Liu Ye, who was silently trying to realize the meaning of the words. Yuan Xiao wondered if his uncle was really serious about asking this girl to marry him. But Zhang Xiao looked completely serious and said that this was exactly what he meant. Yuan Xiao was flustered and didn't understand why uncle was saying that, and said that he was a real joker. But Zhang Xiao covered his eyes and remained calm despite the guy's worries. Liu Ye was still at a loss and thought that the man had overlooked something. And then the girl came up with a brilliant idea on how she could get out of the situation without offending anyone. She reminded Mr. John that she had forgotten to tell him something and should do it now. Liu Ye revealed that she saved Yao Yao's life and the man saved hers, and it turns out they were even. But the man didn't change his mind and said Yao Yao also saved the girl's life. Yuan Xiao explained that she had saved the boy and Yao Yao had called his father, thus thanking her. And Jian Xiao carried her out of the fire and the girl owes a debt of gratitude. The man said that it could be said. Liu Ye hoped the man was joking and said that she was just not a very famous actress, and they were from different walks of life. Zhang Xiao said that it didn't matter and he would help her to excel. The girl was upset by this answer. She yelled at him that she liked girls, so they couldn't be together. But Zhang Xiao gave her a depressed look and said that it sounded very unsurprising. Liu Ye clutched her eyes and shouted in despair that she didn't want to be someone's stepmother. Yuan Xiao looked at the girl in shock and hoped that Yao Yao didn't hear this. Fortunately, the boy continued to sleep peacefully next to the girl, and was not awakened by the screams. Liu Ye looked at Zhang Xiao fearfully and didn't know what came over her herself. A frightening aura began to emanate from the man and began to fill the chamber. Zhang Xiao was very gloomy and seemed to want to say something but changed his mind. The man got up from his chair and started to walk closer to the frightened Liu Yi Ye. His hand landed not far from the girl's head with a clatter, and she tried to move farther away. But Zhang Xiao surprised everyone when the atmosphere changed dramatically and the man said for her to be a loving mom. Liu Ye felt an intense pressure, and she wanted to fall under the ground right on the spot. She pulled back and started bowing and asked him not to be angry because it was a joke. The girl hugged Yao Yao and began to tell him how cute and clever he was, and that it was fate to become his stepmother. Yuan Xiao watched this and thought that the girl had a great future because she was a great player. Liu Ye moved the boy into her lap and gently stroked his back. Jian Xiao took his gaze away from the girl and his son to look at his watch to see what time it was. Yuan Xiao reminded him of an important meeting to be held after lunch. The man listened to the boy and realized that he really needed to leave. Therefore, he buttoned up his jacket and asked Yuan Xiao, keeping an eye on Yao Yao, and the guy swore after him that they'd be okay this time. Yuan Xiao wiped his tears and kneeled down and promised himself that this would not happen again. Before leaving the room, Zhang Xiao glanced at the girl and wished her a speedy recovery. Liu Ye was able to exhale a sigh of relief when Zhang Xiao finally left her chamber. Now it was time to further execute the plan that concerned Zhang Wensheng. But right now she could stroke little Yao Yao's hair and get some rest. When the boy woke up, she asked him if he wanted to talk about something. Yao Yao sat down next to the girl and looked at her in silence and clutched her nightie in his hands. The boy was very cute, and the girl tried to remind herself that she needed to get even with her sister. And then Liu Ye suddenly had an idea on how she could leave and do whatever she needed to do. And she said she had a puppy left at home and needed to run home and feed it for a while. Yuan Xiao was interested in Liu Ye's words. He asked if she really had a puppy. Liu Ye said the first breed she remembered, and now the guys thought she had a poodle. After saying that, she immediately thought of Wen Sheng. He was the one she needed to take care of. Liu Ye couldn't understand why she would lie about having a dog and how she would justify herself later. Yao Yao started to crawl away from the girl. She got excited and called him back. But then the girl noticed that he had picked up a pencil and was diligently writing something in a notebook. When the boy finished, he handed her a sheet with the word telephone written on it. Liu Ye realized that Yao Yao wanted her to leave him her phone number, so she took a piece of paper and pencil from the boy and wrote her number, complete with a small drawing of Yao Yao. The boy was very happy to receive such a nice bonus in Liu Ye's phone. The girl left the hospital and headed to one of Yuan Hai's high-rise buildings. She came to her old apartment and decided to live in it for starters. When she was in the hallway, she got a call from Wen Sheng. He said the video was fake. Liu Ye pretended not to understand what video he was talking about, and Wen Sheng was surprised. 
but decided to pretend everything was fine and not explain to the girl about the video that caused the scandal. But Liu Ye wasn't going to let him back down so easily, and insisted that he explain everything. When Sheng sat on the couch and asked where the girl was yesterday, and why she didn't answer the phone, Liu Ye lied that she fell down the stairs, and Wen Sheng started to say that he was sorry that he couldn't take care of her. He was actually glad that the girl didn't get into the award, and Liu Ye felt that the guy was lying to her. But to him, she said it was fine and asked what the video was that she shouldn't believe. Wen Sheng became alarmed again and said he would explain everything when he met at the company meeting. The meeting was due in an hour, so the girl had to hurry. It was time for the next item in the plan. After entering the office of the company's colorful entertainment company where the press conference was to be held, there were a lot of people. Among those people were reporters who were doing a story on the events at the Major Stars Awards. The reporter was like saying that a press conference was about to start, at which Wen Sheng's wife would appear. She's been an award winner before and has a good chance now, so the conference should have provided clarity. Wen Sheng was very nervous and everyone asked him why Liu Ye was still not here and if she would even come. The guy couldn't find his place until another journalist called him over to ask a question. He asked if the recent video was the reason for IAG's absence from the conference. Another reporter asked if they had proof that the video was fake. Wen Sheng ignored the video's questions and said that Ye Ji was stuck in a terrible traffic jam. The reporters continued to call out to the guy shouting over each other as the doors to the conference room opened, and the clatter of heels echoed throughout the room as the girl stepped inside. The reporters began to part as they let Liu Ye forward and admired her appearance. Jiang Wensheng was also very happy that his consort had come and now they could settle everything. Liu Yezi looked simply beautiful in her long white dress. An aura of tenderness and beauty emanated from her. Those present at the press conference could not take away from the girl's admiring gaze. They even forgot all their questions about the video and could only think about Liu Ye's beauty. Liu Ling Shui looked at her half-sister and was unpleasantly surprised to see her like this. Ling Shui felt uncomfortable. The guy was hinting to Liu Ye about the reason why she was late. The girl said she really kept everyone waiting and then said it was raining outside and asked them not to forget their umbrellas. After that, the girl sang a song and won all hearts with her care and song. The reporters started praising Ye Ji and asking when she would come back, because they were still her fans. Liu Ye replied that she hadn't thought about the future yet, but right now, she was insanely happy. She bowed to everyone and thanked them. Liu Ling Shui watched her apprehensively. Liu Ling Shui clenched her fists in anger and thought that Liu Ye was the one to blame for everything. Wen Sheng whispered something to Liu Ye, and she said that she had completely forgotten about the video of her husband and sister. She stated that most journalists are here to get the details and figure things out. Liu Ye said that the video was deliberately shown, just as Wen Sheng had stated earlier. And as his legal spouse, she's on record saying that it wasn't the guy in that video. She was asked if she was sure it wasn't Ling Shui in the video, and the girl was waiting for that question. And to Ling Shui's horror, her sister said that she could only be sure of the man's changed appearance. Ling Shui started to walk up to the girl and asked in a panic what she was talking about. Wen Sheng pushed Lin Shui away and said that the girl in the video was also faked and the company would investigate later. On that note, the press conference was over and the reporters saw them off with questions about Ling Shui. Later, Lin Shui's screams echoed in the office. The girl accused her sister of purposely speaking ambiguously. Ling Shui was furious and accused the girl of purposely doing this to defame her. After that, she shrank back to her boyfriend and cried on her chest. Wen Sheng looked at his spouse with fear. Therefore he left Ling Shui and ran to Ye Ji, reassuring her that they were clean before her. Liu Ye asked him if the video was definitely not him, and Wen Sheng swore on his life that it wasn't him. Wen Sheng stood in front of the girl and convinced her that he only loved her, and Liu Ye clung to him and suggested to the surprised Wen Sheng, have a baby. Wen Sheng was shocked and asked why the girl thought of having a baby, and Liu Ye revealed that because of the loss of a child five years ago, she couldn't think about it. But now she is ready again. Then she made her pitying face and asked Wen Sheng if he was ready for this. Wen Sheng fell for this look and happily agreed to have a child. Liu Ling Shui couldn't find any room for herself from anger as she looked at the couple. She tried to think of a way to distract Wen Sheng from Liu Ye Zi to draw his attention to herself. Therefore, Ling Shui decided to pretend like she was feeling really bad. Wen Sheng rushed over to Lin Shui and she started to lie that her head was splitting from the pain. Liu Ye watched the girl's actions with disdain and thought that pretending to be sick was disgusting. The weak like Ling Shui would only receive a moment's sympathy, while the strong would always be worthy of adoration. And Liu Ye left, and Wen Sheng noticed her disappearance when the girl was already far away. It was late at night, but in the Imperial Protected Natural Area, the lights in Structure 9 were on. Jiang Xiao walked down the stairs to the first floor. Even though he was at home, he was still wearing a suit. Yao Yao sat in the living room and drew. Jiang Xiao called his son to go to dinner, but the boy paid no attention to his dad, looking at the sheet. Jiang Xiao walked closer to look and saw the phone number that Liu Ye had left him. 
Jun Xiao tiredly covered his eyes and realized that his son missed Liu Yezi. So he picked up the phone and called Yun Ti, asking him to send Liu Ye's address to him. It turned out that Yun Ti had already checked everything long ago he had an address, and Yao Yao was very excited. Zhang Xiao got the information he needed from Yun Ti and discounted the challenge. After that, he called Yao Yao and said that they were leaving. The boy happily followed his father. Liu Ye was at the supermarket picking out groceries. She decided to have soup for dinner tonight. The girl came home when it was already dark outside. She was still living in her old apartment. Liu Ye was cooking and noticed that the broth was almost ready, and soon she could finally eat dinner. But she was distracted from cooking by the ringing of the front doorbell. The girl was surprised, as she wasn't expecting guests. She went to the door and looked through the peephole. She wondered who might have come in so late. Outside the door, she saw Zhang Xiao and was very frightened. She clamped her hand over her mouth to avoid making any unnecessary sounds. The girl was worried that the man had found out that she was the one who had sabotaged the engagement five years ago. Liu Ye decided to pretend that no one was home and wait for the uninvited guests to leave. Zhang Xiao took out his phone, and the girl remembered that she'd given the boy her phone number. She started looking for her cell phone in a panic and searched her clothes. But to her great disappointment, she found him too late because he had already called. Therefore, Liu Ye had no choice but to open the door and let the guests in. She said hello and asked how they knew her address and why they had come so late. The man showed the girl a fruit basket and said they had come to visit the victim. On the table was a glass glass with orange juice which the girl served to the guests. Jian Xiao and his son were sitting on the sofa and Liu Ye on the chair opposite, but there was complete silence in the room. Yao Yao and his father were looking at the apartment, and the girl thought the situation was very awkward, because the whole thing reminded her more of a test of her nerves than a visit to a sick person. She heard the soup begin to boil and remembered that she had been preparing dinner before her guests arrived. Liu Ye pointed to the kitchen and said her dinner was ready and asked if the guys wanted to eat with her. She actually wanted them to leave, but the guests happily agreed to eat dinner together. Liu Yeji didn't expect that Zhang Xiao and his son would actually stay to nibble on her food. She was trying to understand why a billion-dollar owner would come to her house with her son to eat her soup. Liu Ye fell off her chair and started screaming that her stomach hurt a lot. She hoped that if the man saw that the landlady wasn't feeling well, they would go home. However, Yao Yao was very quickly by her side and tearfully squeezed her stomach. The girl immediately felt shame for deceiving such a sweet child and she hurriedly hid in the bathroom, suggesting that her guests start dinner without her. Yao Yao was surprised to see such a drastic change in Liu Yezi's behavior. Meanwhile, the girl closed herself in the bathroom and decided to wait five minutes and then come out. Five minutes later, Liu Ye opened the door and looked at her guests in shock. They actually sat at the table and ate as if nothing had happened. When the girl came to the table, she found that not a single bite had been left for her. She stared silently at the empty plates where what should have been her dinner used to lie. Liu Ye felt disappointed and a bit annoyed by the situation that had happened, so she suggested that the guests go for a walk after such a heavy dinner and hoped they would go. But Zhang Xiao sat down on the sofa in the living room and said he was so full he couldn't go. Liu Ye was mentally angry because the man ate all of her soup and now says he can't get up. The girl tried to hint that it was getting late and the baby should have gone to bed long ago, and that's why it's better for them to return home. Jian Xiao listened to the girl carefully and then agreed with Liu Ye and said that she was saying the right things. The girl was glad, but not for long because afterward the man said they were staying the night at her place. Jian Xiao looked at his son and told the girl that he wanted to sleep and asked Yao Yao to put Yao Yao to bed. Liu Ye decided that he was taking revenge on her for breaking off the engagement and decided to make a nanny out of her. But despite all the girl's fervor not to let him do it, she found herself next to the nightlight in the bedroom. And now Yao Yao was sleeping next to her. Even though she was angry at the man, she liked spending time with the boy. Zhang Xiao walked past the bedroom, and he wondered if his son had already slept. So he went to the door and opened the doors, peeking into Liu Yiye's bedroom. In the room he saw Yao Yao and the girl sleeping sweetly snuggled against each other. The man knew that his son really liked Liu Yeji, but he didn't expect to see them in this position. As planned, the guests stayed all night and slept until the wee hours of the morning. Liu Ye woke up in the morning, and while stretching, she decided to go to the office and continue with the plan. The girl called out to Mr. Zhang and started to get out of bed. The man didn't respond, and Liu Ye thought he had left. She was unable to get out of bed as a childish hand grabbed her nightgown. Liu Ye Zi looked at the boy and tried to think of the best course of action, and it was decided to take him to work with him if Yao Yao promised to obey. The boy agreed to behave and they headed to the bright entertainment office. Liu Ye Zi appeared in the building with a baby in her arms and attracted everyone's attention. The surrounding people recognized the girl as Liu Ye, and everyone was wondering why she was with child. The girl herself walked confidently through the corridors, ignoring other people's gazes, and Yao Yao followed suit. The guy who saw her from the second floor called Mr. Zhang and informed him of the girl's arrival. 
Liu Ye walked to the elevator and was about to call the elevator and head to the right floor. But the elevator itself came down and Wen Sheng came out of there with a bouquet of flowers. When Liu Ye Zi saw him, she asked why the guy had come downstairs. Yao Yao didn't like the man, and he glumly began to stare at Wen Sheng. The guy was confused and asked who it was, and the girl told him that she was looking after a friend's son. Wen Sheng guessed that this boy was the reason they had their recent conversation about children. Liu Ye just started to think of her half-sister and that sister immediately appeared by her husband's side. Ling Shui tried to look friendly and pulled her hands towards Yao Yao. But the boy looked at Du Ling Shui with disgust and hid in Liu Ye's arms. The girl asked Ye Zi to teach the boy how to achieve such overwhelming success. The blonde woman smiled and said that the company was gaining popularity thanks to Ling Shui in particular. Ling Shui looked at Wen Sheng and said that the girl still thought they were at fault. Wen Sheng asked his wife to put things in the past and asked if she trusted them. Liu Ye made a guilty look and said that she didn't mean it at all, and she didn't understand what was wrong with her. Since Ling Shui was here, Liu Ye Ji had to try and execute Plan B. She started to walk away from Wen Sheng, though he ran after her and kept calling out to her. But suddenly a guy appeared between them, and Wen Sheng wanted to fight at first, but then he noticed his identity. That guy was Yuan Shao. The guy seemed to emit an aura of elegance and confidence. Yi Wen Sheng looked at Zhang Yuan Shao and tried to understand what this person was doing in their company. Wen Sheng said hello to the guy and asked how he ended up in their company. Yuan Shao turned at the sound of someone else's voice and recognized the man as Jiang Wen Sheng. He immediately turned gloomy and reminded that it was hard for his family members to bear Wen Sheng's presence. After that, Yuan Shao told him that he could be free and headed to the car with Liu Ye and Yao Yao. Jiang Wen Sheng was at a loss and couldn't understand why the guy was here and going to his wife. Ling Shui caught up with the guy and asked if it was Mr. Zhang's eldest grandson. Wen Sheng confirmed the girl's hunch and continued to watch carefully. Ling Shu also watched in silence as the car with her sister and Yuan Shao drove away. She then anxiously turned to the guy and asked if there could be a change in her attitude towards them because of John's family. Wen Sheng said that it was impossible. But the girl recalled that despite their closeness, Liu Ye had not told her anything. Ling Shui said that the guy should be more careful and not let Liu Ye give him horns. The guy thought about it and realized that if Liu Ye wanted to cheat on him, he would do it with incredible ease. In addition, he suddenly realized that he hadn't touched Liu Ye even once in five years. He began to suspect that the couple might be together and started urgently looking for Liu Ye's address. Ling Shui watched as the guy became nervous and started to try to retrieve Liu Ye. Two days had passed since that incident, and now Liu Ye was in her apartment. The girl pruned the roses that Wen Sheng had given her and arranged them beautifully in a vase. At that moment her doorbell rang, but once again she was not expecting anyone to visit. Across from her at the table sat Yao Yao, and the girl left him to check who had come. Liu Ye went to the door and looked through the peephole. The girl was shocked by the picture she saw. In front of her door stood a confused Wen Sheng and a confident Zhang Xiao. Liu Ye said that Zhang Xiao had come and covered her mouth, and Yao Yao was very happy and wanted to see his father. The girl was trying to think of what she should do, as there were two people standing outside the door that she didn't want to see. She was helped out of this situation by Yao Yao, who decided to open the door for her daddy on her own. Liu Ye saw what the boy was about to do and rushed over in an attempt to stop him. But it was too late, and instead of her own door handle, her hand fell into the grasp of another man's palms. It was Wen Sheng's hands. He smiled and told me how he had been looking for her for a long time. They were prevented from continuing their conversation by Zhang Xiao as he pushed the guy away and entered the apartment. There he was met by a joyous Yao Yao, and they retired to the living room while the surprised couple watched. Wen Sheng began to suspect that Liu Ye and Yuan Ti had some secret, and that was why Jian Xiao came to her. Wen Sheng told the girl that he had been thinking about the fact that he had hindered her career all those two days, and was now suggesting that she come back. Liu Ye was very pleased that the guy had suggested it to her. She knew it would happen sooner or later. The girl said it was really nice that the guy thought of it and offered to go grocery shopping with her. Wen Sheng happily agreed, and they headed towards the exit of Liu Ye's apartment. But Zhang Xiao didn't let the girl leave and blocked her way with his body, slamming the door shut. The man asked if the girl was actually going to go back to the movies. And Wen Sheng had to stand alone in the hallway, angry at the man through the closed door. Liu Ye thought that Zhang Xiao was too close, and said that she was going to, but she wanted to handle it herself. The man moved even closer and said he would help if she applied to his company. Liu Ye considered the too frequent appearance of Zhang Xiao in her life suspicious, so she refused. Then the man caged the girl from his arms and asked why she did not want to accept his help. Liu Ye felt trapped under such pressure from the man and tried to come up with an excuse. And then she said that Zhang Xiao is very smart and powerful and she doesn't want to discuss people. She actually wanted to get back into movies on her own so people would know who the lead actress really was. Zhang Xiao continued to hover over her, and the girl dared to ask him to move back a little. 
The man then moved away from her, but immediately began complaining that the apartment was too cramped. Liu Ye awkwardly apologized and asked if he would have any orders about it. Jian Xiao turned around to the girl and ordered her to pack her things because she was moving in with him. Liu Ye was terrified, wondering if he liked and if the man was going to marry her, and said out loud that it was a little early for that. Zhang Xiao shifted his gaze to his son and noticed that Yao Yao was very attached to the girl. Liu Ye felt very foolish when she heard such a response from the man, and started berating herself for getting it all wrong, and Jian Xiao only doing it for her son. She was very embarrassed about it and said that she takes excellent care of Yao Yao here too. The girl suggested that Zhang Xiao should go back on his own, since so little time had passed. But the man seemed not to listen to her and said he would send a man for her things tomorrow. And after that, Zhang Xiao left Liu Ye's apartment, leaving the last word to himself. This made the girl angry and she decided that she wasn't going to move anywhere and would have a hide-and-seek tomorrow. At five in the morning, it was still dark outside, but Liu Ye had already gotten out of bed. She carefully covered Yao Yao and left the toy bear next to him. After that, the girl picked up her slippers and tiptoed toward the bedroom exit. And when she was in the hallway, she heard strange noises at her front door. Liu Ye looked through the peephole and saw people in suits there and they had toolboxes in their hands. The girl decided that bandits were trying to get in and clearly heard the lock open. The door to the apartment opened, and Yuan Shao and the guys in suits appeared on the doorstep. Liu Ye was wearing sunglasses and a mask, and tried to pretend to be an ordinary cleaning lady. Yuan Shao looked at the girl, then laughed and asked Liu Ye what she was doing. The girl tried to make it look like the guy was mistaken, and said she worked here as a nanny. But the guy told Ye Ji that she wasn't doing well, and if he didn't bring her in, his uncle would quickly make a wig out of him. In Liu Ye's mind, the image of Zhang Shao pulling out a sword from its sheath immediately appeared. But the girl made a decision not to deviate from the plan and squeezed past the men. She convinced them she was just a nanny. Liu Ye ran out into the corridor and hurried towards the exit of the building. There was no one to stop her. Yuan Shao decided that she wasn't going to run away anywhere anyway, and now she needed to pack her things. So the guy started giving orders and ordered, moving all the stuff that was in the apartment into the car. Then he picked out two guys in suits and ordered them to follow him. It was dark outside and no one was around the house in the early morning, so it was easy to observe the situation. Liu Ye hid behind a pillar and saw that no one was following her and hoped that she was believed. She came out of her hiding place and a white car screeched to a halt beside her. It was Wen Sheng, who had called the girl for breakfast together and was delighted at the sudden meeting. Liu Ye couldn't believe that she was actually able to randomly meet a guy at five in the morning. She lied to him that she was on her way to the hospital for a checkup, so she couldn't go to breakfast. But the guy jumped out of the car and excitedly started coaxing the girl for a ride. Liu Ye started to flinch and changed the subject to going back to the movies. She promised to come to the office tomorrow and talk about it. To get rid of the guy somehow, she asked if he could go to the office and get the paperwork ready. Naturally, Wen Sheng wanted to please the girl. He agreed with her words and went to the car. It was only when his car pulled away that Liu Ye was able to exhale in relief. Wen Sheng headed to the office to prepare everything for tomorrow's meeting and wished good luck at the hospital. Yuan Ti quickly saw the girl and told her that she hadn't run far in all this time. Liu Ye didn't expect to see a guy as she thought that she wasn't being chased. Yuan Ti pointed at the girl and ordered the guys he took with him not to let her escape. Liu Ye was worried and nervously asked the guys what they were up to. Yuan Ti told the girl that something happened to Yao Yao after the girl left. Ye Ji froze when she heard about the boy. She was very worried about him. A girl with obvious excitement in her voice called out, asking what happened to Yao Yao. Yuan Ti refused to speak, but suggested that the girl go back up to the apartment and find out for herself. When Liu Ye went up to her floor, she saw the boy sitting on the floor straddling his knees. She hadn't expected to see him in the hallway, much less so upset. And she was upset too. Yu. Yu was crying and you could feel even from a distance how much he was distressed. Liu Ye's heart broke when she saw the boy in such a state. But she also noticed that there were no belongings left in her apartment and started yelling at the guy. She asked where her things were, and Yuan Ti asked a little surprised if his uncle had said anything to her. And then explained to the angry girl that the boy doesn't want to part with Liu Ye. And the uncle doesn't like this apartment. The guy approached the girl and asked her to tell him what was going on between her and Uncle Jan. Even though Liu Ye said that there was nothing between them. The guy came closer and asked if they had not had fun at night. The girl slowly considered all the guy's words and hints and her eyes began to widen. She blushed heavily and was embarrassed at such an assumption in her direction and didn't know what to say. And then she screamed that there really wasn't anything between them and her face reddened even more. Yuan Ti demanded an answer as to why then Zhang Xiao so suddenly wanted her to move in with him. But because the guy called her auntie, she redirected her embarrassment into anger and started swearing at him, and then said that since he was calling her auntie, she had every right to demand that all things be put back where they belonged. But Yuan Ti said he couldn't do that and asked auntie not to make his job harder. He explained that her uncle had ordered her to move all her things quickly, so now she had to get the boy and go to the car. Liu Ye said she doesn't want to, 
and Yuan Ti asked if uncle had performed so badly since she didn't want to go to him so badly. This assumption knocked all the air out of Liu Yezi's lungs. She was very indignant, and reminded the guy that nothing happened between him and his uncle. No bad, no good. The girl felt Yao Yao calling her, and lowered her eyes to see what he wanted. The boy pulled the girl's dress to get her attention, and when Liu Yeji looked at him, Yao Yao began to look at her with a pleading look. The girl couldn't resist such an insidious weapon that Yao Yao used. Afterward, the boy hugged her, while Yuan Ti said that he also noticed Yao Yao's affection. Yuan Ti said there's nothing wrong with her house, just that dick hitting on her every day. Liu Ye stooped down to the boy and stroked his head. She asked if he had a mom. Yuan Ti spread his hands and said he had never seen her, and his uncle prefers not to talk about it. Liu Yezi fell silent and began to contemplate her move to Yao Yao again, and she decided to accept after all, but promised to leave if she noticed she was being cheated. The boy agreed, and thought to himself that they couldn't get away from his uncle if they moved there. They were in the huge house when the sun was already fully illuminating the streets and streaming through the windows. The guy brought the girl into the room and told her that she would now belong to her aunt. The room looked very sophisticated, it had a large bed and was well lit. There was also a fireplace in the corner, next to which stood a cozy chair with small cushions. Liu Yezi turned to Yuan Ti and unhappily asked where her things had gone. Suddenly Jian Xiao appeared behind her. He said that they were too cheap, and if they didn't like something, they would buy new ones. Liu Ye told him that the room was all kind of messed up, and tried to find the right words. Yuan Ti started whispering to the girl that if she stayed and took care of Yao Yao, she would get a high salary. Liu Ye suddenly heard about the salary and seriously thought about it. Her share in the company was small, and Wu the salary of the Zhang family must have been impressive. Liu Ye was unsure and asked if it was true, and the guy said that she could even sign a contract. The girl folded her arms across her chest and said she would read everything carefully before signing anything. Yuan Ti immediately took out a contract folder from his inner pocket and held it out to the girl. Liu Ye accepted the folder, though she didn't expect to receive the contract so quickly. Jian Xiao watched her carefully. The girl opened the folder and saw that she had to take part in Yao Yao's daily activities. She couldn't believe her eyes as it paid 20,000 yuan per month. It was a huge sum, and the girl tried to find out if Mr. Jan thought it was too much. But the man misunderstood her and said he could increase the amount if Liu Ye thought it wasn't enough. The girl began to refuse and convince the man that everything was fine and the money was enough. But she decided to ask how they would proceed if she felt like quitting. Jian Xiao looked at her and said that they would discuss it if need be. Liu Ye was doubtful. But Yuan Ti reminded her that they held a prominent position in the city and would not deceive her. The girl considered his words and decided that there was no point in the John family deceiving her. And since Liu Ye Ji wasn't going to cheat them herself, the girl easily signed the contract. Yuan Ti happily took the contract and offered to give the girl a tour of their home. The guy went ahead, talking about the layout, and Liu Ye decided that such a huge empty house was affecting the child. It was lunchtime, and the entire Zhang family, along with Liu Ye, were sitting around a huge table. Liu Ye Zi took different food from the shared plates and offered Yao Yao to taste it. Yi Zhang Xiao watched the interaction between his son and Liu Ye with a happy smile. The girl put the baby to bed and decided she was going to shower and go to sleep since she woke up very early. Liu Yeji took a towel and complained about how awfully far it was to walk to the bathroom. But her attention was drawn to the screams that could be heard from the room with the door ajar. Yuan Ti shouted that he couldn't believe that Auntie was the girl who broke the engagement. Liu Ye was in shock. The guy continued to ask his interlocutor if Zhang Xiao himself knew about this fact. But Liu Ye Ji was already gripped by fear and she wanted to escape from this house as quickly as possible. The girl was panicking so badly that she didn't realize she was being approached. And a stranger's arm slid over her shoulders. After which, Zhang Xiao appeared behind him. He asked Liu Ye what she was doing in the hallway. Liu Ye Zi was greatly startled by this sudden appearance of a man, but ordered herself to calm down. The girl turned around and worriedly said that she had just decided to take a little walk the field of a heavy dinner. Zhang Xiao's personality instilled terror in the girl, and it was surprising that she was able to deceive him. The man tilted his head slightly and ordered the girl to come down and stroll below. Liu Ye readily agreed and dreamed of being as far away from Zhang Xiao as possible. But the man surprised her when he told her that they would go for a walk together. Of course, Liu Ye wasn't very happy and Zhang Xiao noticed something in the girl that made him wary. The man asked if she was afraid of him. And the girl said that she had to be a little afraid because he was her boss. Zhang Xiao started to walk away from the girl, but asked her, follow him into his office to talk about it. The girl was very afraid that Zhang Xiao wanted to discuss their engagement from five years ago. She began to consider running away to her apartment, but it wasn't safe there. There was the option of going abroad. But in such a case... Liu Yiye couldn't properly carry out her plan to massacre the traitors, and on that score she was determined. So she was able to find the courage not to run away. Yao Yao ran up to her and hugged the girl by her dress. 
Liu Yeji didn't expect to see him, but the boy had presented her with an ingenious solution to the problem, which she was going to be sure to use. The girl walked to Zhang Xiao's office and knocked. The man immediately allowed her to enter. She walked in on Mr. John with Yao Yao in her arms, and this surprised the man very much. Liu Ye was sure that as long as the boy was around, Zhang Xiao wouldn't be able to finish her off. The man covered his eyes and asked his son to step out of the office for a few minutes. Neither Liu Ye nor Yao Yao expected this from a man and even panicked a bit. The girl looked sadly at the boy with a look that begged him not to leave her in a difficult situation. But Yao Yao didn't understand what the girl's gaze meant and calmly left his father's study. Liu Ye Zi humbly lowered her head and prepared herself for all possible outcomes. But she couldn't stand it and screamed that she had no choice a few years ago, even though it was too much. Zhang Xiao was surprised because he hadn't explained anything yet, and the girl had already understood everything. Zhang Xiao had only instructed her to check on her relationship with Zhang Wensheng, but it was already clear that she wasn't having an easy time. The man smiled softly looking at the girl, and said he understood. He coughed and said he wouldn't hurt her as she was taking good care of his son and let the girl go. Liu Ye couldn't believe her happiness. She stood outside the office and realized that she was afraid of this conversation for nothing. From an overabundance of emotions, the girl cried and thought that a miracle had happened to her. Morning finally came and everyone gathered for breakfast. There was orange juice and toast with scrambled eggs on the table. Liu Ye sat next to the boy and offered him a piece of bread. The girl felt happy. She picked up a glass of juice and began drinking it with great pleasure. But Liu Ye Zi choked and coughed, carefully covering her mouth with her hand. Zhang Xiao noticed this and immediately reached for the napkin to hand it to the girl. The man wanted to take care of her, but Liu Ye Ji just stared at him and she felt very embarrassed. So she threw down her breakfast, apologized to everyone, and then ran off to her room. When the girl was in her room, she began to calm her heartbeat and tried to understand what Zhang Xiao was doing. Liu Ye checked her phone and saw 12 missed calls from Wen Sheng and one from a foreign number. The girl called the unknown man back, and the guy's voice told her that he was finally back. A guy was standing in front of the entrance of the cafe. He saw Liu Yeji and started waving and calling out to her. The girl high-fived him and asked him if he had found a sister-in-law while he was abroad. The boy said his mom doesn't accept anyone but his childhood friend Yeji. The blonde pouted her lips and said that Hong Danzui doesn't change at all and remains just as annoying. A passing girl spotted the beauties outside the restaurant, but her friend was sure there was a guy and a girl there. Zhang Xiao had followed the girl and was now also watching the guys from the car. He turned to Yao Yao and asked if he had seen the guy who wants to steal his mom-to-be. The boy immediately took a dislike to that man. He puffed up his cheeks in a cute way. Liu Ye and her friend were having lunch and discussed that they could return to a stellar career together and support each other. The girl thought that Xiao Bai hadn't changed at all. He was attractive, and when he laughed, there was a warmth from him. Jian Xiao watched the couple having a cute conversation and felt annoyed. Liu Ye blushed and couldn't understand why she was thinking such things about her best friend. Suddenly Yao Yao ran up to her and hugged her. The girl asked where he had come from. She started looking around the cafe in an attempt to find Jian Yuan in the cafe, but he was nowhere to be found. Xiao Bai looked at the boy in surprise and asked if this was Ye Zi's son. The girl said it was a little confusing. She took the boy in her arms and offered him something to eat. Yao Yao looked at the guy, and you could tell by the look in his eyes that he didn't like him. Xiao Bai felt awkward, but he still wanted to know whose child it was that had come to the girl. At this moment, Zhang Xiao appeared next to their table and irritably replied to the guy that it was his son. Liu Ye didn't expect to see Zhang Xiao himself in such a cafe, and was as surprised as the other customers. The man didn't ask anything and unceremoniously sat down at the guy's table, surprising them greatly. Liu Ye awkwardly apologized and said that the food from this cafe might not be good enough for a man. Zhang Xiao didn't answer anything because a waiter came to their table and brought him a beef wellington. The man in the suit finished with all the finer points and announced that they had already bought the building. The girl realized she had to introduce the guys to each other and tried to do so. But Xiao Bai had already shaken the man's hand and said that the girl had talked about him. The man replied that he had never heard of him. Xiao Bai said that they were friends who couldn't let go of each other in any way, and this made Zhang Xiao angry. So he told her that Ye Zi was living in his house and they would have no way of keeping in touch. The guys looked into each other's eyes, challenging each other, and the atmosphere was palpably heating up. One could especially feel it from Zhang Xiao's side, but no one was going to back down. Liu Ye Ji tried to ignore it and offered Yao Yao a taste of the delicious Huo Guo. The men heard this and directed all their attention to the girl. And under their gazes, she felt very uncomfortable. So Liu Yelzi made a decision to escape from this place, and suggested that the boy go home. The men unanimously offered to give the girl a ride home, and Liu Yiye became anxious. She stood up and asked her friend to step back to talk to her for a bit. The girl took the guy aside and apologized for not being able to go with him and promised to call later. Xiao Bai accepted this kind of response from her friend and didn't impose himself, only saying that he would wait for a call.
Liu Ye returned to Mr. Zhang and said that she would go with him as they had something to discuss. Liu Ye Zi found herself in the gentle embrace of Jian Xiao as he gently kissed the surprised girl. She looked at the man during the kiss and couldn't understand how it happened. Shortly before these events, they were in the study, and the girl was telling him that she was going back with a friend. Zhang Xiao did not understand this as his company had a more favorable environment for development. Ye Ji said she understands the capabilities of Mr. Zhang's company but wants to rely on her own efforts. At that moment, the door opened and an alarmed UNT came running and shouting disaster. He showed a news article on his phone where Liu Ye was accused of being the kept woman of a rich heir. The girl read the whole article with horror and then saw that the news portal belonged to Mandarin. She thought about it and remembered that Lin Shua's good friends worked there, which meant that it was probably her idea. John Xiao said that he wouldn't let anyone touch his girlfriend. Liu Ye turned to him and wanted to ask him who his girlfriend was, but the man didn't let her finish and leaned in for a kiss that served as an answer to the unfinished question. After the kiss, a completely embarrassed Liu Ye rushed to her room at the speed of light. Zhang Xiao ordered UNTA to quickly call all the publications and said that the guy would know what to do. The guy saluted and said he could relax and he'd do it right. The next day came and Ling Shui anticipated reading about her sister's troubles. But she was in for some unpleasant news. All the articles were about her and made her look terrible. Liu Ling Shui jumped up from the bed in panic. She couldn't understand how this could have happened. The girl realized with horror and despair that all these articles and recent events would completely ruin her career. Ling Shui's friends called and apologized, but said that they couldn't refuse the representatives of the Zhang family. It was as if Jun Xiao himself had appeared in front of her, looking down on her and reminding her that the entire city was in his hands. Ling Shui cried out in anger because Liu Yiye had gotten the best of everything since childhood. But now the girl decided she wouldn't let her joy last long and started looking for something at the computer. After a short search, a website where people could hire an assassin appeared in front of Ling Shui. There was a hitman on the darknet called K. He was one of the most dangerous killers in the whole world. This hitman once took down one of the most dangerous gangs with one succinct maneuver. There are no rules for this man. He will kill anyone if he is paid well enough. Ling Shui opened the chat room and wrote that the girl should die and sent Liu Yue's photo. They agreed that the girl would send 25 million at once and discount the same amount after fulfillment. Ling Shui was pleased with herself and was already imagining coming to Liu Yezi's funeral. Killer K arrived at the house where his victim lived and with a smile on his face approached the entrance. He rang the doorbell and the door was opened for him by Yu and T, and he asked the man who he was. The man looked friendly and said he was from internet service and came in for a routine check. After that, Yu and T became serious and carefully looked at the man in front of him. He asked the man to show his ID, and the killer reached into his bag. A knife appeared in UNT's hand, which he unwound right in front of the man. Killer noticed the gesture and recognized his knife in the stranger's hand and froze with surprise and shock. He confusedly checked the spot where his dagger should have been, and tried to figure out when the guy had taken it. UNT guided the blade and said that their family had their own workers, so it was immediately clear that he was an imposter. The guy asked to say who he was in a nice way, but the hitman made decisions to run as fast as he could. UNT shouted after him to stop immediately, and guards began to arrive at the shouts. UNT and the guards ran after the man. The guy wanted to know what he wanted from the Jan family. The killer said he would have killed him if he had the dagger, and UNT ordered him to stop and get it. The hitman managed to hide among the trees, and UNT ordered increased patrols around the house. The man hid behind one of the bushes and breathed heavily, realizing that this plan had completely failed. So the next day, he watched Liu Ye in her room through binoculars. He compared the girl in the photo to make sure she was the right one. He pulled out a sniper rifle and was already anticipating getting his 50 million. Behind him was the silhouette of a guy asking who hired the man. Killer was startled when he heard the stranger's voice. The man said he didn't know who the guy was, and added that the K hitman himself was going to deal with him now. Xiao Bai jumped down to be on the same level of the roof with the man, and asked if he was a K. The man didn't even have time to open his mouth to respond when blood rushed from his shoulder. The boy held a bloody knife in his hand and asked the man who he was then. The man trembled and turned to look at the guy behind him. He was scared, because in front of him stood a real hitman. K. Xiao Bai entered the world of show business as a young and carefree guy who played only one role in an amateur play. He was standing on the set amongst a lot of people, but his attention was caught by Ye Ji, and it was then that he first met the diligent and hardworking Liu Ye Ji. The day this happened, Xiao Bai fell in love with a beautiful girl. So to earn her favor, he too began to study acting diligently. The guy gave himself completely to every role he played, even when he had to perform stunts. They had been friends for a long time, and Xiao Bai made the decision to confess to the girl when they were on the ship. The couple was standing on the deck and chatting sweetly when Xiao Bai's phone suddenly rang. The guy asked Liu Ye to wait for a while and stepped back to answer the phone. 
but that day he learned that his parents, who had stayed in another country, had been killed because of local gang warfare. That same night, Xiaobai left, abandoning his career. He wanted to avenge his parents by all means. The guy stood in the rain, wiping his knife clean of blood. He was covered in abrasions and small cuts. Xiaobai was sure that as long as he was gone, Ye Ji continued to live the same life as before. So when she decided to leave showbiz, the guy thought that Ye Ji was just tired. It wasn't until later that he realized it wasn't that simple, and it was likely that she had something going on that night on the ship as well. For a long time, Xiaobai and Liu Ye Ji did not call or write to each other. And after the guy killed the last member of the gang, he discovered that the girl was caught up in a series of events. Yi Xiaobai was certain that there was one person behind all of this who had dragged Ye Zi in. Perhaps it was Zhang Xiao, who she was now staying with and taking care of his son. But to Xiaobai, it didn't matter much since he had the opportunity to take care of her. The boy turned away from Jan's family home and began to back away from the edge of the roof. He walked away thinking that he just couldn't afford to lose his one and only love one more time. Morning came and the John family's house was flooded with rays of sunshine as the weather was beautiful. Zhang Xiao walked to the door to Liu Yezi's room and knocked, and when no one answered him, the man took hold of the doorknob and opened the door. In the bedroom, Liu Ye and Yao Yao were sleeping soundly on the bed next to each other. Zhang Xiao looked at this picture with mortification and a slight smile and didn't bother to wake them up. The man took the blanket and covered Liu Yeji more tightly. He thought the girl was very cute when she was sleeping. At that moment, the girl began to wake up. She opened her eyes and looked in front of her. Liu Ye was greatly startled when she saw the silhouette of a man stretching his hands towards her. So she jumped up on the bed and slapped the intruder with a scream, defending herself. The man was silent, and there was a huge red mark on his face from the girl's palm. Liu Ye recognized the man as Jiang Xiao and panicked when she realized she hadn't hit a bandit. The man glanced in her direction, and it seemed to the girl that he was very angry with her. She started yelling that she didn't hit him on purpose and grabbed Yao Yoi to protect her. Near her head, Zhang Xiao's hand landed and the girl looked at the man in anticipation. Thoth looked smug and said he'd forgive the prank just for the kiss. Liu Yeji was very embarrassed, especially when she remembered their recent kiss in the study. She put her hand out in front of her and flatly refused to kiss the man. Zhang Xiao took the girl's palm in his and Liu Ye was confused with embarrassment even more. She tried to take her hand away and pull back, but she failed. The man was very close to her again, and the girl froze, looking straight into his eyes. Yao Yao watched this and was very happy that his parents were getting closer, so he shouted happily, and then jumped on top of his parents despite being asked not to indulge. Liu Ye picked up the boy in her arms and carried him to the bathtub, explaining that you should brush your teeth in the morning. But Zhang Xiao was not upset by this. He remained sitting on the bed, watching their interaction with a smile. Yuan T met his uncle in the hallway and said they needed to discuss yesterday's events. He held out a photo of the hitman and said that the man had tried to break into the house yesterday and managed to escape. Zhang Xiao looked and said that he understood everything and asked if there was anything else he needed to know about. Yuan T said that he and Yao Yao were asked to come to the old house for a couple days. Zhang Xiao listened to this information and was a little surprised that he was expected to travel. A satisfied Lu Ling Shui walked beside Wen Sheng, and was already anticipating what a beautiful day it would turn out to be. She snuggled up to the guy and thanked him for helping her get a new role. Wen Sheng said he was confident in her and noticed that the girl was very happy. Lin Shui said it was because of the casting. It wasn't actually because of the new role and Ling Shui laughed lightly. She pictured Lu Ye's body, which had long since cooled down, because she was sure that the hitman had done his job. And Wen Sheng said that she was suddenly able to breathe freely for the first time in a long time. In her dreams, Ling Shui came to the right place where she was greeted and escorted by a lovely woman. Jiang Wen Sheng hesitantly stopped and saw Liu Ye in front of him in confusion. The girl stood surrounded by journalists and gave an interview. Everyone around her laughed and complimented Liu Yi Ye. This was the picture that Ling Shui saw as well. Only she was even more shocked because she was sure that the girl was gone. She grabbed her phone and tried to figure out why she was here and still alive. When Ling Shui logged onto the darknet and wanted to contact the assassin, it turned out that he had interrupted their communication session. The girl realized that she had wasted as much as 25 million and began to cry at the injustice. She fell to her knees and clutched her head trying to understand why she had to do this. Wen Sheng walked over to her. He wanted to know what was wrong with the girl, but Ling Shui grabbed his arm and threw him over himself. After that, in a fit of anger, she pounced on the uncomprehending guy and beat him on the back. Liu Ye saw them and said hello with the sweetest look, attracting the attention of the reporters. The couple found themselves in a very awkward position and realized they didn't look in the best light. Ling Shui tried to pretend as if nothing had happened, and said that she was flattered that Miss Star was talking to her. Liu Ye Zi came closer and said that she was just about to hold a press conference and announce her return. Lin Shu could only see the reporter behind her half-sister who was filming Liu Ye. 
She was also caught in the frame, so Lin Shui tried to keep her face and not ruin her image. So the girl laughed unnaturally and tried to look benevolent and congratulate her sister. Liu Ye looked at Wen Sheng and said that she had something to discuss with him as well. She said she has contacted the major shareholders of their company, and a general meeting will be held soon. Wen Sheng was astonished when he heard that there would be a reallocation of shares at the meeting. It was a beautiful sunny day and the area around the John family home was deserted as always. Except for one exception in the form of Wen Sheng, who was standing in the shade of the trees and looking at Liu Ye's new residence. A guy wanted to meet a girl and tell her how much he loved her so the girl would go crazy over his confession. He brought a bouquet with him and was sure that then the girl would immediately forget about the shares and their division. Wen Sheng couldn't wait for her to appear as Yuan Ti walked past him who noticed the guy. He called out to Zhang Wen Sheng and the guy turned to look at him and felt awkward at such an encounter. Yuan Ti was eating ice cream and while looking over at Wen Sheng, he saw a bouquet of flowers in his hands. He walked closer and put his arm around Wen Sheng's shoulder and said that they had something to discuss. Yuan Ti said that the guy was waiting out his aunt, but in fact she had long since left through the back door. Jiang Wen Sheng fidgetily said that he understood everything and tried to leave the Jiang family's territory and leave Yuan Ti as soon as possible. But he was unable to do so as Yuan Ti's hand rested on his shoulders again, stopping Wen Sheng. The guy had a knife in his hand and was telling the startled Wen Sheng that he was ready to surprise him. After this meeting, Wen Sheng hurriedly returned to his car as soon as possible. When he got to her, he started going somewhere and calling Ye Zi, who didn't pick up the phone. The sky was clear and you could hear the sounds the helicopter made as it flew. Liu Ye Zi sat inside and felt that she couldn't understand how everything happened, and why she's in a helicopter right now flying somewhere at the crack of dawn. She turned to see Jung San beside her and realized it was all because of him. Ye Zi's cries that there was no way she would go with them to her parents could be heard far outside the house. However, Zhang Xiao didn't listen to her and simply threw her onto his shoulder despite the girl's screams and demands to let her go. Liu Yezi was only released into the seat of the helicopter, and she grudgingly ooed when she landed. Jian Xiao immediately buckled the girl and hovered over her, saying that she was Yao Yao's official mom, so she was going with them. The girl cried out that taking care of Yao Yao and traveling to a man's parents couldn't be equivalent things. Zhang Xiao looked at the girl carefully and remained silent for a while, which surprised Liu Ye. He stroked his son's head and said that the child had no mother from a young age. And so every time he goes to play with his peers, the kids start laughing at him. They point their fingers at him and whisper unpleasantly behind his back. They call him a savage who has no mother. And they say that since he doesn't have a mother, he's a foster child, and Yo-Yo is suffering because of that. Liu Ye clasped the boy to her and started shouting that no one would dare bully her son. Zhang Xiao didn't argue with her, buckled up himself and said that they could fly then. The man covered his mouth with his hand, but Liu Ye still noticed that he was trying to hide a smile. It was only then that she realized that no one would dare to bully a child of the Zhan family. The helicopter along with the girl was already flying when she clearly realized that she had been fooled. Liu Ye tilted her head tiredly and admitted that it was very difficult to fight the man in any way. She was looking at Zhang Xiao's profile and she was very curious to know what he was really like. Zhang Xiao looked down into the helicopter window and told his son and Liu Ye that they had flown home. The girl leaned over the man and began to look down with interest. There she saw a whole island full of trees and only a small number of houses. Liu Ye asked if the man really had such a big house on the island, and Zhang Xiao simply replied that he actually owns this entire mountain. They started to land, and the girl was very curious if it was even legal to have her own mount. After landing, Zhang Xiao, Yao Yao, and Liu Ye got out of the helicopter and headed to the car. The driver was already waiting for them next to the car. As they were driving, the girl saw something that frightened her. A very real tiger was walking right next to the car, and a deer's throat was clutched in its mouth. Liu Ye screamed as the car passed the animal, but Zhang Xiao calmed her down and told her that the tiger was tame. The girl couldn't believe that a tiger with a deer in its mouth could be non-threatening and tried to figure out where she had gotten herself into. After a while, they finally arrived at the main house and headed for the entrance. Liu Ye led Yao Yao by the hand, and the Zhang family servants were waiting for them near the door. Zhang Xiao was respectfully greeted and told that the master was in the hall and had been waiting for him for a long time. Liu Yi Ye was reminded of everything as if she had entered a museum and she laughed a little, but she didn't tell the man because of what. Jian Xiao put his hand on the girl's shoulders and pulled the surprised Liu Ye to him. He told her softly that they should play out the show, and he hoped she could play along with him. The girl stood evenly beside the man and glanced back at him unhappily, after which Liu Ye covered her eyes and touched her long beautiful hair, and threw them back, entering the image of a loving wife and mother she radiated confidence. Liu Ye walked forward with a slight smile on her lips, and Zhang Xiao watched her in surprise. The girl was right in front of the shocked man and was correcting his tie. She called him dear and agreed to go and went to Yao Yao to take his hand. Zhang Xiao didn't expect the girl to become so assertive and confident so quickly and was slightly taken aback, but soon caught up with Liu Yiye 
and pulled her to him by her waist, as if nothing had happened. The girl purposely poked him a little with her elbow, and thought the man was a little annoying. They very quickly found themselves in front of the entrance to the room where the whole family was waiting for them. The chairs to the room were arranged in a circle and all but three were already occupied. The men who were sitting on the left immediately noticed the new arrivals. An elderly man sat in the center wearing sunglasses, and it was hard to tell where he was looking. The man and woman who sat on the right side were also scrutinizing all three of them. Zhang Xiao nodded politely and said hello to his great-grandfather. This was the first time Liu Ye had seen the guy like this. Great-grandpa sat in the center and leaned on his cane. He greeted Xiao in return. Zhang Xiao put his hand on the top of Yao Yao's head and asked the child to honor his grandfather. However, the atmosphere in the room began to darken perceptibly as the men began to look at the child. The aura that emanated from the people on the right side was no better. Therefore, Yao Yao felt uncomfortable and was afraid to walk past these people. So he hid behind Liu Yue. The girl asked the boy not to be afraid, and afterward leaned over to him and told him he could go and say hello to his grandfather. Yao Yao wanted to show how much he respected his grandfather and ran into the man's arms. The man put the child in his arms and smiled happily at him. Afterwards, he gave Yo-Yo a candy bar. Zhang Xiao had already taken his seat on one of the vacant chairs, and Liu Ye stood beside him. Zhang Xiao Ge's showed the girl to the chair next to him, and Liu Ye realized that she should sit down as well. She sat down uncertainly and tried to look at the man for confirmation of the correctness of her actions. When Liu Ye sat down on the chair, the atmosphere in the room changed from oppressive to surprised, and the girl asked Xiao who this girl who came with him was. Zhang Xiao introduced the girl to his relatives as Yao Yao's mom. This caused all the people in the room to be shocked, and the girl jumped up from her chair. The girl who asked the question came closer, and asked if Zhang Xiao was sure. He replied that he was sure, but further argument was interrupted by another guy. He said that the great-grandfather should speak first. These words worked and everyone sat back in their seats and began to look at great-grandpa in anticipation. Each member of the family expected the man to begin his speech and tell them why they had gathered. But great-grandpa was busy. He was playing one of the games on his tablet with Yao Yao and not paying attention to them. Therefore, it was necessary to ask great-grandfather to start again. And the man called out to Xiao Wan. Another man appeared in the room. He was dressed in a suit and came out from great-grandpa's side. The guy revealed that he was Mr. Zhang's lawyer and said they could call him Xiao Wang. The relatives who were sitting on the same side as Zhang Xiao were interested and surprised. The men across the room were also surprised and looked at the lawyer with focused eyes. Zhang Xiao, on the other hand, remained completely calm and glimpsed around and at the lawyer. Wang Xiao corrected his glasses and said that today he would act as the family notary and read the will. Liu Ye thought that she had in vain portrayed joy and merriment earlier if they were going to divide the property. Suddenly, Liu Ye saw servants appear nearby and closed the doors. Wang Xiao announced to everyone that he was starting and revealed his briefcase, to which everyone's attention was drawn. The room seemed to be filled with a glow that came from Senior Master Zhang's will. Family members, in addition to the primary heir, received working capital, fixed assets, and stock worth 2% of the total. Liu Ye couldn't believe that just 2% implied a sum of 1,200,000,000. The Jan family had a huge fortune, but needed an heir who could maintain prosperity. You could see the men who sat on the left side of the room darken. So did the rest of the relatives who attended the meeting. Liu Ye thought that they looked as if they were not satisfied with 1,200,000,000 yuan. When Sun Ji yelled that it wasn't fair, and one of the guys asked her to calm down. Great Grandpa ignored other people's displeasure and asked Yao Yao what he liked best. Sung Ji was making a tremendous amount of effort to contain her anger. The boy pointed towards his parents, and the man realized that he loved his mom and dad the most. And after Yao Yao turned to Grandpa and pointed at him too, the man was beyond excited when Yao Yao added him to the list. Wang Xiao went on to say that the main heir was chosen based on personal character traits and abilities, and Zhang Xiao was the one who was more suited to be the main heir and receive the fortune. Song Ji sat next to her boyfriend and started looking at Zhang Xiao, who was now the official heir, in shock. Zhang Xiao, on the other hand, simply nodded at this news, not showing any extra emotion to the others. Liu Yezi was excited to hear such news and looked at her companion in shock. Song Ji jumped up from her seat again and started yelling that Zhang Xiao wasn't even related to them by blood. And his personal life can't be called decent because no one knows who the girl is or whose child it is. Therefore, Song Ji felt that the guy was not worthy of being the main heir. The great-grandfather listened to her cries in silence. The guy who kept stopping her tried to do it again and yelled at the girl. And then he turned to his great-grandfather that the matter of the inheritance of the John family should not be so easily resolved. The man with the mustache, who had been silent up to that point, held the guy up to take such a matter more seriously. Almost all of the relatives had expressed their opinions and looked at Senior Master Zhang while waiting for the verdict. The man looked up and began to scrutinize everyone in the room and the relatives created a heavy and gloomy atmosphere and waited for his words. Great-grandfather pointed at Liu Ye and asked her to come over to him since she was Xiao's wife. 
The girl, like everyone else, didn't expect to be called. She was a little confused. Zhang Xiao looked at her and reminded her that she had been summoned by her master, and then asked with a smile if she wasn't a world-class actress and was afraid. Liu Yezi accepted the challenge and frowned. She was going to prove to the guy that she wasn't afraid at all. So the girl rose from her seat and, as if nothing had happened, made her way to her great-grandfather. Jian Xiao watched how confidently the girl played her part and smiled contentedly. When Liu Ye came over, she stroked Yao Yao on the top of his head and said that he missed his grandfather very much. After that, she bowed slightly and introduced herself. The man said he was tired and asked her to accompany him. Ye Ji readily agreed, took Yue Yao's hand and headed towards the exit with the man. It was quite different from what the disgruntled relatives expected from Great Grandpa. So they saw them off with glances, and the atmosphere in the room became extremely unpleasant again. The meeting was considered complete, and the choice of the chief heir in the person of Zhang Xiao was final. Sung Ji once again jumped up from her seat with the intention of stopping Mr. Zhang. However, the man told her to ask all the questions to Xiao Wang because he had no energy left for a showdown. The servants opened the door in front of them, and all three of them left the meeting room, heading to rest. Xiao Wang said that the capital would only pass to the heir after grandfather's death, but in the meantime, he would figure out what could be changed. Ye Ji led her grandfather, but all her thoughts were occupied with the fact that Zhang Xiao would have to continue the family business, but she was very concerned about the fact that the rest of the family was very unhappy with this state of affairs. Liu Ye Zi reminded herself that it had nothing to do with her because she was a person of a different level, and while Liu Ye was thinking about it in the large hall behind her, the showdown wasn't going to stop. Sun Ji thumped her hand loudly on the table and yelled out why things were happening like this. She looked angrily at Zhang Xiao, who was sitting next to her completely calm, and wasn't even paying attention to her. The guy who had calmed down Sun Ji at the meeting came over to him. He asked Zhang Xiao to come out and talk to him, but the man he moved and said that if he wanted to talk, he could do it here. The guy wasn't expecting to get a rejection and pondered whether to talk to him in front of witnesses. However, Sun Ji didn't care about other people, and she said she advised him to keep his position in mind. Zhang Xiao smiled at her and said that all matters concerning his situation were very clear to him. Sunji was so infuriated by his behavior that her body began to shake with anger and irritation, and she shouted to him that the matter of inheritance was not yet closed, and the lad should not begin to rejoice before the time. Zhang Xiao said that was why they still had a chance to outplay him and started to get up from his chair. He straightened up, corrected his tie, and in all seriousness, that there was only one way for everyone present. He looked threateningly at the relatives and said they needed to kill him to change the air. Everyone listened to him carefully and when he said such a thing, they became nervous. They were uncomfortable, but everyone knew deep down that Zhang Xiao was completely right. Their emotions changed to anger when the man said he didn't know who would be worthy then. And Sung Ji didn't hesitate to show that she was angry at being treated like this by Jiang Xiao. He looked back at everyone at the exit of the hall and told them that he would be waiting for anyone who wanted to try to make it. And with a calm and confident gait, he began to walk away, leaving his relatives behind. Everyone was silently watching him in complete silence each thinking about something different. When the man who hadn't said a word earlier suddenly hit the table with his fist and shouted about how arrogant Xiao was, the man was very angry that Zhang Xiao was allowing himself to talk like this in front of the fact that he was a nobody here. Two women appeared in the doorway to the Great Hall. One of them asked why they were getting angry in vain. She smiled and said that since Grandpa had decided that, there was a reason. Someone asked what Nantin meant by that, but she said she was just taking Grandpa's side. Song Ji thought that Xiao was an arrogant receptionist also brought an obscure girl and still an honored guest. And the girl felt that if Grandpa didn't change his mind, then they needed to change Xiao's own mind. Nan Thin watched their worries and laughed quietly beside her daughter, and then told her that all these people were just a bunch of fools and nothing more. And then Ning Ting told her daughter that all these people were just a bunch of fools and nothing more. The girl turned to her mother and noticed her smile. She asked what she was up to. And the woman told me that all the heirs of the Jan family are very different. Some of them are addicted to money. Soon Ji is in over his head with his shopping, and Jiang Xiao outshines them with her wit and manners. The second man is overly partial to women on whom he spends huge sums of money. So among all of them, choosing Xiao, a very wise decision on Grandpa Zhang's part, the girl listened to her mom and said that really, it didn't matter who got the inheritance. Nantai smiled and agreed with her daughter that the heir was not that important, because it was necessary for the girl to become the only important person in the eyes of this heir, and the girl was sure that Zhang Xiao couldn't resist her beauty. Although the guy had a child, he wasn't married. It wasn't clear what was between him and Liu Ye, but the girl could see that it was nothing serious. Though even if there were some feelings there, they didn't matter since no one could resist her. Zhang Xiao was bound to be her treasured gift. The sounds of playing could be heard from the house. Yao Yao found the robot and dinosaur toys and actively played out their battle. The elder Mr. John took pictures of the boy and played with him. 
Liu Ye awkwardly stood nearby in the playroom and watched their entertainment. The girl would never have thought that Grandpa John was actually like this. She bowed to Mr. Jan and said she would go and get them a drink. Liu Ye walked towards the exit, watching how happily Yao Yao was spending time with her grandfather. She saw the boy smiling happily at the camera and thought it was the first time she'd seen him like that. As the girl was leaving the room, she accidentally crashed into Zhang Xiao's chest. She raised her head and saw the man in front of her. Liu Ye was embarrassedly silent. And then she looked away and said she didn't notice the man and asked what he was doing here. John Xiao placed his palm on the door and told him that only Grandpa and Yao Yao usually enter this room. The couple watched the grandfather having fun playing with the boy, pretending to be a dinosaur while the boy hunted him. Zhang Xiao turned to Liu Yiye and addressed her, drawing the girl's attention. The man pulled her against him and asked what she had done since her grandfather had let her in. Liu Ye stood in the middle of their shared bedroom and wondered why Yao Yao wouldn't sleep with her. The room was done in calm tones where gray predominated and was quite spacious. John Xiao closed the door behind him and said that these days, Yao Yao usually sleeps over with his grandfather. Liu Ye was very excited about this news and worried about where she would sleep in such a case. The man sat down on the double bed, which was strewn with rose petals, and asked her what she thought. He swept the bedspread, drawing the girl's attention to all the petals and the spot beside him. Liu Ye Zi watches this with her mouth wide open and is dumbfoundedly silent. Jian Xiao started to undress without waiting for a response and suggested the girl go take a shower and go to bed. But Liu Ye still spoke out against it and reminded her that they were just pretending to be husband and wife. When the man heard this, he froze, his shirt only half unbuttoned. But eventually, the shirt was completely unbuttoned and unzipped, and Xiao's pumped-up torso was revealed. Liu Ye saw someone else's naked body and felt her whole skin burning with embarrassment. So the girl decided not to figure things out further and just drift off to sleep on the couch. Zhang Xiao didn't argue with her and headed to the shower to wash off the fatigue of today. When he was done, he walked out of the bathroom, leaving drops of water dripping down his legs. Zhang Xiao's hair was also wet, as the rest of his body was covered in water droplets. Liu Ye was carrying a mountain of bedding at this moment and didn't see that the guy had already gotten out of the shower. Therefore, the girl didn't even have a chance to avoid colliding with Zhang Xiao. The girl fell down, and on top of Liu Ye, all the bedding she was carrying began to fall on top of her. Liu Ye covered her face to somehow escape the things falling on her. When things stopped falling, she opened her eyes and saw a nearly naked Zhang Xiao in front of her. And the girl didn't even know how she should react to that. She started to move her hand away from her face, and realized that although this kind of man made her very uncomfortable, at the same time she admired him. Zhang Xiao held out a hand to help the girl, and said that if she had had enough, she could get up. Liu Ye seemed to come to her senses when the guy hinted to her that he saw her looking at him perfectly. So the girl was a little embarrassed and tried to pretend she wasn't looking at him at all. Zhang Xiao felt annoyed when Liu Ye said that he didn't have anything to look at, so he grabbed the girl's wrist and pulled her toward him with force. Liu Ye didn't expect anything like this from a guy, so she very easily gave in forward and cried out softly. Her cheek met directly with Zhang Xiao's bare chest. This position didn't help her get rid of her embarrassment. Liu Ye wanted to move away, but the guy didn't let her do so and told her not to fidget. Liu Ye panicked a little. But she tried to convince herself that it would be impossible for Jian Xiao to induce animal desire in her. Liu Ye panicked a little, but she tried to convince herself that it would be impossible for Jian Xiao to induce animal desire in her. So the girl clamped her eyes shut and tried to ignore their proximity and the rapid pounding of her heart. Because of her closed eyes, she could only feel the guy leaning in next to her. When Liu Ye opened her eyes, she saw that Jiang Xiao was holding onto the edge of the blanket that was tangled in her legs. After that, the guy smiled charmingly at the embarrassed girl and headed to his bed. Liu Ye was lying on the sofa and thought about the fact that she accidentally tripped and pulled down the blanket. In the beginning, she thought she might fall, but then she remembered her kiss with Xiao. These thoughts made the girl feel embarrassed again, and she turned on her side to push the unnecessary thoughts away. And just as she was ready to go to bed, the doorbell rang. Liu Ye wondered who decided to come to their bedroom so late, and the girl went to look through the peephole. There she saw that right in front of their door stood Senior Mr. Jan. Liu Ye panicked and realized that she had to quickly run to the bed and get all the bedding from the couch. The girl grabbed the bed and ran to wake up Zhao. She whispered to him that Grandpa had come. Jian Xiao got out of bed and went to open the door for his grandfather, not fully understanding why he had come. The man walked past the puzzled Xiao to the inside of the room and asked if they were well accommodated. Senior Master Zhang walked over to the bed and saw Liu Ye Ji who was pretending to be asleep. Grandpa smiled when he saw that Zhang Xiao and his new wife were sleeping in the same bed. Liu Ye was very nervous about the whole situation, but she diligently pretended to be asleep. Since Senior Master Jiang had already seen what he was interested in, he said that he would not bother them anymore. Liu Ye thought sadly that the man had already disturbed them, and now he was leaving as if nothing had happened. The girl sat down on the bed and said that she would have to sleep with him after all, just in case. 
Zhang Xiao laughed at the fact that the girl was pretending as if she didn't want this at all. But then Liu Yezi said that she would sleep in bed with him on one condition. She used some pillows and divided the bed into two halves with them. Liu Ye called this place a border zone and threatened that whoever violated it would die. The morning came. The sunbeams fell beautifully on the leaves of the trees, and the birds sang beautifully. Liu Yezi was sleeping sweetly and enjoying this pleasant atmosphere around her. She felt like she was hugging a pillow and lounging peacefully in bed surrounded by birds. The girl started to wake up and opened her eyes with thoughts that she had had a wonderful sleep tonight. But the next second she realized with horror one very strange thing. This thing turned out to be that it was Liu Yeji who had violated their border zone. And she was not hugging the pillow at all, but rather Zhang Xiao's bare torso, which made the situation even more awkward. She sat up on the bed and couldn't believe she was the one who had trespassed while she slept. She was very embarrassed and decided to run away while the guy was asleep and come up with an escape plan. However, Zheng Xiao was already awake and came up behind her as she tried to crawl away to grab her. Liu Ye found herself pinned to the bed, and Zheng Xiao wondered if she really wanted to escape so easily. The man added that she would have to pay for breaking the contract and began to lean into the girl. A confused Liu Ye watched the guy's face getting closer and wanted to stop him. But she failed and Zheng Xiao kissed the girl tenderly, hovering over her from above. The guy held the girl's wrist as he received his payment for breaking their contract. His other hand slid down her back, reaching to Liu Ye Zi's lower back. Their kisses were abruptly interrupted by the sound of the phone ringing, and the couple pulled away from each other. Zhang Xiao got up from the bed and went to talk on the phone, leaving the girl on the bed. Liu Ye exhaled in relief and said that the guy scared the hell out of her. She touched her lips and almost thought she didn't mind that kind of kissing at all. But suddenly, Xiao's condition changed. He became very gloomy and tense and the girl began to worry about him. Liu Ye wondered who was calling the guy that he had changed so much. And Xiao listened attentively to his interlocutor. The man said that Killer K had been sent from there and had cut out an entire group, and we needed to be careful. Zhang Xiao listened to the request to be as careful as possible and said that he understood. Liu Yeji stood in the bathroom and brushed her teeth, thinking about something not very important. When Jian Xiao walked in and pressed himself against her back as he reached for his toothbrush, the girl paused in brushing her teeth and asked, not leaning so close to her. And then she shifted her gaze to the mirror and began to scrutinize their reflections. Jian Xiao and the girl stood side by side and there were small clouds of foam at their mouths. Liu Ye really laughed at this picture and she couldn't hold back a giggle. After Zhang Xiao finished brushing his teeth, he leaned over to the girl and wished her a good morning. One of the servants bowed to them and said hello to Mr. John and Madam. Xiao and Liu Ye got dressed and decided to take a little walk in such nice weather. As they passed by one of the arches, Liu Ye noticed two unfamiliar women. Nan Thin also noticed the couple and said that they were very lucky to meet. Her daughter only said hello to the man. Jian Xiao said hello to the women and told them that he and Liu Ye decided to take a little walk around the grounds. Nanting laughed and called the couple lovebirds, and Xiao confirmed it. Her daughter didn't like it, and she didn't even try to hide her annoyance. Nanting took Liu Ye's hands and started saying that she was a big fan of her and asked to talk in private. The girl shifted her gaze to Xiao and wanted to ask him, but he was already smiling at her and telling her she could go. Nanting took the girl's hand and started to lead her away, telling her how much she liked Liu Ye's acting in one of the movies. Her daughter held her mom's gaze watching her take her main competitor further and further away. The girl began to smile sweetly at the man again, and said that she and he hadn't seen each other in a long time. She had a plan to win Xiao over, so she suggested that he go for a walk in the garden. The girl began to smile sweetly at the man again, and suggested we go for a walk in the garden. Nanting said that what she really wanted to talk about was how much she knew about Xiao, and tell her a little bit about him. The woman said he had been lonely since childhood, and didn't care about others, and was feared by those around him. Liu Ye smiled strainedly, while she thought to herself that she knew his heavy character very well. Nan Ting went on to say that when she was a kid, Xiao was only close to her daughter, and everyone said they would get married. Liu Ye nodded and tried to understand why the woman had started this whole unpleasant conversation with her. Nan Ting watched with amusement at the effect her words had on poor Liu Ye Zi. Then she asked her not to take her words seriously. Liu Ye realized that the woman's true intention was to divorce them. Nan Ting approached her and started to say that according to family tradition, Liu Ye couldn't be his only girlfriend. The woman said that she shouldn't be so worried, and added that Zhang Xiao wouldn't be able to do that to her. But Nan Ting didn't have time to finish, as Liu Ye gently made it clear that it was their business, and it was none of her business. The woman was so surprised that she even opened her mouth. She didn't think the girl would fight back. The girl asked Xiao if he remembered how they played as children, but the man wasn't in the mood to talk and walked away. The girl was angry because Zhang Xiao doesn't look at her at all and doesn't strike up a conversation. Out of the corner of her eye, she noticed that her mom and Liu Ye were already returning and came up with a new plan. The girl cried out loudly, and Zhang Xiao turned around to see what her problem was. The girl sat on the floor and called out pitifully to Xiao. 
The man asked if she was okay and held out his hand to her. She gladly accepted the help from Zhang Xiao and firmly grasped his palm, and then she pretended to trip and fell right on the man's chest. She said she had sprained her leg and asked the man to carry her to her room if he had no trouble. Liu Ye and Nan Ting walked in silence as the girl began to think that it would be a good idea to find Zhang Xiao, and then she turned her head and saw him right in front of her with the girl in his arms. They looked at each other in surprise. Liu Ye gloomed, and Nan Ting pretended to be worried about her daughter and asked what was wrong. The girl tells her that she sprained her leg, and now Xiao is carrying her to the bedroom if Liu Ye doesn't mind. The woman began to remember how fidgety they used to be. Liu Ye was angry that she was being played with. Liu Ye covered her mouth and said that it was terribly careless and offered to examine her leg. The girl started walking quickly towards the puzzled girl and the surprised Jian Xiao. Liu Ye took the girl's leg as she panically asked what she was up to. Ye Ji looked frightened and said that she would easily set the bone back since the girl had dislocated it. The girl in Xiao's hands panicked even more and started yelling for the girl not to do that. But Liu Ye didn't listen to her and properly yanked the girl's ankle and the girl screamed loudly. Ye Ji winked at the girl and offered to check if she could walk now. Jian Xiao began to lower the surprised girl to the ground, and she felt that she was now truly in pain. The man started to walk away and the girl tried to stop him and told him that her leg still hurt. But Liu Ye intercepted the other person's hand, preventing her from touching Jiang Xiao, and said that if it didn't work, she could try again. But the girl hastily refused. After that, the girl walked over to Xiao, stroked his chest and called the man by name. Afterward, she took him firmly by the tie, turned to the girls and told him they were going home. Although at first, Zhang Xiao was confused by such an onslaught from Liu Ye, but he was happy to leave behind the dumbfounded women. Neither mother nor daughter could believe what the girl had just allowed herself to do. The girl noticed that she had never seen anyone who dared to behave like this with Zhang Xiao before. But the woman got angry and started yelling that she couldn't talk like that when she was being screwed over by that skank. Nanting said that the girl was useless and that would give her another try to get Xiao into bed. UNT got a call from Auntie Ting asking to arrange for Ying Ying to be her uncle's secretary. She said she had just graduated and needed somewhere to practice, and the guy was old enough to help. UNT listened to Aunt Nan Ting's request, and after thinking for a while, he agreed to fulfill it. The guy hung up the phone and was already imagining what a fun show was in store for him in the near future. Liu Ye continued to lead the man behind her, using her tie as a leash. Then she let him go and Riley apologized for preventing the man from doing his heroic duty. Liu Ye turned to Xiao and said that she wasn't jealous. She just didn't want to watch a cheap show. Jian Xiao was right beside her and placed his hand on the girl's waist, pulling her to him. Liu Ye wanted to say something, but the guy whispered in her ear to keep her still as someone was coming. They stood close together and watched a man and a little girl walk past them. Zhang Xiao praised the girl and said that he expected her to play the same game at the evening reception. Evening was approaching, and the evening reception of the Zhang Xiao family was soon to come. Liu Ye Zi walked out wearing sparkling shoes. Her heels clattered on the floor, drawing attention to her. She walked out to Xiao and asked how he liked that dress for tonight. The girl was wearing a beautiful blue dress in which she all seemed to shine, but the neckline was very deep. Yi Zhang Xiao said that this dress is not suitable. Liu Ye was greatly surprised to hear such an answer. The guy said it was too revealing and asked Liu Ye to change into another dress. Liu Ye was upset, plus this dress was very difficult to take off. She changed into a more closed white dress. It was very delicate, and she asked if it would fit. This Zhang Xiao liked, and the girl said that he had very old-fashioned tastes in clothes. There were a huge number of tables at the reception and everything seemed to sparkle. There weren't very many people yet. Zhang Xiao and Liu Ye were met by a bunch of girls who immediately started saying how irresistible he was. Liu Ye heard someone whispering insults at Xiao for cheating his grandfather and getting an undeserved inheritance. The voice said that the guy was nothing to be proud of and that Xiao wouldn't be here for long. The girl turned around and tried to see who it was. Suddenly she heard that voice again, only much louder. And now he was saying that he hadn't seen his nephew for a long time. Liu Ye turned around and saw a man walking towards Jian Xiao to hug and quickly approaching them. Liu Ye turned around and saw a man walking towards Jian Xiao to hug and quickly approaching them. Jian Xiao took a step back and was able to avoid an embrace with the unpleasant man who had just recently insulted him. The man felt embarrassed, and Liu Ye thought that this was what he should do for saying bad things about Xiao. Uncle Z turned to the girl and began to say that she would be able to bear him many healthy children. Jiang Xiao asked not to worry about it and said that one Yao Yao was enough for them. His wife appeared next to the man and said that such a young girl should give birth to many heirs for Xiao. Just in case something irreparable happens to Yao Yao, there should still be an heir. Liu Ye didn't like the fact that these people let these people behave like this and say such things to them. She pretended to think about it and said that Jiang Xiao was young and strong for this kind of talk, only if someone wasn't going to kill him. 
Uncle Z and his wife didn't expect to hear such accusations directly to their face, much less from Liu Ye. The man pointed at the girl and started yelling that such a slutty girl didn't dare talk to him like that. Zhang Xiao covered Liu Ye with himself and asked his uncle, watch his tongue since his wife was just as much a member of the family. He pulled the girl against him and told her that anything he could call his own here, she could safely consider hers as well. This phrase was heard not only by Uncle Sai but also by a whole bunch of other people. And they were all surprised. Liu Yezi became nervous and decided that Zhang Xiao had entered the role too convincingly. Uncle Su made a phone call and ordered to execute the plan much earlier as he could no longer hold back. There were a huge number of people at the party and they were all having fun. But Liu Ye thought that all these hypocrites were unlikely to be really happy with Zhang Xiao. The girl looked at Zhang Xiao beside her and couldn't take her eyes off him. Now she understood why Jian Xiao always looked so lonely. It was not surprising having such an environment. The man felt someone else's gaze on him and turned around to look. He noticed that Liu Yue was looking at him. The girl tried to pretend that she just happened to glance at him and started drinking her wine. And then absolutely seriously asked Xiao to be careful with that Uncle Z. Zhang Xiao leaned over to the embarrassed girl and asked if she was worried about him. And she said that she wasn't yet. The man calmed her down and admitted that he had already infiltrated his entourage. Jian Xiao took the girl's hand and said that he would take her to a place where they could relax. Liu Ye walked in a short robe and said that she knew he would be alone because the Zhang family is very greedy. The girl called out to Xiao while she herself began to watch the water splashing. Suddenly she saw a man who was wearing only a bathing suit and was heading in her direction. Zhang Xiao walked over to her, and the girl just watched him and couldn't say a word. The guy took Liu Ye to the hot spring and asked the girl to be careful. He approached the girl and said that she had done a good job. Liu Ye said that it was nothing special. Yi felt that she couldn't be around Xiao without feeling embarrassed, so she started to move away. She lied that it was hard to breathe here and said she would go to the other side for a while. Liu Ye stepped back and leaned on the edge, enjoying her body relaxing in the hot water. The girl herself did not notice how she fell asleep and spent half an hour in that position. She was awakened by the splashing of water very near her, and she opened her eyes slightly, not realizing what was happening. She saw a worried Zhang Xiao asking how she was feeling. Liu Ye said that she was fine and she just accidentally fell asleep and started falling right into the water. Zhang Xiao carried her out of the water in his arms and shouted for the girl to wake up immediately. Liu Ye reached out her hand to his face and said that she was fine and the guy didn't need to be so emotional. Zhang Xiao pressed the girl against him and carried her away from the hot springs. When the girl realized she was being carried in her arms, she quickly got off, grabbed her robe and ran away. Zhang Xiao wanted to call a doctor, but Liu Ye said she needed to breathe and it would pass. By the time the girl was able to go outside, the month was already shining in the sky and the sky was densely dotted with stars. Liu Ye changed into her clothes and went out for a walk and noticed how beautiful the night was. She sat on a garden bench and admired the stars. She realized that it had been a very long time since she had seen them. Suddenly the girl felt someone's tongue tickling her leg and thought it was a cat. But when Liu Ye looked down, she was horrified to see that right in front of her lay the very same tiger. Suddenly in the middle of the night, a loud female scream was heard. It came from deep within the territory. Zhang Xiao was finishing changing his clothes when he heard a shout and recognized Liu Ye's voice in it. Suddenly he realized that there was usually a tiger walking in the western part of the park, and he was very scared. Zhang Xiao threw on his jacket and ordered, immediately search for his wife and rescue her at all costs. The guy ran while thinking about the wild tiger that almost no one could escape alive. He hoped it wasn't the reason Liu Ye was screaming. Zhang Xiao didn't stop for a second and started shouting out the girl's name in an attempt to find her. But what he saw when he did find it struck Xiao to the very core. Liu Ye sat next to the tiger and stroked the top of his head, telling him how obedient little Zhang was. The guards who accompanied Mr. Zhang on the search were shocked to see it too. Liu Ye noticed that someone had come and was standing behind her and turned around to see who it was. Xiao was there and the girl told him how cute and fluffy little John was. The boy wondered why she named him that. And Liu Ye thought this because he also looks fierce and just as unsociable. He was little Zhang Xiao. Xiao gawked at the tiger and the girl thought it was strange for a tiger to be afraid of humans. But the Zhang family weren't exactly ordinary people. The man sat down next to Liu Ye and said that in all these years, he was the only one who had managed to befriend a tiger. He asked how the girl managed it and Liu Ye said that she possessed the rare art of cat caresses. The guy took off his jacket and threw it over Liu Ye's shoulders, explaining that it was cold outside. The tiger that lay at their feet watched the actions of the humans with interest. The girl became very embarrassed again and started to leave. She said it was too cold and it was time to go home. The next sunny day came, and everything around played brightly with colors. The servants who were tending the flowers in the garden could not believe their eyes and opened their mouths in amazement. Liu Ye was walking along the path not far from them and leading a calm and happy tiger on a leash. Everyone was shocked that a tiger approached the main house especially on a leash. 
No one expected this from Liu Yiye. The girl walked into the main hall, and Senior Master Zhang expressed his admiration for her. He said he'd heard she'd tamed a tiger, so he'd also taught it commands. Yao Yao, who was sitting in Grandpa's arms, pointed to Mommy and told her that Daddy was listening to her too. Liu Ye felt awkward and asked the boy not to say such nonsense. Grandpa said that he could retire peacefully now that Xiao was in such good hands. Grandpa said he hoped she could be relied upon and handed the girl an envelope of money. Zhang Xiao's family headed towards the helicopter and they were asked to go back and take care of each other. So they boarded the helicopter and began their long-awaited trip back home. Liu Ye and Yao Yao were very tired so they fell asleep as soon as their helicopter took off into the sky. Yi Zhang Xiao gently put his arm around the girl's shoulders so as not to wake her up and watched her with a smile. The girl woke up because her phone started ringing, and in her sleep started looking for it. When Liu Ye took out her phone, the screen said that Xiao Bai was calling her. Jiang Xiao was wary when he saw who was calling the girl, and Liu Ye was very surprised. The girl answered the phone and promised that she would meet the guy tonight. From the phone ringing and the movement beside him, Yao Yao also woke up and called for his mom. Liu Ye said she had to have dinner tonight with an old friend and asked the boy to behave himself at home. Yao Yao agreed, and Liu Ye asked Jiang Xiao for time off for the evening, but he refused her. The girl got angry and reminded her that she was their employee and needed her days off and couldn't just be exploited. But shouting didn't work. So Liu Ye turned to her begging and pleading gaze. Zhang Xiao tried to resist her charms but he realized that this was a fight he had lost. Therefore, allowed the girl to leave for one night. Liu Ye was glad that her cute pretense always works. So far they had flown home and when the girl got free there was already a month and stars shining in the sky. She was on her way to meet Xiao Bai who was standing at the entrance of the restaurant. The girls nearby were discussing his attractiveness. Liu Ye thought that Xiao Bai had always been popular, but right now, he didn't look like his old self. However, when the guy saw the girl, a wide smile appeared on his face and he greeted her. Liu Ye waved back at him and decided that she had just imagined it, and the same cute Xiao Bai was still in front of her. The waiter brought a menu to their table and said the guy hadn't stopped by with his girlfriend in a while. Liu Ye wanted to correct him, but Xiao Bai replied that they would drop by here more often from now on. The girl didn't understand why her friend had tricked the man and said he shouldn't have done it. Xiao Bai said that other than Liu Ye, he doesn't have anyone else's girlfriend to bring here. Liu Ye said that the guy is a fool and as always says nonsense to piss her off. Xiao Bai started to mock the girl and said that little Ye Zi was too cute when she was angry. Xiao Bai noticed a few pieces of rice on the corner of the girl's mouth and asked her not to move. Then he showed the rice to the girl and said that she had some rice left there. Liu Ye was embarrassed by this. Xiao Bai asked about increasing the security of the Jiang family and whether she has a bodyguard. And the girl said she did. But Zhang Xiao doesn't have much contact with outsiders. And Bai said that he looks like a person who carries a gun. The girl was surprised and said it was nonsense because the man was not the head of the mafia. Liu Ye said that he may look angry and formidable, but he is actually an ordinary person. The guy said he wasn't worried then, and they chalked to a speedy return to the movies. Suddenly, the phone in Liu Ye's knotted hand rang and she had to distract herself from the conversation. She asked the guy to wait until she answered the phone and saw that Yao Yao was calling her. She picked up the phone and immediately heard the boy say he was not feeling well. She started to worry and asked what was hurting, after which she quickly jumped up from her seat and promised the child that she would come as soon as possible. Liu Ye apologized and said that she had to go. Xiao Bai was upset that they didn't have a normal sit-down again, and the girl bowed and promised to sit normally next time, and now she was inviting him. Xiao Bai smiled softly at Liu Ye and said that he remembered her words and would wait. They were leaving the cafe and Xiao Bai offered to give the girl a ride, but she declined. They couldn't continue the argument because right in front of them in the car sat Zhang Xiao. The man looked at the surprised Liu Ye and told her to get in the car and they would drive home. She looked at Zhang Xiao and asked why he had come to pick her up, but no one ever answered her. Because Xiao Bai and Zhang Xiao met each other's gazes and began to express their displeasure with each other's gazes, Xiao Bai was the first to retreat. He smiled sweetly at the man and said then returned the girl to him. Jiang Xiao unhappily hummed and took his gaze away from the guy. He waited for Liu Ye to get into the car to leave, but she didn't do it for a long time, so Jiang Xiao asked why she was still standing by her side. Liu Ye looked at the man a little confused because she herself didn't know the answer to this question. Xiao Bai waved after them and asked them not to speed up and to drive very carefully, and after their car had driven a fair distance away, pulled out and inserted the earpiece. Xiao Bai planted a wire in Liu Yeji's bag as they left the restaurant together. And now the little device she had in her purse was helping the guy hear what they were talking about. Xiao Bai tensely looked in front of him and thought about the fact that his target was Zhang Xiao. When they got home, they went straight to take Yao Yao's temperature. It was slightly elevated. Liu Ye hugged the boy and told him that he scared her very much. And the boy said that he missed his mom. The girl pulled the baby away from her and asked what he called her. 
Yao. Yao happily called the girl mommy again. Liu Ye felt very guilty when she told the boy that she wasn't really his mom. Yao Yao looked into her eyes frustrated and called her mom again, but with a question and sadness in her voice. The girl immediately gave in and allowed the boy to call himself whatever he wanted. Liu Ye hugged Yao Yao. The boy showed his daddy a thumbs up and received the same gesture in return. UNT, who was watching this, thought that their innocent Yao Yao had just circled his mom. A strange squeaking could be heard in the living room of the house, indicating danger in the house. In his hands, the man had a special device that beeped heavily near Liu Ye's purse. Jian Xiao climbed in and saw a micro-listening device in it. It was expected, but it was still unpleasant. The man snapped the device in his fist and realized that they were indeed in the crosshairs. Jiang Xiao called someone right after he found the wire and said that the killer finally gave himself away. The dim moonbeams were shining through the bedroom window and illuminated the room a little. Yao Yao slept in his bed and Liu Ye fell asleep on the floor as she sat next to him. Next to the girl lay her cell phone, which rang unexpectedly in the middle of the night. Liu Ye picked up the phone and heard about auditioning for a first-person role in the country's celestial beauty. The girl excitedly told Liu Ye that it was a hot project about palace intrigue. Liu Ye smiled awkwardly and admitted that palace intrigues were not very interesting to her right now. But the girl said that Ling Shui was also going to participate in these auditions, and Liu Ye immediately changed her mind and agreed to participate in this casting. It turned out that the project was produced by the Zhang family, so Liu Ye had the lead role in her pocket. She realized that Zhang Xiao had taken her seriously, and she was very curious as to why he would do this. The girl headed to Xiao's room and knocked, asking if he was asleep. The man allowed her to enter. Zhang Xiao sat in a chair near the window and dangled a wine glass in his hand. Liu Ye saw such a Zhang Xiao, and for some reason she was very surprised because of this picture. The girl felt as if this situation was familiar to her, as if she had seen something like this before. Zhang Xiao worriedly got up from his seat and started walking towards the girl. He asked what was wrong with her. But in Liu Ye's memories, the guy looked like he was a completely different person, and that was strange. And then the girl couldn't understand where such images involving Xiao even came from in her head. She had a terrible headache and Liu Ye screamed and grabbed her. Jian Xiao ran to the girl. And Liu Ye kept seeing images in her head involving Zhang Xiao, even though she had never seen it before. She remembered Zhang Xiao's beautiful, sincere smile, and she wondered if it really belonged to the guy. Liu Ye Ji always seemed like she had forgotten something, and it was something very important. These memories were from the year she studied at the Beijing Film Academy. Back then, Zhang Wensheng was courting her, and she didn't reciprocate him in a special way. On the contrary, Ling Shui talked about him all the time, but Liu Yi Ye felt that he was not the person she wanted to be around. Later on the eve of graduation, Liu Ye's group went on a small trip to the mountains. Liu Ye Ji had an accident while climbing a mountain. The girl fell off a cliff. Then she hit her head hard, and Zhang Wenshun found her, brought her down to the foot of the mountain, and carried her to the hospital. After that incident, Wen Sheng kept coming to the hospital, and that's when Liu Ye started having constant headaches. But she soon recovered and entered the showbiz circuit and began to rapidly develop her award-winning career. Wen S. Jin helped the girl run the business, and she gave the guy a small stake as a thank you. But then she left the movie industry, hoping to get married. She was provided for by Wen Sheng, and then it turned out he cheated on her. But right now, Liu Ye Ji didn't think that any of her memories weren't quite right. She has always been passionate about her career and loved her job since Wen Sheng convinced her to leave. Previously, whenever Liu Ye was busy with work, Wen Sheng would always bring her coffee. Liu Ye wondered how she could have previously overlooked the connection between Ling Shui and Wen Sheng. All the previous years the girl had been naive, foolish, and simple-minded. Suddenly she remembered her medication. Everything that was going on in Liu Yeji's mind was so confusing. She wanted to understand what she was missing. But why did she see a different person in her memories? But at the same time, very similar to Xiao. That memory also gave her a massive headache and the glass fell out of her hand. But back then, Zhang Xiao was very concerned about her condition. And she could see the frightened expression on his face. Now as she sits on the floor and agonizes over her headache, she sees the even more concerned face of the man in front of her. Liu Ye couldn't cope with the headache and lost consciousness. Jian Xiao tried to wake her up, but the girl had already lost consciousness and it was useless. Therefore, Zhang Xiao was silent and pondered his next actions. He gently lifted the girl from the floor and picked her up in his arms and then carried Liu Ye towards the bed. He put the girl down and stroked her hair. The man was very worried about Liu Ye. Jian Xiao walked over to one of his racks and reached for the jars that were on the topmost shelf. This jar contained a calming essential oil to help treat memory disorders. Jian Xiao unscrewed the cap and dripped some into the scented diffuser. He promised that the girl would remember everything soon. The scent of the reproduction oil began to waft around the room, and the man promised that he would keep Liu Yi safe. 
Jian Xiao kissed the girl's forehead and told her that she would remember everything very soon and come back. Lin Shui performed at the casting for the country's celestial beauty and bowed to the judges at the end of her performance. The girl thought about the fact that Wen Sheng's friend had authored the script and she could ask him to help. She mentally told the other girls that they had come in vain and mocked them. Suddenly all her joy dissipated when Liu Ye appeared behind her and called out to her. All the girls who came to the casting also heard Liu Ye's voice and couldn't believe their eyes. Liu Yezi smiled kindly and welcomed everyone. She looked beautiful. Ling Sui was annoyed and surprised. She asked why Liu Ye had come to today's casting. And then she started telling her sister that since she had just returned, she shouldn't take on such serious projects. There were many Liu Ye fans present at the venue and she greeted everyone, and replied to the evil Ling Shui that she should try her best if she didn't want everyone to be able to bypass her and destroy her reputation. Ling Shui forced herself to calm down and wished her sister good luck, and reassured herself that she was familiar with the scriptwriter. Liu Ye thanked and said that she actually came here just for the sake of appearances. Ling Shui didn't understand what she meant. And then Liu Ye hovered over the girl and asked if the girl had watched what kind of company was making this movie. Ling Shui didn't look, but now she had her suspicions. So she quickly took out her phone to take a look. Her major fears were confirmed by the first article she saw that the movie was being made by Star Entertainment. Ling Shui immediately turned gloomy and felt her body stiffen slightly from shock and despair. And then she heard Liu Ye behind her saying that she had made a deal with someone not long ago and wants this issue to be resolved in a fair manner, not because of some ulterior motives. Ling Shui turned to her sister, who was telling her that the movie would only come out good with the right actresses. And then Liu Ye went up to her sister and said that she wouldn't do something against her because she had a conscience. To those around them, the scene between the sisters looked very cute and they were discussing how close they were. Ling Shui, on the other hand, was just seething with anger at this moment. And Liu Ye was saying that she could take the useless jerk for herself. The girl said that she didn't need him, but Ling Shui should know that he would soon have nothing left. Liu Ye said that she didn't know if she would need him then, but they had true love. So Liu Ye promised to wait for them. Just at this moment, a man came out of the room and called Liu Ye to audition. Liu Ye put her hand on her sister's shoulder and wished her luck in her display, and smiled softly at her. And then she turned around and headed for the listening room, leaving her angry sister behind her. Ling Shui felt humiliated and mentally promised herself that she would definitely deal with her half-sister. Liu Ye played her role as if she was already wearing the right costume and had the right scenery around her. Though the girl was actually standing in the middle of an empty room in a plain white dress, no one saw it. The jury was delighted with such acting and could not wait for her appearance in the movie. Liu Ye shook everyone's hands while accepting the praise and said that she was looking forward to their productive cooperation. Although Liu Ye wanted to just rub Lin Shui's nose in it at first, she wanted the role herself. The script was really great. The plot of Heavenly Country Beauty is as exciting as love itself. It tells the story of love. The story of a girl and a guy who loved each other but lost their memories. And for some inexplicable reason the plot seemed very close and painfully familiar to Liu Yiye. There were two men hiding behind the container, guns in their hands and nervous because they didn't see a police officer. Suddenly the silhouette of a man appears behind the criminals and he can be seen jumping off the container. This is the policeman. He lands on the floor not far from the criminals and reaches for his gun. And immediately, with a couple of light and quick movements, he shoots at the men in front of him. The criminals scream, but don't have time to do anything. They fall lifelessly to the floor from their wounds. The policeman can now afford to relax and throws a confident glance at one of the cameras. The people on set are just thrilled with this scene, and everyone starts praising the guy's acting. Xiao Bai is praised and said that despite his long hiatus, he's still just as on point and has no equal. There were girls crowded around the guy. Some of them were fixing his makeup, and some were offering him water. Xiao Bai asked to give him his phone charmingly smiled and took a picture. He sent the picture to Liu Yiye to evaluate his image. The girl replied right away. She wrote that he looked amazing. Just at this moment on the set, Yuan T, he praised Xiao Bai's mannerisms and movements and said that he was a true professional. Everyone present looked at Yuan T. The girls didn't immediately realize who was in front of them, and the guy was not very happy with him. Then someone from the team shouted out that this guy was Mr. Jiang's grandson, and everyone started to look at UNT. Every member of the team was very happy to see someone like John UNT, and they wondered what he was doing here. The guy smiled confidently and said hello to the entire camera crew at once, walking closer to Xiao Bai. They shook hands and UNT said he had lunch with one of the directors. He got off early and decided to drop in. The girls were very happy to be able to see Mr. Zhang's grandson, and one of the girls thought the lad had come for her husband. But the girl next to her thought that the offer to star in a movie will be her husband. The guys moved away from the other people, and Yuan T noticed that the guy knew him. Xiao Yuai said he knew everyone around Ye Ji. 
Yuan Ti looked at the guy and said that he was even braver than he looked if he dared to court his aunt. Xiao Bai said that they were just childhood friends, but Zhang Xiao had already made himself look bad many times. Yuan Ti reminded the guy that the Zhang family has enough power to prevent the guy from rising to the top again. But Yu Bai said that he knows, but he also knows that his uncle won't do such a thing, and Yuan Ti's threats are useless. The guy asked that John Yuan Ti should leave the idle talk and go over and say why he came. Yuan Ti said his uncle asked him to give him something. He took out a bag containing a broken listening device. Xiao Bai looked at him carefully, then smiled and pretended that he didn't even know what this thing was. But Yuan Ti said that he knew it himself. Xiao Bai wanted to touch the bag and said it looked like a small earphone. Yuan Ti intercepted the other's hand and firmly surrendered Yu Bai's wrist in his hand. He wasn't satisfied with the guy pretending. Yuan Ti scrutinized the guy in front of him while continuing to hold his hand. Xiao Bai remained calm even in such a situation and continued to pretend that he understood absolutely nothing. At that time, Yuan Ti let go of the other person's hand and told the guy that it was no big deal then, and most likely he just pulled out the wrong thing. But immediately after saying those words, Yuan Ti pointed the gun at the head of the guy across the street. Xiao Bai remained calm and asked if Mr. Zhang Xiao was so jealous that he was willing to go on a killing spree because of this. Yuan Ti didn't reply anything to this and took out his phone, where there was already a video call with Gang Xiao. The man said the guy acts like he knows nothing but refuses to act in any way. The guy's indifferent composure gave away. Afterwards, Xiao told the guy that this was his last warning. He must leave Ye Ji or else he would have no mercy. Xiao Bai replied that Zhang Xiao was abusing his position and offered to see who Liu Yelzi would choose on her own. Xiao Bai was sure that the man wouldn't be able to compete with him. But Zhang Xiao said that the girl had already chosen him anyway. This made the guy freeze, and the man revealed that Yao Yao was their mutual biological son. Yuan Ti lit a cigarette with a lighter gun, after which he gave it to the guy, said it was a gift, and started to leave. And Xiao Bai couldn't believe that Liu Ye had given birth to Zhang Xiao's baby. Yuan Ti was already in the car when he asked his uncle why he told that guy everything when even his aunt doesn't know about it. Zhang Xiao said that he wanted to see what Xiao Bai could learn by having this information. Yuan Ti was slightly surprised by this. And Zhang Xiao explained that the whole matter was very complicated, and Xiao Bai's family was also involved in everything. And the man believed that if Xiao Bai started to look into it, he might learn something that even he didn't know yet. Liu Ye really did have a baby. The young boy stood on the roof of the skyscraper watching the sunset. He remained in his thoughts. The picture shows a cute little boy with his mom. Looks like Zhang Xiao wasn't fooled. It's her baby, there's no doubt about it. He gets a message on his messenger, cell phone, and gives up a distinctive beep. Who could have written? Liu Ye shows Xiao Bai the test photos from the photo shoot. She is now promoting the drink. She wants to get his opinion. He looks at me with a smile. It's what he used to do for a living. The life of an actor and a photo model is not easy. He appreciates the cool clothes she's wearing and the look the costume designers gave her. Looks good, it's right in the national style. Xiao Bai asks her not to dredge up the past. All movie stars and models have done it, but you have to make a living somehow. That year he started his career when he wasn't working at all, so he did a commercial for a children's drink. Nothing dishonorable about it, though. It was remembered with a funny story and a picture of him in a cow costume. Who'd have thought she'd remember all that? Yeji, if she remembers it so well. Why did she forget she had a baby? Something doesn't add up. It doesn't work like that. She cheered him up. She told him he had the right looks for a baby commercial, and told him not to get mad. Xiao Bai gazed pensively at the sunset. There was only one thought on his mind. He had to find out for himself. Yeji, looking at the correspondence with her friend, stood and laughed. She's in the dressing room herself right now. She's ready to work in advertising. Suddenly, someone called her out of the blue. She quickly put her phone aside. She looked where the call had come from. Wei Wei stood simply and cried, wiping herself with a handkerchief. She called out for Ye Zi, wanted to see her as soon as possible. It seemed like Wei Wei was suffering a lot in her loneliness. She just didn't know what to do next. And then she got kicked in the face by Ye Ji. Apparently she didn't have that kind of sympathy, and didn't want to see her. There was little joy. The impact was just right. Wei Wei just immediately flew off and fell to the side. She was knocked out for a moment. Wei Wei holding onto Ye Ji's dress called her baby. She knew she was to blame. She had a great debt behind her, and she hadn't paid it. Ye Zi met all these tantrums very calmly. She didn't care at all despite Wei Wei's pleas and tears. Wei Wei is a brilliant agent that countless companies and stars are eager to contract. She had taken each of her charges to the pinnacle of success. At least that's what she thought. Wei Wei was quickly interrupted in her speech. Ye Zi shut her mouth and said stop acting like a bathhouse. Ye Ji then looked at her condescendingly, with an affectionate look, and sighed. After all, she had done quite a few good things to Ye. She's happy to see her, her little worker bee. She always plowed for the whole hive, and she's always done a fine job. 
Ye Ji started waving Wei Wei away and said, Don't you dare hang on her. She was probably afraid for her clothes, that she wouldn't wrinkle them. The director and his assistant came into the dressing room. Little Wei is here. He's been looking for her for so long. He figured out where to find her. Wei Wei had calmed down by then. She sat in the chair reading the contract and drinking a cup of flavored black coffee. She said hello to director Zhang and producer Wang. It had been a long time since they had seen each other. But in this situation, Wei Wei acted like a professional. Director Zhang couldn't believe she just came back from Hollywood. Now it's for sure that the whole show business won't be able to resist her. He quickly invited Wei Wei to dinner. No excuses. She thanked him and said that his kind words meant a lot to her. Ye Ji knows Wei Wei is the best agent she's ever had. She's a bit of a weirdo, but looks can be deceiving. She has the grip of a shark. She was in her element, and she was never the victim. She was always the hunter, and she had a knack for talent. When Ye Ji ended her career, she was very upset. She packed her bags and moved to Hollywood, because there was nothing left to hold on to. The big question is, why she's back now? What's the reason? What could be so serious? She's obviously out to get her sister, to get back at her ex-boyfriend, who she thinks is a loser, and to get back her mentee instead of a top actress. Ye Zi didn't speak, but for a few years she worked very hard. Everything becomes very clear to Wei Wei. She understands everything without words. Ye Zi looked at her agent with gratitude. Really, in show business, it's every man for himself. Not many people are interested in your career. Ye Zi started to waver off. She doesn't want to be sought after like a cat. She doesn't like all this fluffy affection. Wei Wei asked Ye Zi about Jiang Xiao. They're together. I mean, they're a couple, and they're dating. They're trying to build a relationship. Ye Zi was slightly embarrassed by this question. It was unexpected. Her personal life, she tries not to talk about it. Wei Wei faltered at the explanation. She's just his child's babysitter. And not by choice. It's just the way things are. Ye Zi began to cry. If Yao Yao wasn't so honest, she would have left a long time ago. She realizes that no one wants her. Wei Wei decided to sweeten the pill. And said that everything that happens is great. You have to look on the bright side. He heard that Jiang Xiao is a very unpleasant person. He only uses his high position to his advantage. He's used up a lot of pretty girls. I didn't think he was capable of that. You wouldn't know it from looking at him. The boy's father. Purely positive qualities. He's very good to Yo-Yo. There's no way he's bullying girls. That's probably nonsense. It's just people spreading rumors. Wei Wei was a little surprised. He was very much surprised by his ward's train of thought. He didn't expect such a response. Is he wrong to think he's forcing Ye Ji? In any case, for some reason they are together. It's only their business. It's not an easy situation. Wei Wei has decided to help Ye Ji. He will do his best to find out everything about the future husband in his ward. He grabs Ye Ji's hand and pulls her along with him. He asks her to go shopping with him. Shopping for brand name items lifts his spirits. Jan Company Headquarters. The company was very successful and rich in the market. Its owner managed the business well. A young girl of good looks and good looks approaches the office of the executive director. Her heels clack on the floor. She's bringing her brother his morning coffee. I wonder if her brother will be surprised when he sees his sister. They all work together in the family business. She opens the door and calls out for her brother John, but no one is there. She can't figure out where the people are. She set the cup of coffee on his desk, and she saw a picture of his young son with some girl. She took it in her hands. This picture began to scrutinize it. There the baby is sleeping on the bed with his nanny. During family conflicts, they will, of course, side with Jiang Xiao. But nevertheless, they gather dirt on their brother. She started going through a shelf of files, trying to find something secret. Maybe her brother was dirty, and she wanted to use that to her advantage. After a while, she found something. It was a folder with colored markers that looked familiar to her. She saw the personnel file, and a picture of Yeji, a brief biography, marital status, a complete dossier. Next, she saw a picture of a luxury, expensive yacht, the very same one she was traveling on, and also the location of the cliff, which has eight markings on it, the number of victims who died. Sister Zhang Xiao immediately realized what was being held in her hands. It was very valuable information. It was exactly what she was looking for, and something she could use to her advantage. Just then, she heard footsteps outside the door. Someone was approaching her brother's office. She was quickly alarmed. Her older brother, Zhang Xiao, enters the office. He is very surprised that his sister came to his workplace without his presence, and is standing at his desk. He asked what she was doing here. She started making excuses that she was clumsy, and that she spilled coffee on his desk. He calmly picks up his cell phone, and starts dialing. He's about to find out who made his sister a secretary. Jiang Xiao told UNT that he was finished, but the latter started to make excuses and said to listen to him very carefully. He tells his uncle it's starvation marketing. 
He treats his aunt with all his heart, and she doesn't get it at all. She needs to learn to appreciate everything that's being done for her. We have to make her jealous, just so her feelings will be on full display. John Xiao was not as enthusiastic as his nephew. He explained that he had no need for such tricks. Yi Ji doesn't need to be disturbed and worried about trivial matters. She has no feelings. But it's getting late. The clatter of a woman's shoes heels can be heard near the front door of the study. Zhang Xiao. The nephew says the aunt is already here. It's not a pleasant surprise. No one expected her to visit so soon. Zhang Xiao stands stiffly and his newfound secretary starts hugging him. This is a very unpleasant sight for Ye Ji. Ye Zi and Wei Wei were extremely surprised by this. They had hoped to catch Zhang Xiao alone in his office, but certainly not with a group of women. Question for a sprinkle. What do you do if you pretend to be the boss's girlfriend suddenly see that he is cuddling with another girl? The answer is to look at the situation through the eyes of the boss alone. Evaluate the real situation and do what's necessary. You need to stay calm, but with a hint of panic. Panic is indicated by a slight smirk. Running eyes with a guilty look. What's this all about? Ye Ji can't find her place. Her emotions are just boiling and bubbling inside her. She's very angry. Never could she have imagined that after a call for help, she would be faced with a plot twist like this melodrama. The girl hugging this man looks very familiar. Maybe it's that clumsy schemer. She lacks skill. As she lay on the pavement and said she tripped and her leg hurt, and she couldn't walk anymore. And who would pay for that stupidity? This must be another and failed attempt to steal her boyfriend. Does Zhang Xiao need to be rescued and her help? Suddenly it was as if they were blown away by the wind. This picture made Ye Ji laugh. It's not hard to imagine what images appeared in her mind. Jian Xiao and his new secretary looked awkwardly startled. This was hardly the turn of events they had expected. Wei Wei jumped up and gave a kick to her head with his foot. It was a very good kick. He put literally all his soul and emotion into it. She flew off and hit the wall, like some pathetic rusty mannequin. Gang Xiao didn't even bat an eye, so she's nothing to him. Wei Wei started acting like a little kid, and asking for help because he supposedly saw a big mosquito, and she was very scared. He's so afraid of mosquitoes. Poor thing, he let out a tear, and took out a clean white handkerchief for show. Jiang Xiao couldn't say anything. The secretary's sister got up and started to get hysterical. She's already come to her senses. What the fuck did she get hit out of? So she flew off into the wall. She demanded an explanation. She started to ask Jiang Xiao for help. He's seen how she's been wronged. She doesn't understand why he doesn't stand up for her. No one pushed or hit anyone. Don't talk nonsense. Wei Wei just saved her by killing a huge mosquito. Wei Wei started counting down. He's a grown man and he raises his hand to a woman. Now she's going to teach him a lesson. You can't just turn on a fool like that. No one raised their hands. He just got a new manicure so he killed a mosquito with his foot. And he's not a guy. He's a girl. She is despised. She will not be able to seem sweet and innocent. In fact, she is a hypocrite and a dishonest girl. A common kept woman. The secretary started yelling. That it's not true, she's demanding that Zhang Xiao kick her out immediately. Zhang Xiao calmly replied that if anyone needed to leave, it was her. He wants to know what she was sniffing around his office first. He contacted security and told them to check the security camera immediately and see what she was doing here when he wasn't here. She didn't see any cameras when she came in, and now there's no way to get away with it. Words are one thing, but video footage is the real proof. If they find anything, they'll sue her for stealing information from the company. There will be no mercy. She stood there, her face convulsed with anger. She realized it. The surgery wasn't going to work. She wouldn't do anything to her brother. In anger, she jumped on Ye Ji and accused her of seducing her brother, calling her all kinds of mean words. Jiang Xiao liked this turn of events. He is excited to watch this show. The fights between the women are very entertaining. Ye Ji easily knocked her hand aside. It was as if she had professional self-defense techniques. Then she grabbed her attacker's arm with coolness. She didn't immediately realize what was happening. She was taken by surprise and made a throw over her shoulder. It was masterful. She just slammed her spine into the floor. You could even hear the bones crunching. And she's lying there in a semi-conscious state. And she doesn't know what she's doing. The blow was very quick and hard. Only a groan is heard. Wei Wei is absolutely delighted. He praises her and asks Yedzi how she got such brilliant skills. It's obvious she's been working on herself. She was a little embarrassed by the compliments. She was acting on automatic. She didn't even realize she had such abilities. And then I wondered, I mean, how does she have this knowledge? It's probably her body's reaction to being raped. It was like she did it all by herself. Every time someone came on to her. It used to bother her, but now she realizes it's really weird. Every year in the middle of the bridge in the park, she's here waiting for one person. No matter the weather, good or bad, she just waits. She hasn't lost hope yet.
Even standing in the pouring rain, sheltering under an umbrella, she waits for this man. Maybe this time he'll come. And finally she will be able to wait for him. Her faith and patience will be rewarded. She can't remember what he looks like, can't remember his name. But the warmth of his hands she will never forget. As soon as he appears, she will recognize him. Just a passerby walking past her. So it's just a stranger. It's not someone she's expecting. And then she felt a tingling sensation in her palms. An unexplainable sensation. The sensation immediately reminded her of the man she was waiting for. The sensation was unmistakable. Tears came to her eyes. Her heart could not deceive her. Yes, the moment has arrived. And his legs are trembling with excitement. A simple passerby. It's definitely him. It's exactly the man she's been waiting for all these years. There was no limit to her happiness. The director says it's a great shot. Yiji is standing in front of a green screen, and there's a bunch of microphones above her. Weiwei praises Yiji. Well done. Her acting skills are still amazing. She's the best actress. Yiji asked her agent if he wanted to be her foster mom. It's a small pavilion, and she can handle everything herself. But her agent says she hasn't seen her in a long time. By the way, she's fantastically great for this role, as if she were written from her. That doesn't happen very often. But what's weird is that the screenwriter's name is hidden. It's unusual to keep the name of the scriptwriter a secret. Weiwei checked it thoroughly, but I can't find it anywhere. The script gave her a creepy feeling of something very familiar. She would have loved to meet the scriptwriter in person. Now it turns out his identity has been concealed. The more unusual this whole story gets, it's very unusual. Weiwei looked at her actress thoughtfully as her personal agent she is and knows very well, and instantly picks up on changes in her mood. Yeji is determined to find this man, and if she's already got something in her head, it will be impossible to dissuade her. She's asking Wei Wei for help. We need to go with her now and get Yao Yao out of class. This is real life. She's really like a mom now, only it would be bad if the paparazzi saw it. But there's no difference. Jian Xiao won't let that photographer get away with it. That's not the point at all. What really matters is the connection between her and Gang Xiao. That's what really matters. It's a very ordinary employer-subordinate relationship between them. They have to hurry up and kind of hurry up, otherwise they'll miss the moment. Ye Ji gets into the car and is driven to the boss boy. She waves back at Wei Wei and says goodbye to her briefly. The other girls are very jealous. They say she's definitely a kept woman in John's family. Somebody's lucky to be alive. Wei Wei heard this gossip, and it's very unpleasant, especially from people who don't know what's going on. The mediocrities are gossiping and slacking off again. As long as the producers don't keep an eye on them. Is it really necessary to report this to the bosses? Yedzi must be hearing a lot of gossip about herself. She must be very unhappy. She can be very pitiful at times. It's probably all happening because of one loser. So there's not much of a choice. I'll have to go out and have some fun, said Wei Wei's echidna to herself. Yedzi saw her boss, Zhang Xiao, and wondered what he was doing here. But he can be anywhere he wants to be. If he's in charge, why not? By the way, her boss's company is sponsoring this video project. She's currently starring in a drama called Heavenly Beauty of the Country. Zhang Xiao already realizes that she wants to replace her partner with a supporting actress director. He is now ready to fulfill her every whim. No, she didn't mean any of this. She doesn't use her position with her boss to hurt other people. She wanted to ask for help finding out the writer for this project. I really need it. She wants to see him live and talk to him. But she couldn't answer clearly why she wanted to do all this. Just a couple details she was interested in. That's all. She's getting more and more cavalier each time. He can help her set up a meeting with this screenwriter. She doesn't understand what he wants in return. So he goes in for a kiss. In surprise, she asks him what you're doing. Strangely, she could push him away now, but for some reason she doesn't dare. And now she doesn't want to get in his way. She doesn't want to think at all. Ye Ji is back at the John estate. She can't calm down and sleep. She lost control, and now she blames herself for it. And why she kissed her boss again? For the umpteenth time, turning over in the huge bed and left to right, and there's no way she can sleep. You really can't do that. She's just the boss's son's nanny. Her only responsibility is to take care of Yo-Yo. This has nothing to do with her responsibilities. She doesn't know what she's doing, but it's hard to resist. Such a rich man. The temptation is too great. She thinks there's something going on between them. That's what girls always think, thinking it's something serious. It can't go on like this. She's already thinking about quitting her job but she doesn't know what she'll do afterwards. Even though Zhang Xiao seems heartless in her eyes, but if you ask nicely, she feels like he won't embarrass her. She heard the lock on her door click. Someone must have come to visit her late at night. That's the boss's son, little Yo-Yo, a very sweet, well-mannered boy. Looks just like his father. He's brought the paper to his babysitter, and he wants to show her something, probably to show her off. 
He likes the good attitude of his teacher. He shows a drawing of them together, all three of them, walking in the park, his dad, Zhang Xiao, his nanny, Ye Ji, and himself. She naively asks the boy he drew this himself and shows his masterpiece to Ye Ji approvingly. That menacing uncle was probably his dad. He really did look very menacing. And he's always dressed all in black. Ye Ji laughed really hard when she saw her boss looking like that. Children don't deceive. They see the world with their hearts. Then he points to the drawing again, and he says the word mommy. It's understandable. The boy's growing up without a mom. Yo, yo, yo. That really surprised Yeji. She knows she's not his mother, and she doesn't have any children of her own. Well, let's keep it that way for now. She doesn't mind. He needs a real mom right now. The boy's growing up all alone. He needs a mother's warmth. That's why they hired her. He saw the door to the nanny's room open, and a tall, dark silhouette appeared. It was his dad, Jiang Xiao. Well done. You'll get your well-deserved reward tonight. How quickly other people's children grow up. Little Yo-Yo-Yo is getting tricky. Who put an interlock lock on the tire of his car? No imagination at all. He probably parked in an unplanned spot. Well, it's all the little things in life. He'll just call a cab to get to Mr. Zhang's meeting on time. Someone accidentally pours hot coffee on his snow-white jacket. That's a shame. Now he looks like a slob. And that's exactly how the boss will see him. Who did it who stained his suit? And now how to date a partner? We have to get home right away. He was greeted and told that today was the official opening of the hotel, and he seems to be in a very unpleasant situation. They also provide laundry service, and today there's a 50% discount on the room rate. In half an hour in total, you can have time to wash and dry your clothes, and he won't even be late, and the flowers can be given to Mr. Jang in a hotel room. He had no idea that this room would have such a wonderful view. He's looking forward to doing his laundry. It's all about money here. You have resources, you have wealth. You own the wealth, you own the world. There are different paths to success. All we have to do is give Mr. Jang a good reception. Then he can unite with the board members. And the company and all the profits and all the assets would be at his disposal. He laughed wickedly, and he realized that he was just going to fool everyone. And then the fire alarm sounded. It was like a sudden whistle. But that wasn't the unpleasant part. The fire suppression system went off. He was standing there wrapped in a towel, and he was splashed with ice water. It was very cold. There was a knock on the door. It was the concierge. There's a fire in the building and we have to get downstairs fast. And he's half naked and wet. He opens the door to a flight of stairs, naked in his slippers, covering his face with his hand so he doesn't suffocate. The elevator is probably out of service. During a fire, it's always best to use the stairs, because there is always a risk that the elevator will get stuck. He has only one thought in his mind to save his life and health. He can't die here. It would be a very foolish death. Finally, he gets to the floor with an exit outside the hotel. His happiness was just off the charts, almost died, almost burned alive half-naked. Finally, he made it straight out of the hotel to the outside. Everything was safe now, naked and wet, but very happy. And then a few dozen paparazzi pointed their cameras at him. They couldn't stop filming. It was a sensation. The equipment worked without delay. The camera flashes just wouldn't stop flickering. It was something to behold. And he realized that he was in a very delicate situation. Tomorrow's triple news page would see him naked and wet running out of the hotel, as expected. These pictures were on the newsfeed this morning. Jiang Wensheng's lover was furious. Jiang Wensheng tried to justify himself for what he had just established a relationship with the media. How could this be on the front pages? Does he have any idea how bad a story he's gotten himself into right at the moment when Yeji wants to take away his shareholding? Someone set him up. He's trying to justify himself to his woman. He's actually faithful to her. He hasn't cheated on her. Maybe it really is a coincidence. Anything could be. His story isn't so fantastic after all. He doesn't know if Jiang Xiao is definitely involved. And he will definitely take revenge. He tells Xue that he really needs her. This is Mr. Zhang's phone number. He's already contacted him. But because of this unpleasant incident, he didn't have time to meet him. He should be worried. Of course she'll help him. She's a young star and Mr. Zhang might like her. She likes Jiang Wensheng a lot. They start hugging and kissing hotly. After all, he had done a lot for her when she was on her feet. It's nighttime. A lamp is lit in their room. The plans were very simply elegant. They should definitely achieve their goals. What if he asks to sleep with Mr. Zhang again? Although she's used to it, it's not a bad idea. Zhang Wensheng was sleeping peacefully on the pillow next to his beloved. I don't suspect he had a real snake on his chest. Now all these media outlets are targeting Zhang Wensheng. Who knows, maybe some common dark deeds will surface. They need to take that final leap together. Life forces them to row in the same boat now. That same day as the shareholders' meeting, a dark figure appears in the doorway. The shareholders don't know who it is yet. 
Jiang Wensheng peeks through the doorway with a miserable look. He realizes that he shouldn't expect a good reception. He frantically calls his mistress Xue and asks how it went with her. She reassures him and tells him that everything is taken care of. Now he swings the door open loudly and walks smugly into the shareholder's office. He has nothing to fear. He apologizes for the delay. The four shareholders all look at him very carefully. There are Liu Ye's relatives among them. There is little joy in their eyes. Zhang Wensheng is starting to sweat with fear. Something's getting uncomfortable for him. Maybe it's not as smooth as his mistress told him. So it seems the shareholders' meeting can begin. Considering that Jiang Wensheng's inappropriate behavior has cast a shadow on the company's reputation. According to the terms of the signed contract, there is every reason to decide his shareholding and its further redistribution among the shareholders. Jiang Wensheng began to make excuses as best he could. The latest news was nothing more than a provocation. It's not that serious, and besides, he has the veto power. Voting is in progress. All shareholders present in the room, whether they agree to the reallocation of Jiang Wensheng's shares. The two sitting next to Ye Ji, they are her relatives. It's obvious that they would be against Jiang Wensheng's shareholding. Him and Mr. Jiang, there are already two votes against, so the proportion in favor will not exceed two-thirds, and the motion will be null and void. IEG's two relatives express their agreement, as one would expect from the predictions. Jiang Wensheng has high hopes for Mr. Jiang, and asks him mentally not to let him down. At this crucial moment, Mr. Jiang agrees as well. Jiang Wensheng is just in a state of shock at his decision. In an instant, he lost all his wealth. Well, it's all over now. Why did Mr. Jiang go against him? Couldn't Ling Shu convince him? He remembers how the shareholders' meeting was held. He tried to pressure Ye Zi to exploit their feelings. Allegedly, she had undone everything between them. She didn't need any more embarrassing news about Jiang Wensheng and his mistress. All these scandals had a big impact on the company's reputation. And thus, the profits. This can't be happening. It's like some kind of scary dream. Jiang Wensheng relives these moments over and over again. All the information regarding the years of tax evasion and embezzlement of company funds was given to Ye Ji by her dear sister Lin Shui. No way Ling Shui couldn't betray him. There's still hope in him that it's all a lie and that the problem will be solved. The door opens. A bunch of reporters are standing there. Ling Shui gives them a soul-searching interview. She's literally shedding tears of pretense and accuses Jiang Wensheng of framing and fraud. Even the shameful video was fabricated. Jiang Wensheng was simply speechless when he stepped out into the hallway. He didn't expect such words from his mistress. She couldn't resist, and he forced her to do all sorts of dirty things. She's actually a victim of circumstance. The reporters began to wail. Jiang Wensheng turned out to be a terrible bastard. He had trampled the reputation of an innocent girl, and he was also Ye Ji's boyfriend. What kind of bastard she had in her bosom. Jiang Wensheng tried to justify himself, but he was very bad at it. He realized his helplessness. His hand was cuffed immediately because he was committing an illegal act and was detained immediately. The police read him his rights. He is detained on suspicion of embezzlement of corporate assets. He started hysterically screaming that it wasn't him, that it was all Ling Shui's fault. He started begging Ye Ji and call for her love. And then he got hot coffee splashed in his face. He wasn't expecting that. I sobbed. Stop yelling like a woman, have some dignity, Zhang Wensheng. He wipes up immediately realized who spilled coffee on him. She did it all, and she planted a hotel concierge on him and set a fire in the hotel, and put reporters outside the back entrance of the hotel. Wait, 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 she did it. I'll bet it is. A real agent in her actress ward. It's just like her to pull this kind of stunt. He starts yelling at her, and says she's a transgender asshole. She was flattered to be remembered. He did too much dirt on Yeji, even though she was carrying him around. Wei Wei just couldn't stand it, so she made up the whole prank. How does Jiang Wensheng think why did board member Mr. John voted against him? It's not just because of Liu Ye. This man's been doing his dirty deeds for a long time. He wanted to take his side and split the company. Well, that's how it ended. Jiang Wensheng looks out the window and sees a familiar silhouette. Someone is standing outside his car. He recognizes this person. Jiang Xiao. It's all his fault. He set it all up. He wanted to hurt him badly, and he succeeded very well. Zhang Wensheng realized that it was all over for him. The carefree, luxurious, rich life is now over, and in front of him, a trial, a sentence in prison. Ye Ji asked Zhang Xiao, I can't do well. It's fine. I just got out of the car to get some fresh air. Hurry up and get in the car and drive. Time's running out. Yo Yo is waiting for them. They promise to go to the amusement park with him. Zhang Xiao starts stroking Ye Ji's head affectionately. This gesture means a lot. He seems to be in love with her. Ye Ji knows what's going on but he still asks what he's doing for the sake of decorum, but it's nothing bad. They turn to the driver and say they need to go to Yo-Yo, and yet there's no one better than her. Playground kindergarten, babies running frolicking, 
carefree childhood. They all play together cheerfully. Zhang Xiao's son was waiting for his dad and the nanny he called mom. He liked Ye Zi very much. The other boys begin to tease him cruelly. Why does he keep looking at the gate? He must be waiting for someone. They start laughing cruelly that he's supposedly an orphan, that he's been abandoned, and he doesn't have a mom. Children can be very cruel by nature. Yao Yao got very angry, and he kicked a bully boy as hard as he could, and told him he had a mom. Very angry, he climbed up the slide, so that everyone around him could see him and hear him, so that no one would have to ask him several times. He has a mom. He started shouting it, looking down at the others, like a desperate little boy trying to prove to the others that he was as good as the others. Everyone was just stunned. They didn't know he could talk. He used to be very quiet, and now he's screaming so much. Yedzi appeared at the gate and called out to him. Her voice was like nothing he had ever heard before. It always sounded special to him. He shouted joyfully, and everyone was just very surprised and turned around. They couldn't believe that the little boy really had a mom. Yeji asked him why he was so happy. He just ran over and hugged his babysitter very tightly. The satisfied father watched. He started proving and showing everyone that it was his mom, so they wouldn't make fun of him or joke about him anymore. All three of the Zabayaka who had teased him just stood there staring and silent. They no longer had anything to say that offended them. Yezi told Zhang Xiao to take Yao Yao in her arms, and everyone saw it, both the kids and the caretakers. Now no one had any questions. The other little guys didn't know what to say. Mommy was very beautiful, and familiar to everyone. She's an actress. She asked the guys. They must be his friends. She said hello to all of them, and she said, let's be friends, and she handed everyone a cookie. They agreed, and from now on they won't bully Yo-Yo anymore. They'll only be friends with him. All the little ones asked for her. Could they give her a hug? because they all liked her very much. She was really beautiful in appearance. Yo-Yo jumped out and told everyone not to hug her. It's only his mom, and he can only hug her. Oh, if they'd known beforehand, they wouldn't have teased him, and he would have let them hug his beautiful mom. Yao Yao is holding on to Yeji's hand, and she's thinking how funny all these babies are. Yes, it's hard to hold back a smile of amusement. Jiang Xiao looked at everyone with a jealous look, with that dangerous predatory look we're not old enough to hug his wife. And all the kids ran away. This uncle is very scary. And this uncle has a lot of power. They had already been handed their family tickets at the amusement park. Everything was ready for fun. He would keep his promise to his son. It was as if they were in a magical fairy tale. Behind them stood a beautiful castle. From outside, they seemed like a happy and beautiful family. It's amazing that such a handsome man could find time to buy tickets and come here with his wife and child. The ticket seller was very jealous of them. But in a kind way. An animator in a rabbit costume greeted them and wished the dear guests a bright vacation in their amusement park. The rabbit held out three badges to them on his pen. These are family badges donated by the park administration. Ye Ji put a baby badge on Yao Yao. He was very happy about it, besides the badge being beautiful. It was also a good memory. She also suggested that Jiang Xiao wear a dad badge too. But then she remembered that he was wearing a very expensive suit. She hesitated though. She changed her mind. He took the badge and put it on his jacket. Ye Zi was struck to the core by this act. It was something she had never expected. And then he pinned a mommy badge on E.G.'s dress. She was honored. She really appreciated it. She really appreciated it. The rabbit animator told all three of us to get ready. He wanted to take a beautiful picture as a keepsake. A bright moment. Zhang Xiao, holding Yao Yao in his arms, hugged Ye Zi affectionately around her waist. She was very pleasantly surprised, but because she realized it was all for the photo, so that they could pose beautifully for the camera. The rabbit praised them and said, freeze perfectly. The picture came out beautifully. A real happy family. Mommy, daddy, baby, a real family, a real tight-knit family. It's a dream for every normal person. A beautiful fairy tale castle. Animators walk around in fairy tale character costumes and go happy running to them for hugs. Yi Ji warns the baby not to run anywhere. Otherwise, you could fall. Play with care. Yao Yao is very happy at the moment. He's been on so many rides, electric cars, wooden horses, and lots of candy. So much energy from the kids. Yi Ji just can't stand it. She sat down on a bench to rest after an hour. Jun Xiao kindly pulled her a can of cold drink, just the orange flavor she liked, straight from the refrigerator. She thanked him. Just a little coolness would do her good right now, and the gesture itself seemed very gallant. One sip of your favorite beverage is a great fatigue reliever. You can also dream about your favorite shrimp. It was a double surprise for her. Her good mood just doubled. She was as happy as a little child herself. We must eat soon before the baby comes back. You can't give spicy food to little ones. He'll definitely want to try it. I wonder if he bought all this for her alone. And he knows her preferences, what she likes, and what she likes to eat. Although she was confused about something. For someone like Zhang Xiao to stand in line for some shrimp for her. It's like some kind of dream. 
He put on a plastic glove, he took one shrimp from the box with his hand, and brought it to Yeji's mouth. The gesture was very beautiful. Once again she doesn't understand how to make sense of it. At first she remains silent, then she asks what's going on. Zhang Xiao just tells her not to think about anything and eat. That's all, that's all she needs to do right now. Will he kill her if she doesn't eat it? There's nothing to be done, it's a matter of life and death. So she dutifully starts chewing. The shrimp is good, very tasty, just the way she likes it. I can't say no to a treat like that. She asks Zhang Xiao if he'll eat too. She doesn't feel comfortable eating it all by herself. She has to share. And then the animator rabbit's head fell to the floor with a great crash. He was standing very close to the couple, and he was enjoying the spectacle. He must be out of his mind. Uncle feeds his aunt in front of the whole street, and he peels her shrimp himself. It's unbelievable. There's not a minute to lose, not another word. He'll take a picture of everything first, as a memento for himself. That's great. We need to save these pictures until April 1st, and then send my uncle these pictures as gifts. I'm sure he'll be hysterical. At the same time, she continues to enjoy the shrimp. How stupid is Zhang Xiao to refuse shrimp? And they're just magical. After these treats, it's best eaten with a mint, because the flavor of shrimp is very distinctive, and your breath stinks. Too much shrimp is very unhealthy. Aiji will have a chance to finish her lunch later. Why should she finish her lunch? She's on set every day. She works out and takes care of herself. In normal times, she doesn't let you have shrimp at all. You can only eat them twice each month. Ten pieces at a time. You can have two more squid kebabs. If you wash it down with iced lemon tea. Zhang Xiao took her hand. He said that Yao Yao would be back soon. We should hurry and meet him. The good will do so. What's even going on? Why did Zhang Xiao peel shrimp for her? And now he's taking her hand and dragging her somewhere. Scolding. That's so warm. He's not pretending. Zhang Xiao wonders what he's thinking about right now. Ye Ji is dreaming somewhere in the clouds. It's impossible that such a prominent man would start courting a mere actress. I can't believe it. There was the sound of gunfire. Somewhere in that direction, gunfire was being fired. Yeji was startled. The baby's still gone. They start frantically looking for Yo-Yo and calling for him. The people are very frightened and run away at the sound of gunfire. Human panic is a scary thing. The crowd runs at you like a mad beast. The only law it obeys is fear. All screaming like crazy and screaming that they're shooting. People are fleeing as fast as they can. Running in different directions, not paying attention to anything. Yeji screams and calls for the baby. She tries to find him with her eyes, but she can't do anything. It makes eating very frustrating. John Xiao grabs her hand quickly, so that she won't get lost and to make her pay attention to him quickly. He instructs her to leave quickly. He'll figure it out on his own. It's scary. Really scary. Four guards line up behind her. They tell her to go quickly to the safe zone and stay there until the operation is complete. The only thing she could mumble while looking at Zheng Xiao was for him to be careful. And don't go into the forest. The situation is very dangerous. Zhang Xiao calmed her down, stroked her head and told her not to worry. He'll be fine. He'll be alive and safe. Four guards led by their boss went looking for little Yo-Yo. Into the crowd despite the panic. He looks at the animator, with a hare's head, and asks where his son is. He better know the answer. Otherwise we're in trouble. Three of Yo-Yo's security guards have been killed. But don't worry, the park's already been secured. They can't take the baby. These scumbags just can't seem to settle down. It's like they're a family together. He genuinely wanted to keep them alive. Just because they're blood relatives. Don't forget, Yo-Yo is his son. If someone raised a hand against him, they started the countdown to their own death. Haunted Castle. It's one of the park's amusement park sets. It's the perfect place to hide. The three are inside. They realize the park is cordoned off and they can't get back up. The robbers have a very difficult situation. They thought it was a little family outing. How were they supposed to know there'd be so much undercover security? Now the park is cordoned off. Even the police can't get in. And anyone who wants to go out is thoroughly searched. A criminal in a gorilla suit calls on the phone and says he doesn't know what to do now. Things haven't gone according to plan. Wait for the police to come in and disperse the crowd. There are people among the police. At the right moment, they will come to the rescue and take out the criminals. It's just a little kid. What can he do? There's no need to sweat it. We just hide in the castle of ghosts and wait. And if agents find them, then what do we do in that case? The only way to get away from them is to shoot back. It's not even the police. You don't have to talk nonsense. You have to use your brain. Even though their main client is old Mr. Zhang, the child is the most important thing. Not a hair was to fall from his head. This child is a guarantee of their safety. It can be used as a human shield. It's a great cover. You can escape without the support of the cops. The idea is actually a really good one. They all looked at the baby as a little money tree to be nurtured and cherished. And then all three of them realize that instead of a baby, there is a doll in disguise. And the baby has disappeared. Everyone got hysterical about where the baby is. Everything in the human shield is gone. Naturally, they panicked. 
Without that baby, they're screwed. How is it possible to have missed it in the first place? All the visitors and staff had fled. All that's left are the props. We need to find that kid now. Someone behind the bars started coughing. Behind a thug dressed in a ninja turtle costume. He heard it. He immediately pulled out a gun and told everyone he knew where the guy was by pointing the gun at the bars. He thought he was going to scare the guy. But then he got a swift kick in the head from his ringleader. You need to put that gun away now. Does he want to kill the last hope of salvation and wealth? He sends him out to find the kid, and he warns his partner in crime. God forbid he sees a scratch on that kid. He doesn't want to go. He's scared. You're a haunted castle. It's one of the rides. The perp was very impressionable. How old is he? And he's still afraid of kiddie rides. He's involved in a business where everyone's lessons are bloody at the elbow. They gave him a good kick in the head, and they told him to go ahead. To find this kid fast. It's really funny. He's a robber and a murderer, and he's afraid of ghosts. There was a scream in the castle of ghosts, as if he'd been eaten by a real ghost, or else he hit some prop. A dark room somewhere in the back of a haunted castle. There's almost no light, and it's very hard to see anything. Little Yo-Yo is playing with his badge, the one the animator gave him. He accidentally presses a button that was hidden in the middle of the icon. It looked like a little bulb. A subordinate says he got a GPS signal from the boss's son in a haunted castle. That should give us his exact location. Somewhere in the depths of a fairy tale castle, three criminals are looking for a little boy. He's their living shield and salvation from the police. It's just a little kid. We should look for him and stop making stuff up. One of the robbers is very afraid of the dark. A criminal must have no weakness and certainly no fear of the dark. They agreed to take separate routes. Well orders the turtle to go inside and lure the little boy out and kicks him like a dog in the ass. All the mechanisms that could have been turned on, his accomplice has turned them on. He sincerely doesn't understand what there is to be afraid of. Walking down the dark corridors of the haunted castle and saying that Uncle Turtle wants to play with the baby. You have to be calm. There are no ghosts. There's nothing to scare you. After all, he's a criminal after all. And then he's told from somewhere that someone is ready to go play with them. It made Turtle's face all wet. That's where that sound is coming from. He's waving his cell phone around, just to see. Where's that kid uncle wants to play with him? Crime Turtle is desperate to find the kid. Grabs him by the right leg. Perp's just scared worse than death. He's already thrown himself. He falls to the floor and hits his face. The hand that grabbed his leg quickly disappears. He's going to have a lot of bruises. And then he remembers that his boss took his gun away from him. He doesn't have a gun. God forbid he scares the kid. There's no need to panic. It's just a little kid. He doesn't even need to be caught. He'll turn into a criminal turtle. And then the hand grabs his leg again. But he grabs his wrist. He's already glad he got the kid. But then he notices that the hand is very cold. And then there were traces of blood on his suit. It's unnerving. He doesn't know where he's going. He falls on his back in fear and screams hysterically like a little girl. His arm breaks off. And she starts bleeding fake blood all over the place. It's almost as good as the real thing. Criminal Turtle was just speechless. What's going on? Who this is? Fear makes him wet himself and starts to run away. Not a criminal, but a clown. And then he saw that he had a prosthesis hanging from his leg. As he was running, he heard a metallic sound. He didn't die of fright over some poor doll. You could get a heart attack that way. Aren't the mechanisms disabled? Then why is that hand grabbing him? Could his accomplices have turned on the equipment? The mechanism is placed here, so the kid's hiding somewhere nearby. He's bringing his cell phone to light up the dark place. He sees a plastic doll lying in a dark place, full human size. Looks like this doll just got jammed. We'll have to deal with it later. We gotta find the kid first. Either it's his imagination or it's the doll looking at him in a sinister way. It's easy to get scared. It all seems to come naturally. We have to keep looking. You can't go back to your boss with nothing. Otherwise, he's gonna get his ass handed to him. No matter which way he climbs. No matter which way he climbs. And this ominous puppet keeps looking at him. From every angle. Well, at some point, the angry turtle realized that the doll was alive. She stared at it with her eyes fixed on it. The boss started asking himself why the hell that asshole was yelling. He's afraid no one will hear him. He's pretty pissed off about it. The top boss of the criminal trio has to go after the little guy himself. Suddenly, on his right side, he sees the gleaming blade of a blade. It is pointing straight at his throat. A voice from behind says he's asking. He answers. If he makes a move, he'll be dead. Not a sound, not a rustle. Behind him is the professional. He drops the gun out of fear. And he says he'll tell everything. As long as they let him live. The cleaner needs the customer's name and also Jiang Xiao's secret. We need to move our brains faster. Killer took the job. A true professional doesn't throw words around. And he doesn't get caught up in the minutia. The haunted castle attraction stands by itself in the middle of the amusement park. Jiang Xiao and his handmaidens wonder what room is the baby Yao Yao in. 
They break into this castle with armed guards. Demands the release of the boss's son. They can talk it over. But what they saw shocked them. They must have expected anything but what they saw. Three bandits tied up lying on the floor. Next to them sits a yo-yo boy playing a mobile game. The bandits beg them not to kill them. The security supervisor happily hugs the little guy. The guard is very glad he was able to turn his and the GPS on his badge on. Otherwise his father would have killed him. The father has been tutoring his son himself. That's why he's very bright. He spared no time, no expense, no effort. He's his son. Jiang Xiao asks his son if he is telling the truth. He does, and the little boy nods his head in the affirmative. Jiang Xiao sees something. He looked into the distance and noticed something in the castle wall. A certain object caught his close attention. He's looking at something shiny sticking out of the wall. Reflects the sunlight. From a distance, it might look like glitter. But it's actually a knife. And it's very familiar to him. He'd seen it before. And he remembers it very well. It's like one man's calling card. He realizes it's his knife. And he also realizes that he owes him a huge unpaid debt. The nephew picked up the knife and asked Zhang Xiao what he should do with it. He was told to throw it away as if it was trash. He instructed his guards. Let the bandits who stole his son feel that there is something more painful in the world than death itself. They are finally home. Everyone is alive and safe. Baby is very happy and waving to his nanny in the restroom. Yeji is very happy that the baby is safe and sound. She was very worried about him. It's a nice surprise for her that they're back. She's so glad he's okay and scared to death. She'll never let him go again. The baby kisses Yeji and tells her not to cry because her tears are tearing his soul. It's very painful for him. From that moment on, Yezi made a promise to her baby that she would always keep him safe at all costs. Zhang Xiao calms everyone down and says to relax and it won't happen again. The kid is tired, and Yuan Yechi will take him home. The nephew picks up the baby and carries him to the car. Time to go to the estate. Yeji says she's a little worried about him, and she'll go with him. But Zhang Xiao grabs her hand. He won't let her go anywhere. He tells Yeji to stay for a while. He doesn't want her to leave. There's something he wants to discuss with her. These criminals even help them out a little. There are no crowds in the park now. He asks her to come with him. He's pulling her somewhere. But she won't break free. I wonder if that's in their contract. What's not in it is eating shrimp. His palm is so big and warm. He holds it both gently and very firmly at the same time, and he doesn't let it slip out. She feels very secure. With Zhang Xiao, she is safe. She likes that feeling very much. She can be weak. What the hell is she thinking? You have to watch yourself. You can't. You have to throw up in your hand or they'll look really weird. Zhang Xiao tells her they're here. He wanted to show her something beautiful, but with no one around. A large hologram on a ferris wheel. It shows a green leaf. It really is a sight to behold. Yeji opened her mouth in surprise. She couldn't believe it was possible. She had never seen such beauty so close. She thought the view from the ferris wheel at sunset must be amazing. Just what's that giant green neon sheet? He invited her to sit at the table, which he very quickly suddenly organized. The waiters are musicians. Everything's ready. The best dishes, and beautiful romantic music, and live music. She gasped. It's so beautiful. Just for her. Her eyes were filled with childlike delight. It looked beautiful. He prepared it especially for her, so she could enjoy dinner with this view. It made her feel a little clumsy. She was a little timid in her response. She wasn't expecting this kind of attention. The Ferris wheel shines in the night. A huge clover leaf of green neon lights up the whole place. And there's not a soul near. Zhang Xiao and Ye Ji are sitting in one of the booths. They are having a romantic dinner. Above their heads is a transparent roof. You can see all the stars. Ye Ji's face turned purple with shame. She doesn't realize what she's doing. She just says thank you and accepts the champagne. Zhang Xiao quietly gobbles his food and laughs. He is humbled by this awkward behavior of his favorite girl. Steak medium rare, her favorite champagne fruit fruit beautiful night view. What could be even better? It's like she doesn't know what's going on and what he's up to. That's the kind of thing a man doesn't just do for a woman. She still can't realize that Zhang Xiao is courting her. Such a powerful prominent man has chosen her as a mate. No, it just can't be. She doesn't believe it. She's making it up again. She's seen plenty of tricks like this from rich people. Well, there's no point in her thinking. Just calm, steady breathing and everything will be fine. And be that as it may. She's enjoying a glass of champagne. The drink is truly beautiful. There's a reason why Yaji likes it. She has such a refined taste in wine. It's delicious. She's happy, smiling like a child. It's not often she spoils herself like this. Only on very big occasions. Speaking of which, Jun Xiao was looking for information on her. Behind her back. That means he has a very serious interest. You can look at it from the outside shrimp, lemon tea, her favorite medium rare steak, and her favorite champagne. He doesn't need to be nice to her. They have a good working relationship, don't they? 
but he doesn't want just a working relationship. He plucks a rose from a bouquet in a vase on the table and holds it out to Ye Ji. Her gaze froze for a moment. Didn't she realize he was courting her? He's handing her a flower. Wouldn't waste his time with such a powerful man. Ye Ji is in a state of stupor right now. It's like she's been stunned very badly. She's been hit on the head with something hard. She pretends she doesn't understand. And instead of a flower, it's like she's being handed some kind of grenade that's supposed to blow her to pieces. He asks her to accept this flower, and she gratefully does so. It's from the heart, after all. It's hard not to. So the courtship ended, and she accepted it. He congratulates her. Their relationship has moved to a new level. What kind of courtship is that? He doesn't understand anything. Sweet speeches. Vows of eternal love. An engagement gift. There's none of that. It's just a flower. If she had all that, would she be happy? Maybe she's in no position to make demands. She didn't mean that. Where is she going with this? Her job is just to take what she's given. The rest is up to her. Jian Xiao said that it was okay to start, and he snapped his fingers in a businesslike manner. However, Ye Ji didn't understand anything. And then, after his snap, fireworks appeared in the sky. Multicolored fiery flowers were flying across the night sky. And then in the background, the bloody wheel, there was love, in English. The light show was truly spectacular. Ye Ji watched with square eyes. Jian Xiao said that this was the sweetest speech and a true confession. It's a vow of eternal love. He only wants to be with her, and no one else. She's pointing her finger at her daddy's badge. She's gotten it now, that he wants to start a family, so they could be together. Him, her, and baby Yo-Yo. That's his goal. This is an engagement present, and he hands her a beautiful pink bunny with a carrot. Better not lose it this time. The lid of the carrot opens, and there's a wedding key with an emerald in it, allegedly the key to the boss's heart, which she's the only one with. It's what she's dreamed of all her life, for Prince Charming to come and take her to his fairyland. Their lips reach for each other, to seal their new union with a beautiful kiss. There's romance all around them. Fireworks begin to shoot up the air even brighter and stronger. They are frozen in a tender kiss. It's an open declaration of true love. When you were, she had a dream of standing on the balcony from the tallest building in the city, watching fireworks and hearing a declaration of love from the man of her dreams. Is this really happening to her? Why does she think she's dreaming? Ye Ji was offered to be the girlfriend of a very rich man. Jiang Xiao looks very confident. Against the backdrop of fireworks in the night sky. He smiles calmly. He knows that he will win. He hugs her gently, while her eyes are glassy. She doesn't realize maybe this is some kind of fairy tale. She's in a stupor. Can't hear anything. Can't see anything. Can't say anything. Only she's got dime eyes. He takes her hand and they leave the table. He carefully tells her not to trip. Watch your step everything's going to be okay. It's been a rough day. She needs to go to bed early. She's still in a stupor, sitting next to me. Now she is already in her bed covered with a blanket. They say goodnight. What was that? There's no way she can get away from the stopper. It's been a long time. And she can't sleep. And she's getting hysterical. Her eyes are all red. That this is happening. How can you be a good contract stepmom after confessions like this? It's just awful. Maybe it's some kind of trap. Maybe he's testing her on purpose. There's definitely some kind of trickery somewhere. But she's just a celebrity who's already lost her popularity. Why would he, the heir to a powerful family, play with her? We must go to bed soon. It's going to take a lot of energy tomorrow morning. And she has a headache. She's trying to count sheep or elephants. She's trying to sleep. She's trying not to think about anything. Again, she jumps out of bed like a scalded woman. She still can't sleep. All sorts of thoughts come into her head. It's morning on the estate. The gentle rays of the sun warm the walls of the house and outside the windows, the golden foliage of the trees. Yeji said hello to everyone, but she just looks disgusting, all wrinkled and chewed up. She's been up all night. Yao Yao and his uncle were very surprised to see her. They guessed that she had insomnia. They had experienced it once before. The nephew began to joke wryly. It's not for him to tell his uncle, but he should be careful with the lady. He meant he'd been pulling her all night. To put it bluntly, he's human. Immediately, his uncle took the croissants and stuffed them in his mouth so he couldn't continue talking. Zhang Xiao walked over to her and politely pushed back the chair for her to sit at the kitchen table and eat breakfast. Then he moved the chair toward her. And it's all a very beautiful gesture. It looks very beautiful from the outside. That kind of courtship is rare. Zhang Xiao kissed Ye Zi on the top of her head. She was very much surprised. She hadn't had such gestures yet. Although they had kissed on the night balcony as recently as yesterday, that kiss made her bloom like a flower. It had been a long time since she'd been treated so well. It's hard to get used to it right away. My nephew was just stunned to see it. What is it? His eyes don't seem to be lying to him. 
This is really happening. John Xiao begins to court her gallantly. I suggest milk or coffee, whichever she prefers. IY8Z chooses the milk. It's in a stupor again. It can't be. It's over the moon. She starts drinking milk and stares at one point. It's just beautiful. She doesn't want to think about anything. I'm feeling really good right now. Wait what Jiang Xiao just did. He kissed her on the top of her head. And she started spitting milk out of her mouth. She choked and started choking. Like she got it down the wrong throat. It's milk. It's the excitement. Why scare her like that first thing in the morning? It's Jiang Xiao. Or maybe it's his doppelganger. He's definitely real. Jiang Xiao carefully takes the napkin and brings it to Ye Zi's mouth. My nephew's looking at all this. He's stunned. It's the first time an uncle starts courting a strange girl like that. He wipes her mouth gently with a napkin. That's the kind of gallantry you don't find in books. A true gentleman. Ye Ji has finally lost her mind. Now her eyes are spinning in circles. It's as if she's gone crazy from what's happening. Little yo 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 and wonders. He doesn't understand what is happening to his brother and mom at this moment. The changes are very big. The movie set where E.G. is working. Everything is boiling. The director is preparing everyone for the filming process. Wei Wei is very dissatisfied. Street filming is too far away. Someone actually thought about the actor's schedules. That fatso director is a notorious cheapskate. He won't spend an extra penny. I wonder how much it would cost to shoot in such an incredible location. I need to think of nothing bad. It's all about quality. Besides, this is Ye Ji's first shoot after a long hiatus. Anyway, Ye Ji is taking care of Jiang Xiao's baby. He can't just fire her like that, even if he's paying for this movie. Wei Wei really dislikes Jiang Xiao. In her eyes, he's not a particularly nice guy. Although maybe she doesn't know him well from the outside. She opened the dressing room and saw Yi Ji sleeping on the taffeta in the middle of a shooting day. That's not like her. She had already had her third dream. She hadn't slept all night, so she couldn't gather her strength and concentrate on filming. Wei Wei jumped up to Ye Ji and started shaking her. What's going on with her? You shouldn't scare your agent so much. Wei Wei was blown away by her mentee's words. She didn't expect such frivolity from her. This kind of chance to return to the stage isn't given to everyone. She started screaming like crazy. Where the hell is she going? She's out of her mind. That she didn't have everyone at home. How can you even think about that? The set is a village of azure clouds. They're finally here. The heat, of course, is unbelievable. And it's been a long and arduous journey. She's not feeling well, just like getting a black belt in karate. It's unbearable. Wei Wei feels bad. Her stomach's churning. And she's very dizzy. It's a terrible winding road. She thought she'd feel better at the end. But she said she could go alone. Ye Ji reassures her agent and says that if she's seasick, then why did she go? Doesn't she remember what happened last time? It's exactly the same thing on the street camera. You don't look healthy. Last time when she was just starting out, Wei Wei was also a rookie. And Ye Ji went to the shoot by herself. It almost cost her her life. She got lost in the desert. Sheng Diu's competitor misdirected her. And she just got lost in the desert. They made it look like she did it on her own. From that day on, she vowed not to let something like this happen again. That's why Wei Wei always follows her client. Things have changed so much in that time. Hasn't she had enough shoots in recent years? Especially out in the field. She would have found out sooner or later. Her agent points her to a large crowd that's gathered. She's surrounded by some woman. The actress who will be shooting for a commercial in the same location as Ye Ji. The paparazzi surrounded her. They're interviewing her and taking pictures. That was Shen Dieu, the same actress scoundrel who almost killed her. She gave her the worst dehydration in the desert. She just found out yesterday she's shooting a commercial in the same location for a top herbal essence. There's no other way to call it fake. Sometime after that incident, No flew to Japan to build her career. When she had powerful connections, she wanted to mess with Sheng Dieu. Last month, she returned from her divorce from her husband and decided to further develop her career here. After all, she had not been forgotten in her homeland. Wei Wei vowed to keep an eye on her and would be on constant alert, waiting for her to do something sneaky. Ye Ji says she shouldn't dwell on the past. He who remembers the old is the eye of the beholder. What's past is past and gone. No, she's not a vindictive person at all. As long as Shen Du behaves in an appropriate and friendly manner, she won't care. Let her work and live. But Ye Ji didn't believe her. Of course she's like a vindictive person. She's the kind of person who hoards things and then spews them out. Maybe we should say hello to her. It's good manners. Even if you're saying hello to a viper. It's been a long time. We didn't expect to find her here. Wei Wei said it was just fate, no other way. Such a meeting. Wei Wei and Ye Ji looked gorgeous together. They're already maturing and experienced. They've been in the business for years. They know what's what. Sheng Diu pretended to be very happy and surprised at such a wonderful meeting. Although everyone knew it was a mask. Sheng Die, she started complimenting Wei Wei. 
allegedly that she was very beautiful and well-groomed. Next, that viper crawled over to Yaji and started hugging her, and called her baby, like she really missed her. But she's glad she's back. What a brilliant as a Turk playing in public. She won't believe they're close friends either. Genius. How skillful of her to block the camera lens. Does anyone know if she's actually a venomous creature? She's got more venom than a viper and a scorpion combined. Although she's not such a silly actress anymore. She might as well put on a nice show too. Experience allows. She missed Shengdu so much too. Why did she come back from Japan? Definitely need to meet somewhere this time. Yeah, that's a beautiful thought. She's thinking the same thing. Unfortunately, she has to shoot a commercial now and she'll find Yeji later. She lives around here too. She doesn't know why, but it makes her feel very comfortable. After all, she's only just moved back home. Great, she brought a lot of goodies with her and invite Sheng Diu to her room what to have afternoon tea together. She started fixing her co-worker's hair, and supposedly she had something tangled in her hair. She didn't want to look bad in the commercial. Reporters and photographers pick it all up, and they're clucking about how beautiful these girls are. What a wonderful, warm relationship they have. The young photographer managed to take so many pictures, Wei Wei remarked, but they can't be posted anywhere. Under the terms of the contract, only photographers accredited by the production company can take all of Aedzi's photos. She has to go, work. She's got a lot to do. They'll see each other later. If you want to take away Yeji's popularity, then you have yourself to blame. The former star wants her former glory. Show business is too dirty. She really wanted a normal relationship. She tried her best to connect, but she was very duplicitous. Wei Wei and Yeji are being spied on by the man in black. He was specially introduced by someone. The target is in place. He's still following them. Agent Sheng Diu is very angry. She's angry. No way. In her eyes, Ye Ji is just a butt in every barrel. Wei Wei spoke to the photographer in that tone of voice, although he was just taking pictures. Who the hell do they think they are? Don't be mad. They just got back. And nothing can ever be the same. The best thing to do for now is to reconnoiter. Her agent said his charges are very kind. It's a shame they have to deal with such a nasty person like Ye Ji. And the two photographers are reasoning. The photographer's former classmate is on her camera crew. He can ask him to take a sick day and he'll fill in for him. He could do a really bad photo shoot. Shen Diu asked everyone not to do that. That really threw them into a stupor. They thought their mentee wanted to get even. They are, after all, colleagues and friends, and even if she decides to do something bad to her, she doesn't want to return the favor. That's really how real stars behave. Her team started praising her again. She's so generous and kind. Suddenly, the phone rang on silent vibrate mode. Someone is calling Sheng Diu. She apologized to her team and said she had to take a call. It's urgent. She can't stand it. The doors have closed behind her. No one is looking at her. She's alone with herself. Now she can assume her true colors, and it's insidiously venomous, like the merciless deadly cobra. Liu Lingxue is calling her. It must be really important. She met Ye Ji. Yes, she's changed a lot. She didn't recognize her from afar, only when she approached. Luckily, she found out in advance where her shoot was going to take place and set up her own there as well. She took full advantage of the opportunity. She starts playing around. She doesn't know what she's being told. She pretends to be a good girl. But she's not. And all the people around her who know it well realize it. She only met her younger colleague by chance. No one had planned anything in advance. She was still white and fluffy then. She told her everything. She was her favorite sister. She remembers that Ye Ji almost died in the desert. Then who hurt her? Nothing comes to mind. No thought crosses her mind. No conscience gnaws at her. That's what he means. But she was just careless that time. This time it'll be different. She heard they're filming near the precipice this time. You could fall off and fall over, which nobody wants to do. Her sister is very vindictive, and you have to keep that in mind at all times. After the failed assassination attempt, it made her crazy in a way. The words made him laugh a lot. One day she'll be a former popular star before she knows it. And she hung up the phone. Her hysterical laughter was always imprinted in Sheng Du's memory. Ling Sui is right about something. One day she will turn into a former popular star before she knows it. But if she wants to use her as a weapon, she won't let her stay in the shadows. At the same time in the beauty parlor, Yi Ji with a mask on her face, she just lies back and enjoys the treatments. She's dressed in a silky pink robe and sits in a comfortable leather chair. What else does a woman need for a real high? Next to her is Wei Wei. The two of them are really good together. They're just enjoying it, taking rejuvenation and beauty treatments. Tomorrow's schedule needs to be approved. Wei Wei hands Ye Ji the schedule. She agrees to it. You have to get up at four in the morning to drive to this precipice. At first light. But why so early? Ye Ji is indignant. Maybe it's the director's whim. Maybe it's not necessary. Wei Wei calmly told her that means you have to go to bed early tonight. 
The director is stubborn as a lamb. He's stuck on this very spot. She doesn't really want to go there either. Agent Oi's life is not easy, also full of difficulties and mishaps. Life. They'd like to just lie there and do nothing, just enjoy life. To tell you the truth, Ye Ji can afford it. As soon as they finish filming, she's on Jiang Xiao's payroll now. He's the head producer of this commercial shoot. If she shakes her head, he'll move whatever he wants. In fact, she's had patrons before who have shown her special care. But this is the first one to care so much. He's the head of the family, John is the head of the company. Is he really going to court the girl? Wei Wei suggests that she should think with her head. It makes Ye Ji very angry, like a rabid dog. Her agent's words really hit a nerve. She jumped up from her chair and quickly ran out of the room. She said she was going to go wash up quickly. Tomorrow's shoot is going to be very dangerous. We need to get a good night's sleep. To be able to protect Ye Ji. It's her duty. Ye Ji begins to wash her face thoroughly and rinsing off her beauty mask. So I don't get anything in my eyes. All because of Wei Wei. She's almost forgotten about the situation again. She hates to think about it. She's not a kept woman. This can't go on any longer. You have to get Jiang Su Xiao out of your own head. All bad thoughts, go away. Now she has cleared her mind completely. And bad thoughts don't bother her anymore. That's the way it should be. She felt much better. It would take a hundred more words of French and she could go to bed. There's a message from Jiang Xiao. She called him a devil in her notebook. That's not nice of her. All her efforts were in vain. Meditations and mind cleansing to no avail. Some kind of bad luck. He would give her peace of mind or not. No, she's starting to convince herself it's just a hallucination. We need to focus on the words. Everything's gonna be okay. Just a hallucination. And she brushed off the message from Jiang Xiao. This life can't be helped. Women can be ungrateful. He's texting for Ye Ji again. It's unbelievable. Jiang Xiao is very persistent in his courtship. She gets hysterical. She calls him the bald devil. Like he's the only reason she can't sleep. She doesn't, and starts frantically poking her finger at a potential phone screen. She's out of control now. Best decision on her part, as it seemed to her. She added her suitor to the blacklist as quickly as possible. Finally, no one else will get on her nerves. She's somewhere in the clouds. She doesn't realize she just blacklisted her employer. And then she starts thinking with her head. I mean, there's consequences. If he finds out she's blocked him, she'll get it in the neck. And then she quickly panicked, and quickly started to get him back from the blacklist. She realizes that Zhang Xiao is not just a man. He has power and resources. And then he abruptly starts calling her. She just doesn't know what to do about it. But she didn't want to text him. And you certainly don't want to talk to him right now. Overwhelmed, she's ready to hit the answer button. Like I'm going to electrocute her. But she wants to hang up the phone and shoot down the call. For a month now, she's been going from side to side like a wild animal. Jan Shertilla keeps calling and calling and she's ready to answer it. To pick up the phone and talk to him. It seems like this conversation is torture for her. She shows her unhappiness with her whole appearance. Jiang Xiao immediately said that he shouldn't block it. He didn't like it. Ye Ji started to make excuses, but his finger slipped off accidentally. How dare she block him? He's her boss and employer. She's already put everything back the way it was. He's afraid that if she needs help, he won't be able to help her because she won't be able to contact him. So no more blocking him. It's not a woman's whim. It's a safety issue. It has to be taken seriously. She speaks well, and asks me to forgive her, like she's done nothing wrong. But that was pretty flippant. Jiang Xiao realizes he's faced with a woman's volatile nature. But tantrums won't keep her safe. Ye Ji is hurting herself. Ye Ji sits on the couch listening to her favorite young man, and is silent. She knows what she's done. The awkward silence continues, and neither of the two dares to break it. They sit there listening to each other's breathing. Yi Ye Ji asks Jiang Xiao how Yao Yao is feeling. He is fine. Is he doing well? She didn't understand what he said. Which one of them missed her? The kid or Jun Xiao? It made her blush red. And she missed him too. As soon as filming's over, she's going straight home. To see everyone as soon as possible. Indeed, Jiang Xiao would hardly say such wimpy things. That's right. He really misses her too. She hung up the phone. The ringing stopped. Her face showed both happiness and satisfaction. Now she could be alone with her thoughts. She put the cell phone down in front of her. What has she done? Why is she getting into trouble again? Although she did it with her own hands. We need to apologize right away. She grabbed her cell phone. And in a hurry, she started looking for a phone number. What John Xiao means. What he wants from her. How can he say that to her? She'll pretend she didn't hear. The call was suddenly interrupted. Zhang Xiao is in the mountains right now. The connection is terrible. It's late. And he wishes her good night. He knows she heard everything. And she must have gotten it right. She's not a little girl anymore. Nothing terrible has happened. They'll have a long time ahead of them. He sent her a picture. A beautiful bear sleeping on a month-old blanket. More cute stickers he sends her. 
What's going to happen to his image? Although Jiang Xiao doesn't seem to care much. The night stars in the sky, so far away and so bright. It's like a fairy tale scattering of gems. Ye Ji is sleeping on her pillow. She's already having her seventh dream. She's sleeping very soundly now. She thinks she's being yelled at by an angry bear. Who's standing next to the month? Why she doesn't remember him? She was very much frightened by this evil furry little bear. She woke up screaming. It's a good thing it was just a dream. Because it's a lot worse to meet someone like that in real life. Ye Ji came to the dressing room from the morning. She said hello to Wei Wei. She looked terrible, with black circles under her eyes. Wei Wei was afraid for her ward. She asked if she was alright. She was shocked. We need to apply a cold compress right away. And some concealer. It's okay. She just didn't sleep well tonight. Shen Du happened to walk into the dressing room. Acting very concerned, she asked if her colleague was all right. Ye Ji's expression of surprise was pleasant. What a meeting. What fate had brought them together here. She found out that she was filming and there was no decent breakfast in the village this early. So she made her mushroom soup. She got up at five in the morning to make breakfast for Ye Ji. Everyone started whispering behind her back. They're almost like sisters. Thank you so much to my colleague Ye Ji. That's very nice of her. She must be very tired. Subtext if she leaves as soon as possible. She'll be much safer. What she's up to in her old age. She wasn't tired. They agreed to have tea yesterday. But she never waited for her break. I need to be overconfident. She's bound to follow through on her plan. I'm sure she will. The whole neighborhood just admired Shang Di's care. She made time for her friend. She came to see her because she was busy. Even she won't try it in her soup. I mean, she worked really hard. Eat it before it gets cold. It's like there's poison in it. She's insisting on offering it. Shen Du is very sensitive. Then she'll definitely try the soup you made for her. She was just about to take a sip. Barely brought the bowl to her mouth. To at least taste it. But Wei Wei quickly snatched that bowl out of her hands. And said not so fast. She doesn't believe Shen Du's sincerity. She thinks the soup is poisonous. She said there were goji berries. She started this play on purpose in front of everyone. So that they wouldn't think Yi Ji was rude. You can't eat these berries. Wei Wei continued. Ye Ji is allergic to them. The last time she ate one or two, she was hospitalized. People around here couldn't believe such an allergy existed. That's not very funny. Of course it is. When she had her seizure, Shen Du was with them at the time. She must have just forgotten. No wonder it's been so many years. Shen Du didn't know that Ye Ji was actually allergic to such foods. She didn't want to do any harm, supposedly. It's actually such a special condition. Allergies can be triggered by weather changes. She tried to snatch the bowl of soup out of Wei Wei's hands. She was so eager to taste what was cooked for her. But her agent wouldn't give her anything. And I started running away from her with this bowl of soup. Said she wouldn't give it to her, so she wouldn't give it to her. She doesn't want any more trouble for her ward. Shen Du watches calmly with a stone face at the whole spectacle. She realizes that there is no way to hurt Ye Ji. Eventually the bowl of soup fell to the floor and no one got to taste the poison. That's the way. There's no need to worry. Everything's fine. There's no need to take any risks. If Ye Ji is really allergic, there's nothing to do. You need to take care of yourself. She started to apologize to Shen Du. She will cook something delicious for them by herself later. The two of them will definitely sit together and chat. Shen Du said she's going and wished everyone a productive day at work. She said goodbye and went on her way. So she really did bring the truth to the soup. Wei Wei's been watching her for a week. She hasn't noticed anything strange. Shen Du knows she doesn't have any allergies. She's really up to something. That soup was not to be eaten. And it wasn't eaten. Poor Sheng Du. She's so fixated on Ye Ji. All she talked about yesterday was them. Ungrateful and now her soup is spilled on the floor. Allergy stories are bullshit. She signed her own death warrant. Shen Du helped her get the job. But she ran into someone as ungrateful as Ye Ji. Shen Du's assistant was very angry. She realizes that Ye Ji is a star with huge popularity. But she is behaving inappropriately. The assistant has figured out how to take revenge on Ye Ji herself on behalf of Sheng Du. She doesn't want her supervisor to get involved. In the mountains is not scary at all except that there are so many ants. That is why insect repellent has been distributed to everyone. She'll add honey powder for the bees to fly into Ye Ji's makeup. So that she'll be bitten by the insect properly. Sheng Du's assistant offered to help Ye Ji with her makeup application. She gladly agreed to accept the help. The honey powder will do the trick. The bees will quickly turn her pretty face into a real pig's snout. Xiao Chen was asked to hand over the setting powder. It's a necessary ingredient to hold makeup on. And she handed the brush to Miss Momo. She didn't even know what was on it. This layer of powder is applied to Ye Ji's face. As if nothing had happened. She sits in the makeup chair calm and peaceful. Miss Momo notices it's not the powder they usually use. That's what it means to be a professional. 
Sheng Diu's assistant said she forgot to bring it, so I'll have to use this one. They have almost the same finish. No, it's very foggy today, plus it's windy in the mountains. I need a moisture-resistant proven product with sun protection. Wei Wei saved the day. She gave me her powder. She and Ye Ji have almost the same cosmetics. She was quickly thanked for her promptness. Xiao Chen was left with her nose. She was really pissed off. Miss Momo began to count out Xiao Chen. For her mistake. They are paid a salary for their work. And the work must be of high quality. And instructs me to bring two cups of coffee. She apologizes. And apologizes profusely. Don't dig a hole. You'll fall in it. Miss Momo and Wei Wei didn't look at each other ambiguously. It meant something. Yeji realized that something was starting to happen. She had seen such looks from her agent before. What a corny trick it was. No imagination at all. The bee powder trick was already done. Sheng Diu's competitor had already been bitten by wasps. Since then, every cosmetic product that was destined for Yezi has been thoroughly tested. Yeji praises her assistant Miss Momo. She owes her for looking so good, no matter what angle she shot from. She almost sailed away on a smuggler's boat. There was a time in her life she doesn't even want to remember. Still, even though it was an extremely low-level trick, we need to be more careful. Who knows what she's capable of? I need to relax, is what Wei Wei is trying to say. In the dressing room, Miss Momo has to control everything. Outside is Wei Wei's job. But we need to strike back. She'll take matters into her own hands in no time. This kind of meanness from Shang Die is unforgivable. She'll report everything to Zhang Xiao. He'll blow anyone's head off for his woman. At those words, Ye Ji simply fainted. An unexpected turn. Miss Momo started screaming, what's wrong with her? Damn her to hell. That way way for her stupid ideas. What is she saying, why bother Zhang Xiao today? And then she quickly remembered how he gave her a pink rabbit. The carrot that holds the key to Zhang Xiao's heart. Why on earth would she put that thing around her neck? Some kind of key. Shouldn't she have stuffed it in a box and hidden it in the farthest corner? What the hell is she doing? She has no control over herself. She's only controlled by her emotions and her hormones. Miss Momo asks Wei Wei, Is Yi Ji alright? She's definitely fine. You can't tell from her behavior. Wei Wei is just stating a fact. That Ye Ji is dating Jiang Xiao. She's just mad as a big fury. She started broadcasting and saying that she's not seeing anyone yet. Like she wants to prove otherwise. Strong and independent. Xiao Chen is walking down the hallway carrying coffee. She's doing the simple task she was given. Ye Ji should be dead. Not happy. They wouldn't just give up on her. She put a large dose of laxatives in her coffee. Then, Wei Wei suddenly came out of the dressing room. Xiao Chen didn't expect this, but she thought she would directly give this coffee. She holds out two mugs to Wei Wei and then says the task is done coffee she brought. They thanked her and said they were pleased with how quickly she brought the coffee. It's still hot. And Wei Wei gives one cup of coffee to Xiao Chen. It's for her. She's probably had a very hard time since this morning. Not a moment's rest on her feet. Xiao Chen started to refuse. She had already drunk coffee in the morning, now she didn't feel like it. She must realize what kind of poison she put in it. Wei Wei insisted. They're about to go to the mountains where it's freezing cold. Ye Ji wants to make her feel good, so what's the big deal? She grabbed the mug and started drinking. She grabbed the mug and started drinking, reassuring herself that one sip wouldn't make the laxative kick in. Wei Wei hopes Xiao Cheng tastes good. Yes, she enjoyed it immensely. She'll give the other mug to Miss Ye Ji. Since she tasted so good, then both cups are for her. Xiao Chen was told to drink both cups to the last drop. Xiao Chen just fell to her knees with a mug of this coffee. She didn't expect things to turn out so coolly. And what is she waiting for? Why isn't she drinking? She's worked so hard to make this flavored coffee so well. The dawn is just beautiful. The bright rays of the sun touch the tops of the mountains. The foggy haze is dissipating. The sight is marvelous. Yi Ji is so beautiful standing on the edge of the cliff. Her colorful hair is loose. And a light pink dress. The best makeup. Starting the photo shoot in the early sunlight. Yi Ji is a real professional at what she does. She's just great at holding it together. The director is very pleased. This work is definitely going to be a success. He praises it and says it is a great beauty. Ye Ji tells the director maybe he forgot something. Maybe some detail he overlooked. She didn't have time to say the advertising slogan. You don't need to include another close-up. The camera should be pointed at her hands. The director says to hell with the advertising slogan. He's not going to ruin such a beautiful shot with some chit-chat. He's up to his old tricks again. Something has to be done about this. Wei Wei reassures his ward and says he'll straighten things out with the director. Wei Wei walks up to the director and quietly whispers in his ear. It is most likely reminiscent of terms of contract. It comes to his attention that the consequences of not honoring the contract will be very expensive for him. We can get back on track. We need two more cameras. They've got half an hour before sunset to get it right the first time. Permission from their superiors, they stop filming the commercial. Now it's filming for the promo of IG's first music video. 
Yi Ji is said to be a professional dancer, and now is the time to showcase her talent and skills. I wonder what happened to advertising. Why they cancelled it. They change everything at the snap of a finger. What kind of fickleness is that? They'll shoot a few random shots for the commercial, and that will be enough. The director is more concerned with the music video. She's so hungry, but it doesn't matter. If the client agrees, let the director do what he wants. The client pays. The director gives the command to set the lights and music. We just have to move as fast as we can. Sunset time is slipping away. I wonder where the music is, Yeji thought to herself. Everything is changing so fast. She's just fascinated by the pace. Out of nowhere, a melody appeared. It was so harmonious and beautiful. It just floated through the air. Wei Wei took a Bluetooth speaker and connected it to her phone. And the music started playing. Well done. And most importantly, very quick. Yeji as a magic bird began to move and dance in the sunset light, right on the edge of the cliff. It's just magnificent. Look how talented Yeji is, Wei Wei thought to herself. She sings and dances. She's a great actress too. Today's celebrities are no match for her. But since when do customers change their requirements so drastically? Literally at the snap of a finger, they ordered commercials. He personally called Wei Wei and asked to change the commercial to a music video. Still dramatically, payment increased. Who knows what's going on at the Southern Star Agency? They've been taking on some strange projects lately. South Star bought out 30% of the stock from this agency. But they're very careful to hide it. Wei Wei looks at the correspondence and studies it carefully. She's gotten some very interesting information. Turns out he was bought out by Jiang Xiao, the youngest and most eligible bachelor, patron of the entertainment industry. In fact, he's the owner of the agency, and he is also Ye Ji's boss. But most importantly, his child calls her mom. Wei Wei looks at Ye Ji dancing by the cliff. He can't believe that Jiang Xiao arranged all this. It was Jiang Xiao who arranged a promotional shoot for his girlfriend in these mountains. He specially organized the photo shoot. No, it's just a bunch of nonsense. A powerful man like that could take down show business at the snap of a finger. People like that have their whole day planned out to the minute. And here he's hanging around Yi Ji. And his son hangs around her and calls her mom. So Jiang Xiao helped Ye Ji. After all, she works for his company now. And he's her employer. This is all very strange, Wei Wei thought to herself. It's not that simple. There's a catch. She turned sharply to the side of Ye Ji's exclamation. She always keeps her eyes open. Because without Wei Wei, she's completely hands off. A piece of ground collapsed underneath Ye Ji's feet. It was scary for her. The whole crew started shouting Ye Ji's name. They were all very scared that she was going to fall into the abyss. Only one piece of rock fell away under her feet, and there were no shoes on her feet. Thanks to her graceful dance training, she did a leap in the air and stayed standing on the tip of the cliff, standing literally on her toes, like a high-class ballerina. And the whole thing was filmed by a camera crew. Everyone was just thrilled. Her fall, her jump, and she's back on the edge of the cliff. Wei Wei exhaled a sigh of relief, and the director and his assistants just shouted in admiration. It's unbelievably beautiful. And then another piece of rock begins to crack under the weight of Ye Ji. It starts to collapse into the abyss. She leaped aside like a graceful panther, where there were no cracks in the ground. Her flight in the air was also captured on video camera. She fluttered through the air like a morning butterfly. She finally lands on another section of the cliff. Well, that section is starting to crack under her, too. Everything crumbles beneath Yeji's feet. She can't hold on, and she falls into the abyss, and she realizes it. The director and Agent Wei Wei are terrified. They realize that now she'll either be a cripple or a corpse. She's flying off a cliff, and a thought occurs to her in a flash. The fall of a single stone can still be explained. But something like this. It's not just an accident. Yedzi flew into the abyss along with the rocks. A great table of dust and rumble rises up, and there's no escape. As she flew, she saw a branch growing in the rock. It's a real chance to grab onto it and stay alive. She clung to the branch, even though she bruised her ribs. But she's alive. She's lying at the bottom of the canyon. Lucky, she's happy for herself. Yeji was on the verge of death. Just a little more and it would have been the end. She notices a beehive on a branch. So it's Sheng Jiu's hand. She's been trying to get wasps on her from the beginning. So she also organized a rock fall. Shen Du is clearly trying to kill her. The huge wasps are flying straight at Yeji. Now falling off the cliff is not the biggest problem. And what she's gonna do now? She can't escape. She can't swing her arms. She's holding onto a branch. And a blade flies through the air, swiftly piercing the air, screeching and whistling, and it just shines in the passing sunlight. The blade hits the hive with precision and knocks it off the branch. Ye Ji is saved from the bloodthirsty insects. She tries to examine this knife, but she can't figure out who threw it, where it came from. And near the branch is a man in a black uniform with a mask on his face, who he is. 
and why he saved her from certain death. He's reaching out to her, so she can grab hold of it and stay alive, because the branch could break. E.G. is already starting to reach for her savior's hand a little, slowly taking her time. At the last moment, the branch breaks. A large rock falls on top of Yeji's head. Her savior cuts the stone above Yeji's head in one lightning-fast movement. It shatters into pieces in all directions, and finally grabs her wrist. He stopped her from falling to the bottom of the canyon. Now she'll stay alive. He seems familiar to her. Yeji looks into his eyes. She has a feeling that she has seen him somewhere before. What makes her think he's a good man anyway? Not everyone who saved you is your true friend. Somehow, she wasn't afraid of him. She knew he wouldn't hurt her. Otherwise, what was the point of saving her? He tied her to him on a massive leather belt, and started climbing and jumping on the rocks like a mountain goat. Strangely enough, for some reason she was sure they wouldn't hurt her in the slightest. So she remained calm. The whole camera crew is panicking. We've got to call 911. We need to get a rope. Everyone shouts and tries to find Yeji on the edge of the cliff with their eyes. You can't get too close. There are consequences. Wei Wei wanted to get a closer look at where her ward had fallen, but the director operators held her by the arms. How could this even happen? She'll check every rock every inch of these cliffs. It's just not possible. Shen Yu came to the scene of Yeji's shooting and started exclaiming how horrible it was, as if she didn't really understand what had happened. No one else she hopes is hurt needs to be careful not to go near the edge. Everyone realized we had to wait for the rescue team. Wei Wei couldn't stand it. How can you go down and wait? What about Ye Ji? It's not right to leave her to die. Shen Yu began to calm her down. They are all ready to rush out to find, but who can keep them safe? Wei Wei realized it was Shen Yu's doing. She's the one who set it up. There's no way to prove it yet, but her instincts are good. Shen Dai started asking provocative questions. She had just arrived. How could she know that it was Ye Ji who had fallen into the abyss? I started making excuses and said I was right there. She heard the screams and came running. Everyone around me was shouting the name of Ye Ji. She's trying to get Wei Wei to lose her temper, but it won't work sooner or later the secret comes out. Wei Wei rushed to the cliff to see what happened to Ye Ji. The whole crew looked on in horror. Shen Du began to justify Wei Wei's actions in the eyes of the director's cameraman. She is just very worried about her friend. Don't get angrier than that. What else is there to do? She knew where the filming was going to take place a long time ago, and secretly planted the silent explosives in advance. Many years ago, Shen Du was introduced to her new scene partner, Ye Ji. She was brought to the set. It was obvious she was just an aspiring actress. She didn't know anything yet. She was a green newbie. However, her abilities delighted the entire Shen Du crew that day. Even the directors born usually very strict praised her. She was really good. They started discussing her great potential and possible future status as the country's leading actress. This made Shen Du very angry. She couldn't forgive Ye Zi for being so insolent and impudent. This is not a joke. Shen Du is the lead actress here. She's just a newcomer in a minor role. How on earth can an actress in show business not have a sidekick these days? Hell knows how many bedrooms Shen Du has been in. And she's so pure and innocent, she says she's going to start her own company and would advance her career on her own. From that day on, she realized that Ya Ji can't be allowed to go on like this. Otherwise, she'll beat her. That's when Shen Du had an accident in the desert. She made Ye Ji get lost, but she didn't die that time. She wasn't even badly hurt. Why her? After all, she started her own company, relying only on her own strength. Ye Ji really became the best actress. She's the winner of the most prestigious award. She's now number one in the industry. She's at the top of Olympus. Isn't that a spit in Sheng Du's direction? Ye Ji is just making fun of her. You can't forgive someone like that. So when she received a call from Ling Shui saying that they were going to be filming, she didn't hesitate for a second. She had to get rid of that rival once and for all. Every day of her life made Shen Du feel superior and insulted. She wasn't used to this. She will only calm down after her death. Dai Ye Ji, that's all she wished for her rival. The camera crew suddenly looked up at the tree and started yelling, Look, there was someone up there, some person. There was an IAG in the tree, safe and sound, as if she had never fallen off the cliff. Even her clothes were fine. Wei Wei was very happy that nothing bad happened to Ye Zi. She had been so worried. The whole crew. And the director and the cameraman and the makeup people exclaimed with joy. It was a miraculous rescue. The director started yelling to the cameraman. He had to keep shooting. He was ready to make a masterpiece of cinematography. Ye Ji gracefully grasped the end of her dress with her fingertips. It was a gesture of the standard of femininity. It was a thing of beauty. She slowly began to descend from the tree in the glow of the departing sun. It was beautiful, even though it wasn't according to the script. It's the perfect ending. The landslide, the sunrise, and the unwavering mountain spirit. He just idolizes Ye Ji. And to everyone around her, she seems like a real angel. 
with wings growing behind her back. Some unknown light force has preserved her. Her savior stood calmly at the foot of the mountain. It was thanks to him that she remained unharmed. He examined the rockfall site. He found a shrapnel from a silent bomb. That's solid evidence. Starts running through the conjectures in his head. Who would want to kill Ye Ji? There must have been a good reason. He pulls his medallion from his clothes. Some symbol seemed very familiar to him. The symbol on the medallion and the symbol on the silent bomb fragment match. It's a remarkable resemblance. The director is happy, and he gives the word that it's all shot. The whole crew is just thrilled. Up there on the cliff, Wei Wei is just happy that her ward is alive. She scared the hell out of everyone. She apologizes to everyone for making everyone worry. She didn't lose her head in the face of danger. Shen Du is very angry. The plan failed. She was unlucky today. Let the opponents have no hope. Next time luck won't be on their side. Wei Wei called out to Shen Du and told her to wait immediately. She wanted to sneak away from everyone so badly. Where is she going? We haven't talked to her yet. I have a lot of interesting questions for her. I'd like to ask her. Shen Du has turned on her innocence. She doesn't understand what's being asked of her. She's just here to make sure everyone's safe. Ye Ji stops Wei Wei and tells her not to get heated. They don't have any proof. She understands. She's not a naive child. It won't be long before she evens the score with her. And she won't be in debt. She didn't eat enough porridge to fight her. And it wasn't the kind of man she put in her place. Don't overestimate your abilities. By the way, Yi is definitely in one piece. We should probably take her to the hospital. Wei Wei volunteered to help her. Who is the mysterious man in black, where he came from? He risked himself and saved her. An undercover agent observes Wei Wei and Ye Ji, and starts calling a cell phone number on his cell phone, ringing a bell at an abandoned construction site. It's been a long time since anything's been done here. All that's standing there is the skeleton of a building. Zhang Xiao's nephew gets a call. He picks up the phone and says to answer it quickly. They're busy beating the debtor out of his money. Trouble on the set. There's been a dangerous accident. Everyone is alive and well, but the cause must be found out. He quickly rushes to the car with the guards, realizes he has to go there, and drop everything he's doing. Jiang Xiao is sitting in the car. Reluctantly, he listens to the report from his nephew, what he has brought him. For the safety of Ye Ji, they had deliberately chosen a quiet and secluded place. It was almost impossible to find. Jiang Xiao became furious. The bones in my fingers were already crunching. No one has the right to harm his loved ones. The nephew swears to his uncle that he'll fix it. He believes him, and he gives him a free pass. Jiang Xiao went to the set to take Ye Ji home. The nephew only saw the boss's car dusting behind him. Shen Du is nervous and angry. She blames her accomplice for the big screw-up. She said everything would go perfectly. How is it possible she didn't go off the cliff? She has no wings. She can't fly either. Yeah, she snapped. The rock shattered. But Ye Ji didn't have a scratch on her. What the hell was going on? She didn't understand. How could she be unharmed if the rock crumbled? It collapsed. And that's impossible. She sent a man to plant a silent bomb under a certain area. But there was no way it could destroy an entire rock. She's pretty sure of it. Shen Du was already beginning to fear the dire consequences. What if they come after her? She went to a lot of trouble, time, and money to get this thing. A mistake is out of the question. Sheng Du says she has a very urgent matter. She'll call back later. She hangs up quickly. Liu Ling Shui is getting nervous. She yells hello and demands to be answered immediately. She didn't expect to hang up. Shen Du tries to open the door but she doesn't understand why it won't open. It's all very strange. And then in her side vision, she sees a blade pressed near her throat. Looks like she's been ordered to a specialist. She starts screaming and begging for help, and begs me not to kill her. She'd give anything, just so they don't kill her. The one who saved Ye Ji and kept her from crashing down one canyon, holds a shard of silent explosive under her nose. The man in black tells Shen Du that this sign must be very familiar to her. There's no point in denying it. The mercenary in the dark suit jumped out of the window of the room with great agility. There was no sign of him, as if he never existed. Shen Du and sat beside the chair on her lap, in a state of great shock, and nearly had her throat slit. It was a sign she'd seen once before, on that man. It's very hard to forget. It's immediately imprinted on the memory. Her husband had just left her, and she was left on the street with no livelihood. No home, no support. And then she met a stranger, and he asked her to return to her beautiful life before. She didn't remember his facial features well, but she got a good look at his clothes. He stood in the light of the street lamps. There's a new crowd favorite almost every day, and she's not young anymore, and it's not going to be easy for her without help. And they held out the original contract, a lot of sheets, and she saw this tattoo on his wrist, with this symbol. SMCC is a giant company almost unanimously dominated by Hollywood. This offer could not be passed up. If she signs a contract with this company, her material wealth and riches will be just the beginning. They've already prepared the first draft especially for Shengdu. 
It's going to be something special. Opportunities like this don't just appear. Sheng Du got it. They used her to destroy Ye Ji. I didn't think she was stupid enough to cross those people. She got off her knees. It's all nonsense. You don't need to pay attention. We need to come to our senses. She walks down the hall and calls someone on her cell phone. They need to meet. There's an urgent conversation. In the parking lot at night. It's pretty poorly lit. Even though there are a lot of cars parked nearby. Wei Wei is accompanying Ye Ji. It's really okay. She can go alone. But the doctor said she's in shock. Shen Du is running away from the hotel where she's renting a room. And she's moving very fast in heels. She didn't see Wei Wei and Ye Ji. She slammed into them with all her might. They hit their heads. It hurt. Shen Du fell to the pavement. And Ye Ji supported Wei Wei. Is she alright? The agent began to ask her sharply. Shen Du is mad as a Mahara. Yelling for them to get their eyes out of one place. What the hell are they both doing here? Wei Wei smirked as if her hearing had failed her. Our sweetest lady should say that. Maybe she misunderstood her. Shendi pushed Wei Wei away and said that she had a hearing problem. She heard what she said and ran quickly on her way. Don't pay any attention to anyone. She probably didn't have much time. Where is she going so late at night? On what business an actress who has lost her popularity can try to sneak out late at night? Wei Wei said not on her shift. Ye Ji can sleep well. She'll arrange everything to perfection. The next day, Ye Zi looked simply stunning and radiant. Her blue dress just fit her. It was like a mold. What kind of goddess had come down from heaven to them? The news from today's press conference would definitely make the front pages of all the newspapers. Wei Wei rejoiced like a child. She's probably exaggerating, but she's counting on having learned something. That's what she wanted to tell Ye Ji. Shen Du that her past relationship experience was allegedly too traumatic, and she spent the night with some unknown man. Wei Wei took the photo she'll have to try to keep her reputation. After that, so as not to slap her face in the mud. Shen Du accidentally overheard their conversation. What are they talking about? What's that picture they have? She started shouting and demanded to be given the phone back. She did not give her agreement to be filmed. Why was she so nervous? Had she done something so dangerous and terrible and now she was afraid? The reporters will be here soon. They have to go now. So they won't be late. It's not like she pushed her on purpose. Shen Du abruptly grabbed Ye Ji's hand and shook it hard. She didn't want to just let her go. Why all the falseness? There's no one here. There's no need to pretend. She has long suspected who was involved in the incident in the desert. One has to believe that Yeji's rainbow dreams are not destined to come true. She strongly advises against pouring out the person in this picture. Wei Wei winks cheerfully at Yeji and gives her a thumbs up. Everything is going according to plan. Don't let Shen Diu hold back. So it was all her. Yesterday's collapse. The incident in the desert. Yeji couldn't even believe she was capable of such a despicable act. Shen Diu did it. She didn't expect that there would be nothing left of the rock at all. But Ye Ji managed to save herself anyway. And then she realizes she's being videotaped very intently. It's an open broadcast. And everything she says is being recorded. The reporters and videographers were just overflowing. They were crawling out of every crevice like cockroaches. They found the scoop. And it was all captured in the camera lenses. Wei Wei did a great job. She knows how to work with journalists. A reporter asked Sheng Du politely, Is everything she just said on camera the truth? Sheng Du's pupils narrowed, and her breath caught. She was speechless. She realized that she had just been smeared on the pavement. She's trying to calm everyone down. What are they saying? It can't be. They've got it all wrong. But all the reporters and photographers and videographers hardly believed her. She said it in a very unconvincing and unsure way. Ye Ji stood behind her and remained silent. In her eyes there was a terrible regret. Shen Diu's confession was a blow to the heart. The reporter saw Ye Ji. She realized something was wrong. One was talking at the top of her lungs and the other one is standing there silent. Maybe she doesn't want to cast a shadow on Shen Dieu, but her conscience won't let her lie. Something inside her is gnawing at her, except there was a really scary rockfall on set yesterday. Somehow, by some miracle, it became. The reporter said that Ye Ji can't even say a word. She's in shock, and she feels sorry for her. Shen Dieu is just messing with her. The former queen of cinema, pretending to be white and fluffy, killing young actors. It all needs a front-page story. It's over now. The reporter immediately turned to Ya Ji. She didn't say anything for some reason. She was in danger. She was too kind, so she was an easy target for crooks and envious people. Shang Du went after Ye Ji. It's all her fault. She's in this situation because of her. Wei Wei cell phone number. If anything, the freak show is long over. If she dared to take even one more step towards Ye Ji, they would all only see her name in courtroom reports. Yes, she made a mistake, but there's no need to hope they can beat her next time. Ye Ji's reputation is bad. Ye Ji felt like she'd been hit over the head with a rock. How she knew what happened five years ago. 
How she got that information is a mystery. Those reporters can't seem to calm down. They've made Yeji very tired. But she was already longing for such a pleasant fatigue. Wei Wei tells Yeji to get in the car, and she needs to go and get a few things. She'll be back soon. Just then she sat down, and began to bridge on the cozy seats of the comfortable car. As the locks quickly slammed shut, and the car sped off quickly, Yeji was jammed into the seat from the speed. She asks the driver why you're driving so fast. You're more important where they're going. Wait, wait, wait. They didn't bring it with them. The car bounced up the hill. It left a column of dust behind it. The passenger screams and screams that she's been kidnapped, and begs for help. Half an hour later, the car comes to a stop. There is a mountain in the background, and a beautiful green lawn. The locks on the car doors open. Yedzi jumps out of the car like a scalded woman. Suddenly, there's a beautiful estate in front of her. Just under the mountain. On beautiful green meadows. Not far away is the forest. This man kidnapped her. What is this place? Why it seems so familiar. She's seen horror somewhere. And she's been here. Yeah, she was. She's definitely been here. Something inside her is telling her. It's all so familiar. It's all so familiar. Jun Xiao quietly walked over and put his arm around her waist. She didn't realize who he was right away. Jun Xiao was here like magic. Just appeared in the air out of nowhere. She blushed with embarrassment. He asked if she liked it here. He decided to help her move out on his own again. So, no one would bother her anymore. It's okay that she doesn't remember anything yet. Soon enough her memories will come back. She doesn't know what he's talking about. By the way, could he loosen his embrace a little bit? She's suffocating. He hugged her too tight. Then he took her in his arms. What's he doing again? Put his hands down and be done with it. She's demanding to be put down. John Xiao didn't pay any attention to her outbursts. He just told her to relax, that's all. What she was saying was nothing. Yeji is very calm right now. Really calm. She feels so secure and comfortable around him. What the hell is she doing? What she's thinking right now? There can't be any connection between them. We have to stop these thoughts. Zhang Xiao says they've already arrived. They are standing in front of the large, massive door of the manor entrance. He opens the door in her face, and rose petals come pouring out. It's all so romantic and beautiful. There's a carriage right in the main hallway, which is decorated with real fresh flowers. And on top of the carriage is a golden crown. These are real pink roses. It's like something out of a fairy tale. It's unbelievable. They're scented to perfection. He is now selling flowers in bulk. That's what Yeji thought and said out loud about Zhang Xiao. Although what's so surprising is that he's a rich man. Jian Xiao didn't like this very much. She abruptly started to apologize to him and asked him not to be angry. And then a special object caught her eye. It triggered an old memory in her. Her memory told her it was something close. She's seen this vase before. A vase in the shape of a white swan, along with flowers. It's beautiful. She was so happy at the time. She'd never been like that before. And then she got a sudden headache. And she's trying on a new dress and playing catch up with some fine young man. Just then she fell to the floor because of a headache. Jun Xiao told her not to be afraid. He is by her side and will support her. The man from her memories with the blurry face is Zhang Xiao. Ye Ji is just in a state of prostration. Like she's in some kind of drunken stupor or fog. Her eyes are completely glassy. Through this fog she stares at the green lawns around the mansion. Trying to remember. Anything to help her. The two of them and Zhang Xiao are standing on the balcony, looking out into the distance. He puts his arm around her waist. She's wearing a red dress. She's just thrilled that their country has such beautiful places. When it's over, they'll move to this valley together. She catches him off guard. Even though he hadn't even thought about changing his mind, she liked the idea a lot. She begins to slowly remember her past life. The amnesia recedes. She remembers hugging Zhang Xiao. And how does she know what the girl in her visions will say? Ye Ji is really scared. She's a little shaken after her experience. She's lying on a pillow in some room she doesn't know. And next to her, Zhang Xiao is sitting by her bed. He hasn't left her side. And then she hears the voice of some disgruntled girl. She makes her demands. I wonder who Zhang Xiao is arguing with. It seems she's never seen someone talk to him like this before. Or maybe Ye Ji is asleep and it's all a dream. Why does she feel so heavy? It's like something's holding her back. It's like she can't breathe. She holds her hand over her heart. She looks at him and mentally asks Zhang Xiao to look at her. She is here, after all. He gently takes her hand. The warmth of his palm is felt. A sure but gentle strength. She wants to make sure she's conscious. I'm very glad that Yeji finally woke up. She made me very scared and worried. The headache caused her to pass out. He gives her two pills and offers to take them to make her feel better. But she doesn't want to. She won't drink any because they're bitter. And then she starts waving it away. I guess she doesn't like the medicine. Zhang Xiao caught himself thinking that Ye Zi was jealous of the beautiful brunette stranger. She abruptly began to justify herself. What's that he's saying? 
He's very pleased to be jealous. She's not jealous of anyone. This beautiful brunette's name is Chris. She's a real friend of his, but nothing more. There's only room in his heart for her. Jiang Xiao is advised to relax and take the medicine soon. She needs to sleep a little more. He'll be there for her. So, what's she doing here? What about her commercial? She doesn't know how she got here. Again, she's half delirious. Who is this girl? The images Ye Ji saw, what they mean. Her consciousness is fading. Fatigue overtakes her. She has a lot to learn from him. But she has a very bad headache. She doesn't care about that right now. Jian Xiao's face is getting cloudy. Two o'clock in the morning on the clock in her room. Ye Ji woke up with a great thirst. She is very thirsty. She's out of bed, looking for water. There's nothing. There's nothing left in the room. There's an empty glass on the nightstand. Library conversation. Chris explains to Jiang Xiao that his enemies are scheming, and he's got this girl right under his thumb. Does Chris really think that if Jiang Xiao keeps Ye Zi away from him, his enemies will calm down? No, it won't. Ye Ji heard this conversation in the library. She was alarmed by it. The unusual direction of the conversation between friends. Chris continued to nag him. Jiang Xiao is too equal and arrogant. Would the family approve of what he did? He didn't ask anyone anything. I wonder what the relationship is between them. What Chris is doing to Jiang Xiao. He has already made his decision and he is not going to back down from it. He has taken very serious measures. He goes to the library door. And then Ye Ji sees this and starts running to her room. She got into bed and covered herself with the blanket. And pressed herself tightly against the pillow. And pretended to sleep soundly and soundly. Jiang Xiao opened the door of Ye Ji's room. He went inside. He wanted to make sure she was all right. He whispers softly in my ear that he won't give up. No matter what happens, he'll be there for her, and he'll protect her. He'll do everything he can and can't do. The scent of her beautiful hair is intoxicating and enticing. He inhales it again and again. He can't stop. They are frozen in each other's arms. Beautiful pink lights surround them. She says his name softly. They slept cuddled together on the pillow. Until the morning. It looks so cute from the outside. Yeji flattened her eyes. She thought it was all a dream, that she had dreamed it all. Jiang Xiao sees his beloved awake, and she asks him how he got to her room and again next to her. She slowly starts to crawl away from Jiang Xiao. It's like seeing a scary ghost, but she slept with him all night. It's not like she's on her own again. What she's doing, what she's doing, what she's thinking is unknown. She is once again in some fairy tale dimension, in her rainbow floral dreams. Jiang Xiao says she owes her a debt. Does she want to pay it back if she's willing to pay it back? She shoves him off the bed with her arms and legs. She calls him a bully, and then she yells at him sharply. Then he quickly runs out of the room. It evaporates just like smoke from a fire in a strong draft. Zhang Xiao looks at the whole circus with a calm expression, and is amused by everything that's going on. The girl is still a little suspicious. She grabs her cell phone and calls her agent. Allegedly, Jiang Xiao Zastran has kidnapped her and she doesn't know where she is. There's a message from her. She can't hear it very well. Cell phone service is terrible. Yeji says she sends her a message, not a call. You don't have to fool her. The messages are good. How did Mr. Zhang know about such a beautiful place? He had never felt so good before. Wei Wei was getting high. He took selfies and sent them to Yaji and wished her a very good date, that she would enjoy herself. Yiji is just like that. As soon as she doesn't like something, she immediately blacklists everyone she comes in contact with. She pouted her lips like a princess with displeasure. Who would even want to date that asshole Zhang Xiao? Is this really a real date? Jian Xiao stealthily approached her from behind. Why is she loitering here? The canteen is in the other direction. Why is she seeing those images again? And when it was in her life, it must have happened. Otherwise, the images wouldn't be in her memory. He covers her eyes with his palm and takes her out onto the balcony. She asks him suspiciously where he has taken her. He opens her eyes and she sees a beautiful view. A night landscape that just takes your breath away. A whole field of fireflies. The moon is in the night sky just above the mountains. Clouds float quietly across the sky. Ye Ji says it's beautiful. How does he know she likes fireflies? Zhang Xiao says he'll do anything for her. Anything. She's been tormented by one question since last night. They used to go out with him. They must have been a couple. Zhang Xiao answered affirmatively that yes, they used to be together before and are very close. That's why he feels that way about her. Only he made a big mistake last time. Now he has no intention of giving up. He won't let her go. When he looks at her and he's so close to her, she doesn't want to resist at all. He kisses her gently. The kiss leaves Yeji stunned and frozen in place. She just can't move. They stand together. With their arms around each other, they kiss. And there are swarms of fireflies all around them. When it all started, suddenly Jiang Xiao's friend Chris calls him to the library. She has a serious conversation. It's urgent. He's leaving Yeji for a while. And he will be back very soon. The girl stands disgruntled. 
She found a way to wait a week. Then we can get all of Yeji's memories back. This estate is not the right environment for treatment. Chris says we should go to her French office. There are people who are watching Yeji. If he sends her to France, they won't miss an opportunity to harm her. The next day, Yeji and Zhang Xiao arrive back home. They're finally home. So much joy, so much happiness. Yao Yao, all decked out like Halloween, runs up to Yedzi and screams Mama. Just the sight of him can scare you. She asks who painted the baby so badly, and starts to wipe off the paint and makeup. Zhang Xiao abruptly started calling out to Jianling. He is waiting for her to come to him as soon as possible. Uncle is back. She's been waiting for him persistently for days. A beautiful girl appears at the call of Zhang Xiao and runs to him. Yeji is a young girl who's very confused. What is she doing in Zhang Xiao's house? But it's like she knows her. She didn't manage to hug Jian Xiao on the fly and just plopped into the ground. Jian Xiao stood there with a stone face. She wondered why she had come. There was a very stupid look on her face. She didn't know what to say. Of course she came to see her new aunt. It's not every day there's a new aunt. Nan Tin's aunt asked her to come and stand up for Ying Ying. They want to ask her to withdraw the lawsuit and let her go back home. And she said that if he leaves Ying Ying alone, he can find out his girlfriend's big secret. I mean Yi Ji's secret. I wonder which secret one she meant. She also said she had something to do with Ye Ji's past. Jiang Xiao must be very interesting. The only secret from her past was that baby. But there's no way she could have known about it. Ye Ji is carefully hiding it. Jiang Xiao knows enough about Ye Ji. No need to worry. They should keep all these secrets of intrigue to themselves. He must know everything. In fact, she used to. But Jiang Xiao didn't let her finish. There was anxiety on her face. He took her under a tree with pink flowers and kissed her on the forehead. He has complete faith and trust in her. He said he knows everything he needs to know about Yeji. They won't be able to intimidate him. Nice quickly texted her aunt Nan Thin. He replied that he wasn't interested in all those secrets. Jiang Xiao, Yeji, Yao Yao standing together hugging each other like a real close-knit family. Just a picture. Everything she's been asked to do, she's done. She's just begging you to stop being prejudiced against her. And don't look at her like that. Besides, she wants to praise her uncle. Yeji really liked it. She approves. It's a good choice. The woman's hand hit the wooden table very hard. The cell phone was barely intact. What the hell is this Ye Ji doing? How could she earn Jiang Xiao's trust? He's just unbreakable. Wouldn't he care about that either? A document certifying a medical examination. Pregnancy ultrasound. She gets a text message back very quickly. Let her try to risk her life and health. In that case, it's every man for himself. And she's very quick to call in colorful entertainment. She has just the scoop for them. Jiang Xiao's house. It's a beautiful calm evening. Lights from the windows are shining everywhere. I'm lighting up a house many, many kilometers away. Jan Lin kindly washed the fruit and brought it to Yao Yao's room when he was painting with Ye Ji. She started playing the innocent victim. She hopes Ye Ji isn't angry about what happened this morning. She's so cute. She probably knows about the secret that Nan Tin can tell. If she'd known sooner, she would have overheard a lot more. Jiang Lin turned out to be a real piece of work. That day, she overheard her on the phone with some actress that they needed to meet urgently. It's probably that actress Sheng Du. She's the only one who could have found out about it. What evidence did she get her hands on? That's the question. Just then, Ye Ji's cell phone rang. While the girls were sitting quietly on the floor, Wei Wei dialed Ye Ji. She's hysterical. It's just a terrible disaster. Everything's just gone in one fell swoop. Wei Wei was told that someone had sent materials to the media claiming that Ye Zi had a child out of wedlock. There's nothing they can do this time. We need to come up with an emergency plan. Ye Ji correctly realized that she'd come back a different person than before. The wasp and powder story was her idea. The next day on the set, Ye Ji is looking for Wei Wei with her eyes. She should have shown up by now. Something must have happened. She had already shown up, but she had a very sad look on her face. She couldn't do anything. And she wanted to help her friend so badly. She really was right. Shen Du is not what she used to be. Despite Wei Wei's connections, she couldn't find out who was behind her. She started to calm her down. After all, she's a fine actress unlike that fool Sheng Du. That's good for them. If something happens, it's not the end of the world. Will Zhang Xiao help you? If he finds out about that child, will his attitude change? He'll be very disappointed. Ye Zi, as her name was called by a voice familiar to her. Behind her back was the silhouette of Zhang Xiao. He walked towards her from the back slowly. This is the heir of the John family, and he came for Ye Ji. All the women were whispering, what a beautiful groom, what a perfect match. Zhang Xiao says that their perfume brand in France is planning to release a new fragrance. It will be necessary to go there for filming in the near future. Their brand needs a new famous personality. And Ye Ji needs the patronage of a big company. It's a lucrative contract. Since when did Zhang Xiao's company become lacking in popularity? A big brand contract in such a difficult time. Ye Zi thanked Zhang Xiao. It's a real salvation for her. 
there's just one thing. Yeji realizes her reputation has been destroyed. She's about to get caught up in a major scandal, and she really doesn't want to get him involved. But he's done so much for me. He has some influence over people. Don't forget that. He also has power and resources. He can do a lot of things. There's always going to be spiteful people, so you just have to do what you think is right. She understood, and she's very glad he came. She wants to bring him coffee. He asks for no sugar. Shen Yu sits in her office with her laptop and is bored. She realizes that her glory days are behind her. She gets a new email. Probably something interesting. She doesn't subscribe to many newsletters. And they set up a meeting at 8 p.m. at the old place. It's her good buddy and her assistant. We should put all our business aside and go. Making an appointment at a time that she wants. Normally it shouldn't be this late, but whatever. At the bar, that same night, Sheng Du is dressed up and comes to the meeting. She looks for the person she's meeting with. Ye Ji comes in. She doesn't enthusiastically ask what she wants. Why she called her to this particular place. Ye Ji suggested that they make peace. And not to feud anymore. Shen Du was stunned by this suggestion. Ye Ji will hold a press conference tomorrow to deny that Shen Du tried to harm her. Recently some media outlets have reported information that is unlikely to be good for Ye Ji. So she thought Shen Du could help her fix the problem. If she wants help to make them allies who she must guarantee will never try to outdo Shen Du in anything. She gives her word. Yes, in situations like this, immature and dishonest people like Ye Ji have no choice but to retreat. The next morning, Ye Ji called a press conference and called Shen Du her best friend to put all suspicions to rest. They also plan to work together on interesting projects in the future. It is requested not to miss this spectacle. The news made the front page. Best friends reunited again. What a happy ending. Wei Wei is very happy. Yeji says it's fine. The first point of the plan has been accomplished. Let's start the second one. She fell for her white flag. Now they'll watch Shen Du play by their rules and end up losing big. Wei Wei is very proud of her ward. Little Yeji is all grown up now, and she's plotting such serious schemes. Shen Du said that she's cooperating with Yeji from now on. She has made her decision and will not change it. How could she do such a thing? She promised to deal with Yeji once and for all, but she couldn't get the materials that Sheng Du gave her to publish. Cooperating with her is pointless. It's a road to nowhere. And she quickly hung up. This conversation is over. Well, the game's reaching a new level. If Yeji is willing to do whatever it takes, then let her change it for herself. She won't compromise herself. Just wait till Grandpa finds out about her sordid past. He'll kick her out the door. There's no other way out. It's a beautiful sunny morning. Rays warm the asphalt and green leaves. Birds are singing. Calm and idle reigns everywhere. The old man sits quietly in his chair and asks little Yo-Yo over the video link what he's playing today. And the baby shows, spreading his arms, something big and voluminous. Oh ho 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 ho. The boy's a real charmer. Someone knocks on Grandpa's outside door, distracted for a moment. Probably brought him something. He goes to the door and opens it, and sees in front of his feet there is a copy of the medical examination document about the ultrasound examination of pregnancy. Grandpa scrutinizes this document, and asks little Yo-Yo to get Daddy on the phone. It's going to be a serious conversation. Wei Wei is showing off. She's showing that she has something for her. The news is good. A contract to appear on the reality show House of Best Friends. Also a tempting offer. Definitely worth considering. The production team saw their press conference with Shen Du and decided to make them honorary participants. So she'll be able to spend her time with Shen Du 24 hours a day. Luck falls into their laps. Knock, knock. Someone knocks on the dressing room door. The two of them are distracted by it. Who could it be? For Yedzi a package arrives. She's asked to sign for it. The parcel is small. It contains something important. A package from Grandpa, a bunch of vitamins, roots and herbs and tinctures. He who is strong in body is rich in soul. I wonder why Mr. Jang decided to send her a gift. After all, she's nobody to him. It's a very nice surprise. A few hours earlier. Why don't you tell me what this piece of paper is? And what it means? Grandpa's very interested in knowing. Zhang Xiao, ask your father where he got it from. It's a provocative piece of paper. He replies curtly that it's none of his business. It's not like he told his grandfather about such an important thing unless it's some kind of joke to his grandson. But there's no need to worry. He's showing a paragraph of the doctor's report, where the child was diagnosed with dystrophy. It's a very serious disease. Zhang Xiao slept in prostration. He didn't really read the paper. Grandpa figured it out very quickly. How can a girl who's malnourished give Yo-Yo a sibling? It's an open question. You gotta be able to take care of someone other than yourself. Doesn't he know how to take care of people at all? He doesn't talk about Ye Ji anymore. He always calls for Grandpa or Mom but he never calls for daddy. And you have to turn your head and think about why that is. What a load of crap that old man's talking about. I guess there's no point in counting on that senile old man. It's okay, mom will know what to do. The Jan family cottage. 
the place where the headline-grabbing events unfold. Fateful decisions are made here. Yedizi is putting her luggage together for a trip to France, but she notices something between the albums. A piece of paper. This is a picture of her very young with her friend Xiao Bai, who also modeled. It's been a long time since Xiao Bai has heard from her. She unravels the picture carefully and remembers the time that has passed. Suddenly, Zhang Xiao snatched the picture out of her hands. He did it so fast that she didn't realize it. Just exclaimed that it was her picture. You can't do that. You should have asked permission first for decency's sake. Jiang Xiao began to look at the photo in a business-like manner. Damn, Yezi really didn't want him to see it. And then he walked calmly and casually out of her room without a trace. And without showing any emotion. Fire! If her boss is jealous, what's he gonna do now? The girl doesn't realize she's playing with fire. He rolls the cake card into her room. It's a beautiful cake with swans on top. Unexpected move. Wait a minute. This has nothing to do with cake. Rich people always have something like that in their fridge. It's like opening a bakery. He takes the cream from the cake and smears it on Yeji's cheek. Supposedly they were playing and fooling around together. It's also for remembrance. And then he takes selfies with a cake cream stained Yeji. It was spectacular. What's his... He's not serious. Of course she was stunned at the turn of events. He seems like such a serious and powerful man. And he's doing such nonsense. I'll hail everyone on the set of the reality show Best Friends House, opening officially for the first season. Very soon they will be able to see the country's best actress, Yeji. The TV presenter is very excited. The TV host has quickly swung open Yeji's bedroom door where she's fooling around with Zhang Xiao. A very funny picture comes out. You weren't expecting us and we showed up. They just walked in unceremoniously and said hello. An uninvited guest is worse than a Tatar. Immediately, the door to Yeji's bedroom slammed shut in front of her nose. If it had been any closer, the host would have been hit in the forehead. They didn't expect Zhang Xiao to be there. They didn't think it would be like this. The cameraman himself is confused. The TV presenter realizes she's dead. For such an unceremonious prank, Zhang Xiao will soap up her boss's necks, and her bosses will take it out on her. The set is a guest house. Yi Zi is welcoming everyone. She is in front of a luxurious mansion and a beautiful swimming pool. She is wearing a beautiful light pink dress. Shen Du tells her co-worker and newfound friend that she's running late. Yi Ji is asked to love and be loved. Really, she's so kind. She says hello to everyone and can take out the trash as punishment. Not too much for her alone. Shen Du thinks Ye Ji is very tired, so he suggests that she sit down and rest next to her on the sofa. Starting today, they will be meeting at this location to discuss the shooting plan for the upcoming month. Xiao Bai said hello to everyone. He too will be participating in this project. He has a pleasant appearance and is fit. Ye Ji is pleasantly surprised. Starring with such a handsome young guy in the same show, it's literally a dream come true. Ye Ji started asking Xiao Bai, where has he been all this time and why he didn't even call? Shen Du thinks this guy seems very familiar. She's definitely seen him somewhere, but where? It will be possible to select a participant who will be responsible for working with the guests of honor. We could be responsible for the guests, ostensibly for their comfort and relative safety. So nominally, it's very hard to choose between Yedzi and Shidu. Either way, someone is bound to get upset, and someone is already frosty. This role requires a reserved and serious person, and with a lot of life experience, Sheng Du is more suitable than anyone else. Ye Ji praised her so much. She's embarrassed. No one has to worry from now on, they're all in her capable hands. What a disgusting thing to hang yourself. How can the earth bear people like that? Wei Wei was so upset, but then she saw a girl in the distance. She was having a very nice conversation with someone. She's so pathetic, Shen Du decided to give her another chance. But if she screws up, she'll be kicked out. Wei Wei recognized her. It's Chen Xiao, the makeup artist's assistant, the one who got fired. Shen Du started her dirty game. So what's everybody's plans? They're coming to visit tomorrow. We need to get the appetizers ready and clean the rooms. Shen Du felt a kind of icy chill. This young man makes her feel uncomfortable. It makes her feel sick. Xiao Bai is right to start work as soon as possible. We should split into two teams. One will do the appetizers, the other will do the cleaning. This is her chance. She can get even with Ye Ji. Even if they cooperate together, there will be enough unpleasant surprises in her life. Just so Xiao Bai and Ye Ji can go together. They're old acquaintances. There must be something to discuss. It's a problem in the middle of nowhere. Now this girl might also take offense at Ye Ji. It's an awkward situation. We have to listen to what Sheng Du says. Ye Ji goes along with him. No objections are accepted. The girl will know which side to take in the future. She just got dumped very unfairly. Xiao Xiao resentfully walked away abruptly. Shen Di started to ask if she was okay. The poor thing must be upset. One guy alone with himself, everyone scattered. We're so scary, he wants to go home. The vegetable section of the supermarket. Ye Ji yells at Xiao Bai to make sure he waits for her. They have to go shopping together. I wonder if he's angry about something. 
but it's silly to be angry about anything. She's done nothing wrong to him. She didn't hurt him or betray him. She likes to take it out on other people so much. You shouldn't say that. Everyone knows Yao Xiao is crazy about the guy. She is so kind and sweet. Yi Ji has been praised once again. She doesn't mind, especially from an old friend. She must have a lot of plans. Xiao Bai asked her what she wanted to do in the future. I have to think he's blind. That Sheng Du is always giving Ye Ji a hard time. Set up after set up. Let her freak out as much as she wants and make sure Sheng Du doesn't do anything. Enemies need to be kept even closer. She doesn't take care of herself very well. Letting herself get pushed off the cliff. Well, actually, her luck was with the man in black. To be honest, that guy in black and Xiao Bai look exactly alike like two peas in a pod. Don't you think it's strange? She will try her best to take care of herself. That's why Xiao Bai says to relax. There's no need to worry. He must have disappeared somewhere. I haven't heard from him at all. The boy looked at her in surprise. I don't think so. He remembered how Shang Di was crying under his knife. She had nothing to do with it. Lu Ling Shui had organized the whole thing. The bomb was planted by her people. Her computer was so easy to hack into. She doesn't look like she's got anyone serious behind her. In fact, the bomb was planted by someone working for her, and it cost a lot. And the services of a professional weren't cheap either. She receives a message on her cell phone. Xiao Bai can see it very well. But the reunion of Shen Du and Ye Ji is unexpected. On the set of the TV show, Best Friend's House. He was on vacation. It's a beautiful place sometime. Surely he'll take Ye Ji there. It's really nice there. Everyone around them is looking at Xiao Bai and Ye Ji. They start whispering with their backs to each other. And conclude that they're dating because they walk together. Or they buy groceries together. There are video cameras here, but she thinks it's real. And she doesn't care. It's real in her eyes. We need to get this up on the website as soon as possible. On the front page of the news, Ye Ji and Xiao Bai romantically shop together. Secret relationship revealed. And Jiang Xiao is looking at it all. The relationship is exposed. He obviously doesn't like it. He's very jealous. She hadn't felt so peaceful in a long time. They hadn't really had a chance to spend the day just talking. Ye Ji remembered when she went to school together with Xiao Bai also went to the store together often. It's been her specialty for a long time. She thought he was just joking. If he's serious, she's not much of a cook. Maybe he's cheering her up. Years ago, she remembered walking up to the counter with him. And behind the glass were beautiful cakes. He asked the vendor for one brownie for her. But they were very expensive. He joked. They'll buy vegetables and that's it. Xiao Bai remembers Ye Ji burning her dinner. Someone something suddenly started to burn. The vegetables are ruined. Dinner was completely ruined. There was only one apology, and they both went hungry. There was no money, but he pretended that everything was fine and very tasty. Even the burnt vegetables he ate with gusto. Yeji heard him say that it was delicious. She was so aware that everything stinks of smoke, and asked Xiao Bai not to cheat on her, because it was a terrible dinner. Well, if that's how much he misses it that dinner, she'll be sure to cook it for him again as soon as they get back. Yeji got angry and started pounding Xiao Bai, stop bullying her but he held out a box of sweets to her in response. These are limited edition buns in the shape of bunnies. They are also hard to buy. She thanked him warmly. He looked at her affectionately and with tenderness. Ye Ji doesn't know, but Xiao Bai has something to tell her. Some secret. When he decided to become an actor instead, his parents had a serious falling out. His financial situation was worse than ever. He was not in the habit of saving money. After barely surviving one month, he was ready to give up. And that burnt carrot dish from Ye Ji helped him get on with his work. Poor student. It's a familiar story. That's why any dish prepared by Ye Dizzy's hands is the most delicious for him. He remembers everything with gratitude. They float on the boat until sunset, and they feed each other bunny cakes. Xiao Xiao, who is in love with Xiao Bai, sees all this. She's very, very angry. She wanted to swim with that guy like that. Xiao Xiao ran up to Xiao Bai when they docked at the dock. She needs to talk to him. The cameraman with the camera is filming everything. They're filming what she wants from him. Now's not the time. We can talk about it after because this is a work moment. He calls Ye Ji with him and they should go now. Xiao Xiao stands there and gets very angry. She's just being ignored. And with all her might, she starts pushing Ye Ji. She pushes away this guy she really likes. Xiao Bai starts yelling at Xiao Xiao what she's doing. Xiao Bai yells at Xiao Xiao what she's doing. She calmly removes Xiao Bai's hand that protects her. She doesn't need protection. She is in no danger. The cameraman is told that Xiao Xiao is not ready to film right now. Can the cameras be turned off for now? He'll ask the director. The cameraman says falsely that the cameras are supposedly off. He'll wait for them by the road. We'll have to finish filming. Ye Ji asked Xiao Xiao if she had any grievances. It would be best to voice them now. Xiao Xiao was dumbfounded for a moment. She didn't think she'd be asked directly like that, without any intrigue or trickery. Allegedly, Xiao Xiao is offended that Xiao Bai Ye Ji is treated so badly, but he continues to defend her nonetheless. What she means is the two of them are looking at her 
and they don't understand. What she wants. How long is this tantrum going to go on? She's living off a rich man. And yet she seduces Xiao Bai, a shameless girl. No honor, no education, no decency. Xiao Bai became very angry. Who told her about this? There must be some proof, not just words. Xiao Bai scares her a lot, but she can't let him be blatantly deceived. After all, she likes him so much. Ye Ji is a kept woman, and everyone knows it. She became a top actress in commercials only because of her patron. Oh, girls out of control spewed a lot of dirt, and there's no proof. Or maybe it's just jealousy. Xiao Bai is very angry. He's starting to look like the man in the black suit. He demanded that Xiao Xiao immediately apologize properly to Ye Zi. The latter was simply taken aback. Why should she apologize? She told the whole truth, what she thinks, and what the rumors are. She's a kept woman. Xiao Bai smirked and said that he wasn't. But no one seduced him. It looked so funny from the outside. He took Ye Ji's palm gently in his hands and made some unexpected speeches, which made everyone stir. If it were possible, he would be eternally happy about it. Except all these years he's been trying to seduce her. Ye Ji blossomed with happiness. It was the best compliment one could think of to flatter a girl. He holds her palm gently in his hands and confesses his love to her. At sunset the sun and asks her to be his girlfriend. Ye Ji is just confused. What is he saying? But honestly, you can see from her expression that she's very happy. Xiao Bai is more serious than ever. You can tell he's not joking. You can't joke about these things. Feelings are not a toy. Ye Ji realized he wasn't playing for the camera. It's the truth. That's a twist. She's in a stupor. Xiao Xiao was just in a slump. She's in a stupor. She can't believe her ears. It's true. So now the camera crew is in shock. Just like that, he just confessed. On the air. That's big city ratings for the show. Xiao Bai laughed out of the blue. Xiao Xiao and Ye Zi looked at him and stood there stunned. What was that? You could see how surprised Ye Ji was. If she wanted some kind of romantic relationship, he would have answered right away. I have no idea who Xiao Xiao said those stupid things. But you should know that you can trust what you've seen in person. Xiao Xiao stands embarrassed. She said she understood perfectly. Of course she's disgraced. What else can she do? If that's the case, then you should apologize to Ye Ji immediately. Yeah, she interrupted and said no apology is necessary. She's just very naive. Xiao Xiao immediately flared up and said she wouldn't apologize. She's not a naive fool. She's an adult. She quickly turned around and walked in her direction. She started shouting after her, but she didn't react. Ye Ji may not be seducing Xiao Bai, but his facial expression at that moment. What feelings are impossible to play? Sheng Du was right. Ye Ji is just a megger. She hangs on Xiao Bai but never reciprocates. Xiao Xiao made a promise to herself that she would help Xiao Bai wake up. By all means, she won't leave him. The world of show business is very dirty. With Xiao Xiao's character, and it will be hard to survive. The real snake's nest. Next time, don't have a fight in front of the camera. If rumors spread, it'll reflect badly on both of them. He wasn't kidding back then. If she could really be his girlfriend, then things would really change for the better. But now is not a good time. Xiao Bai needs to stay in the shadows. Only then can he find out what's really going on. Ye Ji noticed that Xiao Bai was thinking about something. He's in his own thoughts and judgments. He's always silent. And while it's all wrapped up, he really hopes that Ye Ji will be waiting for him. I wish he would. Jiang Xiao, a powerful man, her patron. He has very great capabilities, influence, power, and resources. He can't admit defeat. He will go on to the end. After all, that is his purpose. There is no giving up on it. The cameramen said to themselves what a shame it was a joke. Everyone thought it was real and confessed his love. The director said to leave it as it is. They're not going to cut anything. Everything has to go to boost the show's ratings. He instructs us to start editing immediately. The footage has to be processed as soon as possible. He's already come up with the headlines. By the look on his sly face, he already realizes which slogans will attract more and more new viewers for the reality show. On the first day of filming Best Friend's House, two actresses almost fought over Xiao Bai. That's a good one. Hot news young star Xiao Xiao had a fight with famous actress Ye Ji. What will be the consequences? Xiao Bai's sensual confession of the object of his affection is popular actress Ye Ji. What kind of headlines attract attention? Zhang Xiao is watching all this, and he's already pissed off. Here comes that nasty thing again, and it's all on the front page of the news. The main office of Jan's company. It's a big building. You could say it's a futuristic skyscraper. Zhang Xiao threw his phone onto the table with a clatter. It was a good thing it was protected, or it would have been shattered by now. He sat down his posh leather chair. This bad news gave him a headache. He is jealous of Ye Ji. He's got all kinds of thoughts going through his head. They are mostly bad because someone has infringed on his favorite girl. The famous director appreciated the rising star. The photo of Ye Ji came out quite well. The world of show business is very complex. Each person is a commodity with its own price. If she starts spinning in these circles, 
it will be difficult to maintain her reputation. If Zhang Xiao doesn't want to part with her so badly, he can just take her away. He's already done that once before. To become an actress, that's her dream. And it's very important to him that Ye Ji be happy. Fulfilling dreams is the main goal in life. If Zhang Xiao can't accept Ye Zi and what profession she chose, then what right does he have to be with her? Jiang Xiao's interlocutor smirks, calling him a hero lover. Well, we'll see how he does. Because of Zhang Xiao's personal decision, he and Ye Ji have not seen each other for many years. It's his big mistake. While she herself reaped the fruits of her labors and achieved everything, he was not there at those moments. Everyone wondered if actress Ye Ji's career would end since she had a fiancé. And no one, not her or him, understood how to put it all together. But when he finally returned to this city, as if by blessing from above, Ye Zi saved little Yao Yao. It's all faded. Ye Ji belongs to Zhang Xiao alone. That's what he's sure of. Now only the final part remains to be deleted. Zhang Xiao walks toward the big front door. He opens it and his subordinates are waiting for him. Loyal and trustworthy men, who he pays very handsomely. The wills of the board of directors begin. Everyone agrees with Mr. Director. The Lake House where the reality show is happening right now. Work is in full swing. The moon is in the sky. The weather is clear and the lights are on in all the windows. Xiao Bai invites Shen Du and Xiao Xiao to play a board game with everyone else. It'll be fun. When you are on set, it is important to show your best side. However, the most important task is to focus all the attention of the audience on yourself. Shen Du said she's not good at board games. She'll be easy to beat. She's not a good opponent. Xiao Kei had beaten Ye Ji many times in a row. That's seriously impressive. But in reality, he's still a teenager with a gambling addiction. She played it when she was traveling in Japan. Only the Japanese added one rule. It's very interesting. And what kind of rule is this? Xiao Kei's eyes just lit up with curiosity. He was so eager to find out as soon as possible. Shen Denier and said it was a truth or dare rule. The loser had to choose between answering questions or performing an action. Xiao Bai looks suspiciously at Shen Du. What is he arranging again? Up to something naughty again. Her little intrigue. Ye Ji doesn't like it. She already regretted that they invited her to play. Why did they do it on their own heads? The director shouts approvingly. They'll do that for the show. It's a must play. He's sure that's what the audience is waiting for. They sat down at the big table to play, all four of them. Chips and cards have already been dealt, and it's time to roll the dice. Xiao Kei won this time. Shen Du said she's not good at it. It will be very easy to beat her in this game. Xiao Kei Yi said that one must choose truth or action. Xiao Bai rightly pointed out that the winner chooses himself. He had an idea. Everyone will tell the truth. And the first question is for Shang Du. She tensed up a little. In the acting community, who is most disliked by Shen Du? Everyone really wants to know if there are such people. Actors Wednesday, who's most disliked? Everyone is waiting to hear from the former famous star. Joe Lin has been building an image of a very simple and sunny guy from the beginning. But he's always pretty good. There's a lot of things to ask Ye Ji, and it won't be easy for her to get out of it. The questions will be prickly. Yes, by asking that question, he wants Shen Du to hurt someone. She apologizes, but she can't give an answer. What was the director wondering? Sheng Du was nervous. She was able to get out of it, but it wasn't easy. Earlier, the director promised that Shen Du would be at her best in the episode. Only she had to give her word that she would obey unconditionally. They had previously chatted with the director. It would be seen how he intended to use this conversation. If it wasn't for his power of communication, he couldn't force Sheng Du. In this case, their party will turn into an award ceremony. If you like to play, you have to pay. The director tells her to have Shen Du say on live TV that she hates Ye Ji. For the success of the program, she has to say it. Could it be that Xiao Kei Yi is also acting under the director's orders? And that's why he asked such a tricky question. The person she disliked the most was Ye Ji. It was like hitting an anvil on the head. Everyone's eyes rounded. Xiao Xiao jumped up and down. But aren't they close friends? Something doesn't add up. What a twist. Ye Ji decided to turn it into a joke. I didn't want to offend anyone, so I offended her right away. If nothing else, you're not your best friend. Xiao Xiao didn't realize what was going on here. It's either a joke or it's true. Do they really think so, or is it an act? Whoever Sheng Du called wouldn't end well. I had to pull her in the end. Xiao Kei laughed like a madman. But Xiao Xiao didn't like this joke. In her opinion, this was not the way to joke. Xiao Bai also appreciated the humor. Very subtle intrigue. And very well managed to get everyone out of it. We have to keep going. This hasn't been this much fun since Airplane Chess. Everyone enjoyed it. Xiao Kei offered his seat. Shen Du won this time. Now it's a celebration on her street. Now she'll choose what the losers will do. She chooses the truth too. Ye Ji asks Sheng Du to be merciful and don't ask too pointed questions. She'll probably ask her about Zhang Wensheng, her ex-boyfriend, and have her share her feelings about the breakup. Another poignant question. 
Looks like the director really wants to create a high-profile headline. You can count on him. What about Zhang Wensheng? He's her ex-boyfriend. She'd like to get back together with him. They've been together for so many years. Everyone was waiting for them to get married. Xiao Bai looked at Shen Du with the eyes of a bloodthirsty predator. He really disliked this barbed question. If he could, he would rip her head off. A sense of connection to the breakup. Well, it must be very personal if she was thinking about it so hard. She didn't want to bring it up. That's fine. Or maybe some people think she doesn't deserve it and want to protect Yeji. After the breakup, she saw him for who he was. And she felt terribly relieved. He's nothing more than a passerby to her now. She hopes that Jiang Wensheng will be able to cope and return to society soon. At the same time, she's a free girl again. And is rebuilding her career again. She's very grateful to her ex-boyfriend for this experience. Shen Du heard that Ye Ji is planning some new romantic relationship. In reality, she's just going with the flow. The game continued in the next round with Xiao Xiao winning and Xiao Bai being the loser. This was what she had been waiting for. Today, everyone chose truth, and he is so eager to try action. He asked Xiao Xiao to ask her something interesting. She gave him an assignment. To hug someone special to him in this venue. Xiao Xiao had already thought that Xiao Bai would hug her. It's her dream to date him and be his girlfriend. Xiao Bai calmly looks towards Ye Ji. He knows who he wants to hug and who is very dear to him. Xiao Xiao became very nervous. Did he still remember the incident on the set in Sweden? If it wasn't for him, she would have died of fever for sure. But he not only nursed her back to health, but then helped her overcome social stigma. The entire camera crew is looking at all of this. Xiao Xiao dropped this information suddenly and caught everyone off guard. In fact, she confessed her love. That's very brave of her. What will Xiao Bai do now? Ye Ji was tormented by her speculations. She couldn't rest. He got up from his desk and decided to play along so as not to embarrass her in front of everyone. It was the human thing to do. That time, Xiao Xiao got well on her own and the assistant brought her an antipyretic. He ran halfway across town and bought her the medicine. And he hugged Xiao Ke Yi. He and he are the only guys on this set, so besides him, Xiao Ke is the second special person here. A great performance between the two guys. This will really boost the show's ratings. Brilliant Xiao Bai. Oh, that's so cute. They look so beautiful from the side. What a graceful way out of this situation. I should have hugged Yeji without hesitation. That would have been much better. And the most special person. There's that disgruntled look towards Yeji again. Xiao Xiao is very angry. Things didn't go the way she planned. She still won't give up. Uncle, everything must be ready. She's planning to carry out her plan. Her uncle is the director of the show. He assures her that everything will be fine. When she watches the final cut, the restroom, it's also Xiao Xiao whether she saw her envious face. She just can't help but laugh. Wei Wei was just out of her mind. She was so angry at Shen Du. After all, she had almost framed Ye Ji, that sneaky snake. But Ye Ji herself is no pushover. These two dumbasses can't even compare to her. Wei Wei began to praise her mentee. It's weird. Shen Du shouldn't be so blatant. They have an agreement. There must be someone else. We need to check if there's anyone on the crew who wants to hurt Ye Ji. If she finds that person, he's dead. And if she failed, Mr. Jiang Xiao would take care of it very quickly. Wei Wei has calculated everything quickly. Ye Ji was very angry. There's no need to bring Jiang Xiao into this. They'll handle it themselves, without his help. If wifey's in trouble, won't hubby come to the rescue? There's one thing Yi Ji is no one. Jiang Xiao Mansion. The whole family is here. We just have to wait for Ye Ji. Yo Yo is crying. He's upset. Something has upset him very much. A child's tears are worth more than a diamond. His uncle is trying to cheer him up. He doesn't know what to do anymore. He pokes him with candy and shows him toys. Jiang Xiao goes into his house and asks his nephew what he's doing. He can see that he's trying to entertain his son. The baby doesn't want to play. He really wants to see his auntie. But she's on a movie set and unfortunately can't come. Jiang Xiao asked Yao Yao's little boy if he wanted to go to his mom. He nodded justifiably. Of course he misses her. The nephew is very surprised and asks his uncle, What about the business meeting? You can't miss it. The child's wishes are law. Of course it is. He wants to see her very much himself. It's all working out very well. The lake house where the filming takes place. The sun warms the walls and the ground and the pool. Xiao Qi and Xiao Bei looks at the whole spectacle. What a cute apron. Women are in their repertoire. It's impossible to change anything. Ye Ji, Shen Di, Xia Xiao all dress like real working housewives. Ye Ji looks simply gorgeous in every look. Xiao Bai blushed. She's so pretty. She's not a girl. She's a dream. Just to admire her. Xiao Kei thought to himself how lucky he was to see such a beauty. She was really good and desirable. Xiao Xiao came forward and said she would help him, even though Ye Ji herself asked Xiao Bei for help. It's a tricky situation again. 
He walked over to Xiao Xiao and warned her not to stand so close to the stove that she might get burned. Maybe he's trying to make up for yesterday. Ye Ji is trying to realize that Xiao Xiao wants to make her look like a potential rival of hers. She's succeeding so far. Sheng Die gives wise advice to Ye Ji. We should give Xiao Bai to this Xiao Xiao. She can see that she likes him so much. I'll try to see it from her point of view is good. There's something else that needs to be said to get the audience hooked. The most important thing is views. Will she ever stop scheming at all? This intrigue is getting to be a major bore. Since Xiao Xiao had Xiao Bei as her assistant, maybe Xiao Kei could help her. That would be great. Ye Ji happily begins to help Xiao Kei. Shen Du is left alone, so she can show her best qualities. Miscalculated. She wasn't going to cook. Isn't the point of a good leader to give everyone their assignments and then sit down to tea? A great place to sit and have lunch afterward while looking at the water in the pool. Xiao Kei suggests cooking crawfish. It's a good dish and everyone will like it. Maybe some people don't eat meat, but they probably eat seafood. Good idea. The director delivered fresh lobsters to the studio. That's great. There may not be an opportunity like this later. Now we have to come up with some excuse to get away. Let Ye Ji start making them herself. What a trick from the director. How can such a celebrity know anything about such things? Wait for the montage to make Ye Ji into a princess who can't do anything on her own. She'll take care of the crawfish, and Xiao Kei should make a sauce for them quickly. But he's never made it before. That's the problem. Xiao Kei starts to praise her. It turns out she's not only a good singer, but also a good cook. And that's very important for a girl. She's holding this lobster, and cleans it well with a brush so that there is no dirt left in the pot. And then she remembers Zhang Xiao feeding her. What's the point of these memories? They're bothering her now, and they're unnecessary. The director is very angry, because the actress is not afraid of live crayfish. Why she looks so happy? Xiao Bai is very actively standing by the stove and cooking. Xiao Xiao stares at his back and is silent. How much she likes him. He doesn't accept any help at all. He does everything himself. Does he really hate her? Xiao Xiao is starting to worry about it. The director instructs me to take the sauce from the devil's chili to Ya Ji. The devil's chili is dangerous to touch. Xiao Xiao warned her partner that she would go get more ingredients. He thanked her. He just stands there and continues cooking by the stove like nothing happened. He doesn't need any help, not at all. It's that damn actress who dared to steal Xiao Bai away from her. Uncle Director has something very interesting in mind and she wants to see the show.